Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it is now 5 o'clock. You are live on WFOV 92.1 LP FM Flint. You are live on FACT Channel 17, and you are live on the Internet. Have a good meeting. I don't see your finance chairperson yet. Um, Ms. Burns will be late. Is Ms. Priestley here? I don't see her either, but I don't know for sure if I have. Okay, how many uh, how many um, council persons are on the line? Seven. Okay, so Miss Priestley is not here and Miss Burns is not here. Correct. Oh I'm sorry, Judy Priestley. Okay, I'm, is here. I'm Judy Priestley is here. Okay, then I want Miss Miss Priestley the vice chair. She could call this meeting to order. Yep, give me just a few seconds. I was trying to pair my headset and it didn't work. <laughs> don't laugh. Whoever's laughing, don't laugh. Uh, is everybody here then? Except Ms. Burns. Okay. And she will be late. I just talked to her. Okay. All righty. Okay, I'm going to call this meeting to order of the Finance Committee at 5.02 p.m. on December 8, 2021. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Mays? Present. Ms. Lewis? Present. Mr. Murphy? Present. Ms. Priestley? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Present. Mr. Pfeiffer? Present. Ms. Worthing? Present. You have eight present at the moment. Okay, Um, we did miss, we were supposed to state that we were attending the meeting remotely and shall state where you are physically located. Is that correct, what we should be doing? That's next, yes. Okay, now. Okay, so I'm going to read this. Pursuant to the newly revised Open Meetings Act, each council member shall state that they are attending the meeting remotely and shall state where he or she is physically located the county or city and state? Mr. Mays? Yeah, First Ward City Councilman Eric Mays attending this meeting remotely from the First Ward in the city of Flint, Michigan. Ms. Lewis? Second Ward City Council Person Liddell Lewis attending this meeting remotely from the Second Ward in Flint, Michigan. Mr. Murphy? Quincy Murphy attending this meeting remotely and the north side of Flint and entire ward. Ms. Priestley? Fourth Ward Council Person Judy Priestley attending remotely from the fourth ward in Flint, Michigan. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Fifth Ward Council Person Jerry Winfrey Carter attending this meeting remotely from Flint, Michigan. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Um, Councilman Ali Herkenroder attending remotely um, from Flint, Michigan. Mr. Pfeiffer? Dennis Pfeiffer attending remotely from Flint, Michigan. Ms. Worthing? Attending remotely Flint, Michigan. 
Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, member contact information is listed in the agenda. And um, the procedures on conducting you lost your team. Pardon? I'm sure I'm muted. Procedures on conducting electronic meetings. All boards and commissions must adhere to all laws established under the Michigan Compiled Laws and in accordance with the revisions to the Open Meetings Act adopted in Senate Bill 1246 as passed on December 17, 2020 and signed into law on December 22, 2020 and subsequent amendments that may be adopted. The Disorderly Person City Code subsection, subsection, Section 3110, Disorderly Conduct, Assault and Battery, and Disorderly Persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Violators shall be removed from the meeting. Can I have a motion to go into executive closed session as requested by the Department of Law to discuss opiate litigation regarding national prescription opiate litigation, MDL number 28804, City of Flint versus Activist Pharma, Inc., FKA Watson Pharma, Inc., et al. <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes, yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, let's hear from the legal department first, and then we'll put what they say in the form of a motion if we can do that. Okay, we can do that. Are, is someone there from the legal department? Uh, yes, Assistant City Attorney William Balter present here. Um, the, uh, the request that's been made by the Department of Law is a request pursuant to MCL 15-268, Subsection E, which in relevant part reads that um, a uh, closed session may be entered into uh, to consult with the, the city council's attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy in connection with specific pending litigation, uh, but only if any open meeting would have a detrimental financial effect on the, uh, on the litigation or settlement position of the public, public body. And then just uh, to go and read what you read again, just for the record, uh, the request is uh, to discuss the opioid litigation regarding national prescription opiate litigation, MDL number 2804, City of Flint versus Access Pharma, uh, Incorporated, formerly known as Watson Pharma Incorporated at all. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, I would move that we go into executive sessions for the reasons stated by the uh, city attorney assistant city attorney on the record um, for the legal reasons stated and for the um, litigation that's been set that's been said and i so move do i have a second madam chair yes this is council one and wincy carter and i support that motion Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded to go into executive session to discuss the legal matter um, previously just um, brought before us. Um, Madam Clerk, could we have a roll call vote, please? Point of order, point of order. Yes. Uh, yes. Any discussion on the motion first? Excuse me, I forgot. Is there any discussion on that motion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Through you to the city attorney. Um, Mr. Bell, so how long do you think we'll be in there? I want the public to kind of get an idea of how long we'll disappear. What, 15 minutes or less? 15 uh, minutes I believe or more? About, about 20 minutes, uh, uh, Council President Mays. Okay, thanks. Um, this is um, Councilman Murphy. Yes, Ms. Harvey. Um, point of information, um, not in regards to this motion, but um, in regards to the special meeting that we had that Councilman President Mays called 
where we needed to go into executive session to talk about some um, litigation dealing with the garbage. Why isn't that on the um, spe- the um, executive order, executive um, committee? I mean, to go into executive session to add that on the agenda since we got enough council people here today. Why wouldn't that be on the um, executive session also in addition to this opium eight million. So if that special meeting was called for that litigation, why isn't it on this meeting today so that we can talk about that too since we needed to have a special meeting to talk about it? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, when we had the attorney here to go into executive session um, it was six council persons here uh, were at that meeting at the time, and the vote was five yes and one no. Mr. Murphy, vote, you voted no to go into executive session. I've scheduled the attorney to come back um, for Monday's meeting, and I still don't know if we'll go into closed session on that, but he'll be back on Monday. But today we have this and finance committee meeting. He'll be back, and that business will continue. Oh, okay. That's all I wanted to hear. I mean, clear up because I didn't understand why we wasn't yeah. talking about it today. No, we ain't doing it today. We're going to do it Monday. I talked to him today. Uh, is there any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Vote is eight yes zero no. Okay, the vote is eight zero eight yes zero no. Um, we will Madam now Chair. Yes, Madam yes, Chair. Yes. Have everybody through you to Janelle. Have everybody between you and Davina. Everybody notified how to get into that closed session. Everybody yes. had a number. Yes. Okay, I check my. Um, Anybody who don't have it need to speak up now. I don't have the number. uh, Yeah, I don't have it. Um, Can someone text it to me? This is Councilman Murphy. And I'm going to check my text to see if I got it. So Murphy and Mays, but right now I might have it already. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. This is Davina. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't sent a text yet, so I'm going to send it right now. I will text it to you and Mr. Murphy and anyone else that wants it right right now. I can send a text right now. Anybody else need it? Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, we will now go into close an executive session. Okay, it looks like everyone's back. Okay, I'd like to resume this finance committee meeting at 5.56 p.m. Um, next on the agenda is public speaking. Order, and order. We have a, yes, sir. Yeah, do a roll call, Madam Chair. Okay. All righty, thank you. May we have a roll call, please, Madam Chair? Mr. Mays? Present. Ms. Lewis? Present. Mr. Murphy? Present. Ms. Priestley? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Present. Mr. Piper? Present. Ms. Worthing? 
present. I have eight present. Okay, so next on the agenda is public speaking. Do we have a list of um, people who are wish to speak? We don't have a list. We just go down the list of, uh, of people that call in. Okay, okay. Our, um, per the amended rules governing meetings of the council, as adopted by the city council on Monday, June 12, 2017, two minutes are allowed per speaker, only one speaking opportunity per speaker. Okay, could you please have the first um, caller speak, please? The first caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. Are you talking to me? Yes. Okay, yes, I would like to speak to council uh, in regards to um, this $3.5 million that was supposed to be, or, or whatever the figure is, I know it's $3.something million. Oh, point, point of order. This is Councilman Murphy. Um, can the speaker give their name? Okay, my name is Dennis Burks. Okay. Now, Could you I please continue? give us your place of residence? I live in Flint, Michigan. Thank you very much. Hey, can I continue? Yes, she's me, sir. Thank you. May I continue? Yes, you may. Okay. <clears throat> I, I, I do have a question for the council in regards to the one point, I mean, three point something million dollars that's supposed to be paid to a certain uh, consultant firm for uh, managing some type of money or grant that the city was supposed to have been been given from the federal government and I just don't understand why would we why would we pay three point some million dollars to a consultant firm when that is the business of the council that's why we elected the council to do that I mean do the council have a budget committee that can manage this type of money? You know, that $3.7 million can be used for policing, to, you know, put more police on the streets or to fix some of the potholes on the street. You know, and it's, it's a shame that we have to pay a consulting firm to do the job that the city council is supposed to be doing. That's all I have to say, and I'm, I hope that y'all would address this issue and not approve that type of money for a consultant firm to to uh, uh, manage or do the job that y'all are supposed to be doing. Chair, yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, to all the speakers, we will address the issues. I'm even on the agenda with the meeting. We got that on the agenda tonight. But I want to say I don't know if the councils are supposed to do that administrative work. But, sir, we will address that um, before the night is over. Thank you so much. I understand what's being said, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have another speaker, please? The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. Next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. Next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. Next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. 
Yes, uh, Arthur Woodson. Uh, I wish we would have had more details on that $8.8 million uh, for opioid because it seems like we're in the same situation again where we don't get any information on anything and council has to vote on it and we can't even speak on it. Uh, also, uh, you know, normally we get the agenda in an email. I didn't even receive a agenda to even know what we can speak on. But uh, I speak on the part of the uh, consultant. Why do we need a consultant? We don't need a consultant or a compliance person for our money. I mean, that $3 million, like the previous caller said, can go towards putting a roof on somebody's house. Uh, fixing up the pipes on the inside because I see the state isn't going to do it. So we can definitely use that money for that. It's, it's a shame that that the money has been sitting there since May 19th, 2021. It's a shame. Those houses that they're getting ready to foreclose on, why don't we auction those houses off and put a grant to low income and give it to the give it back to the residents instead of sending them over to the county to where the land bank is. Why don't we start taking initiatives on that? And also, can somebody please call Suzanne Wilcox up and find out where is she with the community block grant dollars? Is there any reprogram dollars out there? for the people that can put in applications for them. When do we start putting in applications to get community black grant dollars? Because they keep on giving them to the same people. Thank you. The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, my name is Barbara Moore. And I would like to first of all welcome the uh, le- 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 uh, legitimate new council members because everybody that's sitting on that council is not legitimate legally. And I would like to uh, address the, uh, the nominating affidavit process. Now, uh, according to uh, the charter, section 2303G, Petition shall not be accepted unless accompanied by an affidavit sworn to by the candidate stating that stating the following. And each candidate, uh, they swear that they possess the legal qualifications for the elective office and whichever ward that might be. And second, upon meeting all of the legal qualifications, it says, I consent and request that my name be printed on the ballot. Third, as a legal candidate, I am required to list any and all direct business with, I mean, that I have with the city of Flint. And uh, anyway, you mark the, the box stating whether or not you have a uh, direct business. Now, my point is this. How is it that Eric Mays was allowed to not turn in an affidavit, a sworn affidavit, until August the 11th, which was more than three months past the deadline to turn in the positions, the petitions of April the 20th, 2021, and more than eight days past the primary election. I mean, that's illegal. It's obvious that the stage was set for Eric Mays to be on the ballot uncontested because he had a viable candidate by the name of Tanya Risen, who would have contested him, and that was well known. Anyway, I'll continue on my next round. Thank you. The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to counsel. The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to council.
The next caller has been unmuted if they'd like to speak to counsel. That was the last public speaker, Madam Chairperson. Thank you very much to all who shared their concerns to the council. Do we have any council response? And Madam Chairperson, we have yes, one ma'am. written comment that came in for this meeting. Oh, okay, thank you. Would you please read it? Sure. It's from Michelle Harrison. She says, good evening. Can someone inquire about fixing all of the missing street lamps from Southwestern Academy to Eisenhower Elementary to Kettering University to U of M Flint? I think they're called gooseneck or matchstick lamp posts. These lamps fall in the eighth, sixth, and fifth. We've been waiting for over five years to see them all finally fixed. Kettering has done so much to improve this corridor, plus the new Chevy State Park. It's really sad we can't get the safety of these lamps. It is pitch black in several directions where thousands of students walk to and from school, and there are many bus stops on this route. And while it is a 25 to 35 mile per hour school zone, cars tend to go much faster, so the dark patches make it even more unsafe. There are at least a dozen downed lamps waiting to be fixed. I know they're expensive, but so is the streetlight tax we all pay each year. Michelle, and that's the last one. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any council responses to these comments from the public? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, there were a couple comments on whether or not we should spend three point nine million as it relates to a um, firm to deal with uh, compliance and that type of thing as it relates to the expected 94 million, we have 47 million. There will be discussion and debate on that tonight. Um, For those who've commented on that, just keep listening as we go through the agenda items and um, the majority of the council will make a decision on that issue tonight. Um, I've got concerns with it, and I'll voice them during that discussion. Well, this is the first um, meeting that we've had electronically, I think, with this new council. And, you know, I'm listening to, in particular, Ms. Moore. Ms. Moore has been chasing me for about a few months now, and so I guess Maurice Davis is gone, certain council people is gone, her favorite council person, Kate Fields, is gone, and I'm still here, and you can chase me for three, four more years. As far as the way that the new charter reads as it relates to a variety of things, we've met all of our obligations. Uh, Ms. Moore was the one saying that my house, I think, was boarded up or I didn't live in the first ward, that I live in the seventh ward. That is way far from the truth. I'm the elected council person in the first ward. I'll continue to be the elected council person in the first ward. And Ms. Moore, you can continue to try to discredit me. You said I've smoked crack with your brother. I have not. I don't know your brother ain't smoked crack with none of them. So here we go again. That's one thing about public comment. They're free to do it, whether it's honest or truth or half truth or whatever. But welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless the residents of the city of Flint, and God bless this council as we try to take care of the business of the residents of the city of Flint. And God bless all the public speakers. Thank you very much, Mr. Mays. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the public comments? Madam Chair. Um, yes, was that man was that Ms. Worthing? No. Or was that Ms. Carter? Ms. Carter? Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. Um Thank you. I would like to first thank all of the public speakers. Thank you for your input. Um, and thank you for being engaged in the process. Also, I would like to um, 
Janelle, I would like to put in a referral. And this is a referral of status. I want to find out the status of the decorative lights. Um, I don't know what department is taking care of that. I think that's planning and development. Um, Suzanne Wilcox, we spoke about we spoke about the lights before those decorative lights, but I would like to get a status on um, the um, decorative lights and when um, we will um, get those lights fixed. So if you could please put that in for me, I would appreciate it very much. Yes, ma'am. And that is that is it, Madam Chair. Thank you. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, could you have um, Janelle, if there's no objections, put a discussion item about the block grant procedure that was brought up as well for discussion and finance? Yes, please do that, Ms. Janelle. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Murphy, were you wanting to speak? Yes, yes, I got a couple of things. Could you do a referral also in addition to what Eric Mays asked to um, – Suzanne Walcott to see um, do we have any unspent um, dollars and if she can um, come to council to speak on the community development block grant dollars to see when the applications is coming out, um, when should people be looking forward to applying for those dollars. Um, and also, in addition to um, the speaker, Dennis, that talked about the role and responsibility of um, City Council, as a former charter commissioner who helped um, draft, um, put together the new charter, um, I, I think um, Inez Brown office on the second floor have a copy of the charter. I um, would recommend that you go to the second floor to um, um, the clerk's office and ask for a copy of the charter so you can read the charter so you can understand the role and responsibility of the city council. I don't believe, and I know for sure for a fact, that we are, we do um, oversee the purse strings. We the check and balance of the funding, but we don't um, manage day to day operation of the fund. So this forty seven million dollars will not be um, managed by city council. We will have the final say, hopefully, if things go right, on where this money is being spent. But we won't be doing the day-to-day -day um, overseeing of the money like that. We want to make sure we try to do our due diligence when it comes down to um, where the money is being spent. But as far as the day-to-day -day operation, that's not our role. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, no, that's about it. I I'll say the rest. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the comments made. Okay. Hearing none, Google. moving on through our agenda items, we have a special order, um, 210278. Special yeah, order. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I would ask that if you can order that to stay on for another two weeks without objections. Last time I um, talked to Prosecutor Flood, I told him I was going to drop it. He asked that it stay on. So if you could order that to stay on without objections, I'll keep it there. So ordered without objection. Okay. Moving on to our resolutions. Madam Chair. Number. Yes, Mr. Mays. Um, I didn't know you were fixing to do that. Go ahead, and I'll wait. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Okay, I was going to say Resolution 210540. That's the contractual agreement with Ernst and Young for $3.9 million. Um, that the residents, a couple of them, just called in and talked about. Um, I'm just wondering, is Mr. Whittigan on the line? 
I am here, uh, President May. Yeah, Mr. Whittigan, did you um, firm up or really get any firm information as it relates to a shorter term? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, the resolution before you is for, you know, what, five years, but uh, if it would appease the council, we could do a two-year contract with the option to renew versus the five-year contract. Uh, and that would just be the cost of year one and year two in the proposal before you. So uh, it would come out to about $2, $2 million. Madam Chair, through you to Councilperson Pfeiffer. Um, Councilperson Pfeiffer, did you by any chance look at or get with anybody in administration between the last meeting, the special meeting, and this meeting as it what relates to Yes. This is Ms. Worthing. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? No, there is not. Okay. There really shouldn't be discussion Ma happening. No, there is not. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Can we read the resolution? Yeah, Madam Chair, I would, move to, I would move to suspend the rules so we can discuss the business of the city without this mess. Um, I would oh, move to oh, suspend sorry. the rules as it relates to resolutions. Madam Chair, I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded yeah. that we suspend the rules. Are there, is there any discussion? Yes. Yeah, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Ms. Worthing? Yeah, thank you. I, don't, I hope this council has um, have, have learned from the last few meetings that we can discuss things in a pretty quick manner uh, we have a lot on the agenda, a lot to discuss, and suspending the rules would just allow chaos, which it has. Um, there is no need to suspend the rules. Um, we, no one else is talking uh, over the time allotted except for one person, and it's not needed. And if we suspend the rules, this meeting will last till 1 or 2 a.m. That is what has happened in the past. Uh, and that is what will happen tonight. And a lot of you ran for your city council seats because of the dysfunction of council. And I, sh I sure hope that you keep that in mind. Um, you've had a few meetings to get used to everything. Uh, there is absolutely no reason to suspend the rules. We will absolutely give you grace and latitude as you learn to chair and learn the rules of council. But without the rules, Meetings will go till 1 or 2 a.m. So I'm going to be voting no. Thank you. Yeah, Madam Is there Chair. Any other... oh. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I don't want to have the same carryover that we had from the other council with all these. I used to call them goofy rules um, as it relates to a motion have to be made first and you only get um, five minutes and all of that mess. We've had two or three meetings and they went without a hitch. Miss Worthen, if you want to talk like one person and you're referring to me, you've been already um, absent while we've been learning and taking care of business with suspended rules and getting out of here in a certain amount of time. I'm hoping and I'm believing that we've experienced good meetings while you've been gone. And so now here you go again. And so that's why I'm making this motion so we can take care of the business of the city of Flint expediently without people walking on eggshells trying to get their questions answered under the goofy rules. So I'll be voting yes to suspend them, and I hope we have six votes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Anyone else? Um, this is Councilman Murphy. Yes, Mr. Here, Murphy. Here's where I'm at with this um, situation with um, suspending the rules. On one hand, um, Councilman Worthy, I hear you. But on the other hand, I also hear some um, bitterness that's going on from the past administrative um, council that's been brought on to this council, and even if you just would have just said, okay, I just don't want to, it was almost like you were throwing shots at one particular person, and some of us know who you're talking about. 
and I don't want to get in that. I'm on. I'm not on nobody's side. <clears throat> but if I was um, the person that you was throwing shots at, I would feel the same way that you was throwing shots. And I caught the shots that you was throwing at him. And even whether that's true or not true, you was throwing shots at him indirectly, and I caught it. And I don't know if my colleagues caught it. And I just don't want to get in that, and I don't want to have to vote one way or another because I was leaning one way, but then when I heard what you were saying, it made me want to lean another way, and I don't want to get in the middle of it. And, and all due respect, I understand what you guys have went through in the uh, previous council, but we got a new council here, and I just will ask that you will respect us that came on here new and not try to throw no darts at nobody or shots at nobody and then try to drag us in the middle of your stuff. And then we got to vote one way or another, and it's almost like we voting one way because of what you just said. Now, what you just said made me want to go vote the other way. And I'm just asking, could you please don't come and bring that and have that kind of energy on us? I don't want it on me at all. Madam Chair? I'm done. Yes, Ms. Worthing. Ms. Worthing. This is my second round. Uh, Mr. Quincy, I'm very sorry that you took that personally um, and you perceived uh, my discussion that way, but four years doesn't go away just because you're now on council. Um, I have been abused, uh, and some of you are about to be abused. Uh, so I would appreciate it if you look at it from my perspective and what I've been through. And Mr. Uh, Murphy, um, there, you, you've left meetings early. You have to go to work. So you're going to vote to suspend the rules and then leave us here until 1 or 2 a.m. Um, think on that. Uh, please don't, don't use discussion as a way to manipulate others and say, well, I'm not going to vote for that right now because I don't like the way you said that. I just wish you would vote the way that you feel. Um, me pointing out that Mr. May does take a very long time. Um, no, no one here knows how a meeting should be run because you haven't been anywhere else in a meeting. Um, but this personal, Mr. Pfeiffer, did you hear from administration? Uh, point of, and point of information. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Um, for the record, um, I don't go back to work to um, the 19th, so um, that's not factual. I don't have to go to work tonight, so I got all the time in the world, and that wouldn't be why I'd be voting the way I'm voting, for the record. Just to point out, Mr. Murphy, that's not a point of information. A point of information is a question to the speaker, not a statement. Um, so uh, well, I was we, we have some learning to do. That's okay. But it is a, a question to the speaker. Um, everyone's allowed to give their opinion. I'm sorry that you were offended by mine, but I'm also offended by others, um, especially when my time is taken up and, and we have these personal conversations like, Mr. Pfeiffer, did you talk to administration? That's not how meetings are run in any setting. Uh, you, you speak five minutes one round and five minutes another. That's a total of ten. And if we need to speak longer on an issue, we can always say, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we all have another one or two rounds to speak on this issue. That's a very simple motion to make and something I could agree on if it's something we all are interested in and need more time in. But to suspend the entire rules at every single meeting means that we have no order. And many of you ran on having an orderly meeting. And I, I have high hopes that this council will do that, um, even if it hasn't been so far. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this Madam motion? Chair. Yes, is that Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. So I would like the, the public to know this is why meetings run until 1 a.m. And it's this bickering and disputing of common sense that shows that we've been in and out, out of meetings the past, suspending the rules. We actually flow better than the previous council. So I'm ready to vote on this. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on the motion? Okay, it's been motioned and seconded to suspend the rules of the council. Maybe have a roll call, please. Mr. Mays. Did you call my name, Janelle? Yes, sir. Yeah, I vote yes. Ms. Lewis? No. Mr. Murphy? No. Ms. Priestley? No. Ms. Winter Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? No. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? No. The vote is three yes, five no. Okay, the vote is three yes and five no to suspend the rules, so the rules will not be suspended. Okay, so before this body now is... Madam Chair. To... Yes, Mr. Mays. Madam Chair, this council better get ready to go to school. All those no, no voters, I'm going to take them to school. Thank you so much. We're in order. Before this... Yes. Was that a threat to this council? I think that's very uncalled for. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, the comment and what Ms. Worthing and others have done has been uncalled for. Now we're fixing to follow the rules to the T. I'm going to call them out. It ain't a threat, Ms. Worthing. It's to show how goofy and stupid and time-consuming these rules that you and others just voted for before we could get them fixed is. So don't come on here trying to piss me off and try to get the public to believe somebody threatening somebody. No, it's a following of the rules. That's what you voted for. That's what the majority voted for. You want to label it a threat. I got a lot of adjectives I can use to describe you. Now, I can describe your condescending, um, privileged tone as well. Who do you think you're talking to on this, in this public arena? You got the wrong one. Yes. Ms. She's out of order. Ms. Point of order. If she don't say point of order or point of information and she just raise her voice, your job, Madam Chair, is to give her her first warning. I, I said point of order. She did. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Um, Worthing. I'm just asking um, that we move on with the agenda. Mr. Mays is out of order. He's speaking out of turn and threatening others. Um, so I would appreciate it if we could just move on to our special order, please. Thank you. Okay, we do have much. Madam Chair, the... point of order. Yes, Mr. Mays. Madam Chair, your job is to rule on her point of order, whether it was legitimate or not. That's the order of business under these goofy rules. Rule on her. And then I'll decide if I appeal your ruling. I want to hear what you got to say to her point point of order. Oh, thank you. Um, I do think that we need to continue on with the business of the council tonight rather than um, debating these types of issues. So I'm point of information, ahead. Madam Chair. Yes, My point of information is I want you to rule on whether her talk about threats and all of that is out of order or in order. That's what I want to hear. I don't want you to give a, 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 a speech on what we should do. I want you to rule on her point of order that she used to interrupt the speaker who had the floor. That's what I want to hear. Well, you did have a point of order, a point of information. She did as well. Um, Ms. So, Priestley, you can, um, 
the point of order is valid, or you can say I deny your point of order. Well, thank you very much. It is who valid. Point of order. Who point of order? Who was that speaking? It's Miss Worthy. Okay, she's out of order. She don't just take the floor to tell you something and let you do a privileged motion, a point of information, a point of order. Y'all ask for this. I'm telling you how it's going to be under these rules, and she's out of order. I'm still waiting for you to give her her first warning. Only a privileged motion can interrupt the speaker. And she didn't do it that time. I didn't hear it the first time. I, I, I didn't hear it that time. I'm still saying you got the chair where you rule out order, give her her first warning, because in a minute she'll be gone, because she's ignorant. And then the second thing is you still rule on whether she could interrupt me with what she said. Was that a true point of order? We're going to play it by the rules. I'm going to wait and see what you say now, Ms. Um, no, uh, Ms. Um, Priestley. This is what she's got y'all doing. Okay. We are supposed to treat each other with respect. And um, I find that it was disrespectful. Um, and so I'm going I to I appeal the ruling of the I appeal the ruling of the chair. Okay. I second. Okay, any discussion on that? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Yeah, you rule that I'm being disrespectful because I said in plain language that we're going to live up to the rules that y'all wouldn't suspend. I intended to make it easy for certain council people because these goofy rules and all the intricacies thereof take time to learn. The majority of council said no. So that means they know the rules, they understand the rules, you as a chair understand them, and you haven't warned Ms. Worthing once trying to instruct you as to what you should rule on, just popped up there and said it. That did takes a warning under these rules. You didn't do it. Plus, so you didn't let her characterize me. She's the one who started disrespecting me, calling out my name without saying it. Then Mr. Murphy checked her on it, and then she said my name. And you don't tell me I'm threatening and disrespectful. No, I'm making you live up to these rules that you wanted to live up to, you and the majority, and don't even know them yet. I know most of them without even looking at them. They're stupid. They're goofy. They're time-consuming. She started this time-consuming mess, and y'all didn't carry it on. So back to the regular old council, now I'm going to vote. I'm not in favor of your ruling that I was out of order on her point of order being threatening and disrespectful. I just got a different point of view than you on how I act and how I talk. That's my position, and I'm not going to let her set a narrative on my professional behavior. You are letting her do it by ruling that way, and I appeal to ruling. I don't agree with you. Madam Chair. Ms. Worthing. Ms. Worthing. I'm very sorry that this um, new council, uh, you know, has to find out the hard way, but this is just one fraction of what I've been through for the last four years. I was called ignorant just now by Mr. Mays. I've been called a lot of names, nasty white woman, many, many things, all because I'm serious about getting the city business done. Um, I, I don't agree with Mr. Mays. Uh, I believe that we can follow the rules of five minutes each and help the new chairs chair a meeting. Um, this is why I didn't want you all to vote for virtual meetings because we can't see each other's faces. We don't know each other, um, you know, the best yet. Uh, we can't, you know, smile at each other or uh, help each other out, whisper, okay, you do this next. 
Um, I really want, that's why I voted to have in-person meetings because you learn the best when you're in person first and then we can help each other out without a big to do. Um, and, and so that, that part, maybe that will change. I don't know. Um, it is difficult to learn uh, how to chair when all you are hearing are voices. Um, so I commend you for, you know, trying. Um, I will continue to help no matter what. Uh, no one should be expected to know how to use Robert's rules properly um, immediately. But there's no reason to suspend the rules to do that. And there's no reason to call each other names um, because we disagree. Uh, and so I'm going to be uh, voting yes in favor of the chair, Ms. Priestley, who has called Mr. Mays out of order um, because he was disrespectful and talking out of turn. There was no resolution on the floor, um, and so we need a resolution or get through the special order first, um, and that would be following the rules. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, this is... Um Councilman Murphy. Yes, so while while you guys were discussing the rules, I was taking notes. I heard ignorant. I heard goofy rules, privileged motion. You know, so I don't know who ignorant, but um, I did hear the word ignorant being called, so I think it was out of order because I don't think none of us should be called ignorant. And then I poured out my rules. I heard goofy rules. I heard, so I was looking at my rules to see if I heard, the, the heading say rules governing meetings of the council. It didn't say goofy rules, so our opinion is our opinion, and I understand that we, some may think it's goofy, but there are rules. We, we voted in majority. Majority of us voted to go based on the rules. We understand that um, we are new, and people are new chairing a meeting, but I think we should share space to respect the new chairs to allow them space to um, get up to speed chairing a meeting. And, yes, we may make mistakes, including me, but I don't think we should be getting talked to like they getting talked to because they making a mistake as a chairperson. And I'm willing to um, work with whoever to try to make sure these meetings go right, but I ain't going to sit up here and just um, allow – somebody to take me to school. I don't need to go to school. I graduated in 1993 at Flint Northwestern High School, and I also um, served on the Charter Commission. So I, I, I know a little something. I may not know everything, and I ain't perfect, and I ain't saying I know everything, and I ain't saying I know all these rules, but I am. Um, I need to be addressed Councilman Murphy. My constituents voted for me. When I come here, my constituents want me to come here and do the best and let's get the uh, work of the business done. What I ain't going to do is I'm not going to be on no council and get talked down on because somebody Point of information. They wait. I want to be um, talked to any kind of way. Point of information. I'm all my colleagues just like I want to Do you be. know the talking should so cease when there's a point of order? Point of order. I'm talking point of order. Point of order. I'm talking. Yeah. I don't want to be disrespected. I want to be treated fair. All point the of time. order. Point of order. Mr. Mays. Thank you for the point of order. One, if he don't see stalking, he's out of order. When you hear a privileged motion, a point of information, I don't care where he graduated from. Under these rules, a point of information, point of order, cease talking. He howling, acting a fool, and you ain't warned him yet. Miss Worthy, under these rules. Okay, I understand. But you got to get order. He was way out of order, way out of line. And I'm going to tell you something, Ms. Priestley. If the chair don't recognize the point of order, you better keep your mute button unmuted because these rules say the chair should be removed. Point of information and point of order are immediate privilege motions. All talking should cease. Now, had he taken up for somebody, 
who just interrupted you, trying to school you. That was Miss Worthy. Now he he done acted a fool. I don't care if he was elected or not. If he go to howling and acting a fool like that, that's what I'm going to call it. I don't care if he'd never agree with me. This is how some of those members on the old council acted. Ms. Priestley, I will respect that you were muted. Unmute yourself when you're chairing a meeting, because when you hear foolishness and howling like that on a privileged motion, he don't understand. He should be warned and then next removed. Now, that's how this is going to have to work since they want to play by the rules. You are ignorant to the rules if you don't know to shut up when you hear a privileged motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Get this meeting under control. Okay. I am going to rule that um, you were out of order when Mr. Mays called for point of information, point of order. Any other comments? Any other discussion? Um, Madam Chair, this is um, Liddell Lewis, Councilwoman Lewis. Yes. Yes, Councilwoman Lewis. All right. Lewis. Thank you so much. So, in the name of civility, I would definitely like to move on because if we all check our clocks, we have wasted almost 30 minutes discussing nothing, and we have we have got no business done, and we have heard a lot of back and forth. And the overall point is this: we came here to a committee meeting tonight so we could learn the rules, and also so we can get some work done. And I would definitely like to go forward with that plan. So I thank my colleagues um, that are holding up that. Uh, model that we're trying to do, and um, hopefully everyone else will fall in line. But at the end of the day, we are brand new. It's a lot that I don't know, and I don't admit that I do, and I'm here to learn. So by not suspending the rules, it allows Point of to information. Learn. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, through you to the speaker, Ms. Ms. Lewis, you voted to go by the rules, didn't you? Okay, so yes, Dr. Lewis, she sure did. I voted to go by the rules, so we will continue to learn the rules as we go. Point of information. Yes, Mr. May. And so you do agree that when Ms. Worthen and Mr. Murphy is out of order, they should be warned and subsequently then removed. Do you agree with that, don't you? Yes, I do, as well as anyone who is out of order. We should follow the rules as to what they say. So was that question to me or to Madam Chair? It was to the speaker. That's a proper point of information. So I feel that he's ever obstructing the meeting. Yes, they need a warning. So whosoever is obstructing the business of the city from going forward, they need a warning, whoever it may be. And so in the, in the name of teamwork, I would like to uh, move forward and get this meeting on the road. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other discussion? Okay, we call for a vote. No, Madam Chair, you no. get the last word on I get the appeal, last word. If there's no yeah. other discussion. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Point of order. Okay. I feel that um, on the appeal, I will accept your appeal, and I will reverse my decision. Um, we are going to be civil in this council. We will learn the rules. The rules basically follow Robert's rules. Um, there will be revisions to the rules, and we'll be learning those. But I point of, point of order, point of information. Yes, ma'am. Sir, excuse me. If you reverse in your decision that I was out of order in whatever Ms. Worthing was referring to a threat, then I'll move to um, withdraw my appeal if you so allow. I will allow. I would move to withdraw the appeal. I second it. Does this call for a vote? Well, there's discussion we, on We never voted. Yeah, there's discussion. Point of order. Yeah, Madam Chair, 
I think you're doing the right thing. You get caught up in this word, this trap, categorizing my speech as it relates to schooling folks. As she said, threatening. I ain't threatening nobody. I said we're going to follow the rules if that's how this council voted. That's factual. So I can appreciate you withdrawing, and I'm out of order because of her characterization of my speech. And so I'm going to be voting the yes to withdraw the appeal because this people then got warnings caught up in it, including her. She started the mess. We were discussing the business of the city, the ARPA funds, and we would probably be well on our way. But, you know, we're dealing with a majority group here. And I'll say it again, if they want to stick with these rules and don't know them and they're ignorant to the fact of the rules and ain't learned them yet, then so be it. I don't care how they characterize my speech. It's a freedom of speech, and it's not nothing meant to be nasty. I'm trying to help new folks, and they don't get it. And then the Quincy spouts off and keep talking. He don't get it. He's ignorant to them rules. And so that use of those words didn't uh, require me to be out of order. And so I'll be voting yes to withdraw this and try to move on under these, okay. what I think some of them are goofy groups. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and call the motion, call the vote, please. Point call of information. Roll. Call the roll. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know okay. if you heard it. But it's mm, mm, part of a discussion from Mr. Murphy. I don't know, Madam Chair. Maybe he wanted the floor, or maybe he wanted his second warning. All right. Seeing how there's no more discussion, um, let's go ahead and call the roll, please, Madam Clerk. Ms. Lewis? Um, just real quick, point of information. So what are we voting on? This is to withdraw the appeal that Mr. Mays made. Oh, okay. Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Woodbury Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Vote is seven yes, one no. Okay, the vote is seven yes and one no. And Mr. Mays will um, reverse his request for appeal. Sorry, my wording was wrong on that. Um, So let's go on with our agenda, please. We have a resolution, number 210540, our contractual agreement with Ernst & Young, um, does anyone Madam have Chair. any dis- Yes, sir. I make a motion to, to table this until the second committee meeting in January. Hey, is there a second? Madam Chair? Yes, Ms. Wor- um, Winfrey Carter? I'll support that motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to to um, table this resolution 210540 until the second meeting in January. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Pfeiffer, please, first. Yeah, I think that there's a lot that this community has concern over, and the dollar amount is one. And after receiving the The complete data of the submittals from Ernst & Young, I have concern about even doing a one or two year because we're going to end up needing a compliance firm for the duration of the time that it takes to spend these monies and the projects they are being completed. So a current, the current um, proposal and those dollar amounts, I can't, um, support those in, in anytime soon being that the allotted hours from Ernst & Young are only giving us two and a half people per year for 
and two million dollars. So I think the public would be um, needs to be more aware of this, and we need more feedback. And I think that having our community discussions meeting as we voted last time, we're just we're we're moving too fast as far as spending this amount of money. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Who was who is that? Um, Worthing. Okay, Ms. Worthing. Um, I'm I'm going to be voting no. Uh, I will not be voting to um, for any resolutions um, to spend ARPA dollars without a compliance firm. Um, we need a compliance firm. So our job as council is not to micromanage administration. We have a part, yes, um, but unless you think there's some serious corruption going on, um, we have to trust that the administration um, did their due diligence. Uh, they uh, rated these companies, discussed what they had to offer, uh, and then re made the recommendation to council. It's the same with the emergency with the roof. Do we want to spend hours and hours of taxpayer dollars questioning uh, every move the city made uh, and, and be micromanagers? Um, or do we want to get the business of the city done? We have a lot to get done with these ARPA funds. Public, the public hasn't weighed in. Uh, we need to have our community meetings. Uh, we need to have a compliance firm that can help us come up with a plan, and we need a plan. Uh, I will not vote for things piecemeal, uh, and, and I would like a compliance firm so that we can start asking those questions that we all have on what we can and cannot spend it on, and after we get public comment, they can help us formulate a plan. So I'm going to be voting no. I'd like to vote on this and, and get this done as soon as possible. Unless someone on council has another suggestion of a firm that they know that could do it way less. Um, I heard what the administration said, their reasoning, and it was acceptable to me. And um, if it's not acceptable, uh, then have a solution, please. Thank you. Any other comments? Discussion? Madam Chair. Liddell Lewis. Hello, am I muted? I did not hear you. Um, was that Mr. Piper the second time? Yeah, I think I'm going to call on Dr. Lewis out. first, and then I'll call on you, Mr. Piper. Okay. Well, I'll point of information in Ms. Worthing, so I think I was okay. muted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So my point of point information. Of information. To, my point of information to Ms. Worthing is, does she think that $1.2 million is worth I cannot hear him. I didn't hear him either. Mr. Pfeiffer? Okay, we apparently have lost Mr. Pfeiffer for a minute. So until he comes back, um, with Dr. Lewis? I'm me. Okay. Oh, are, oh, like, okay. Dennis, are you back? Wait a minute. Dennis, that, Mr. Pfeiffer, are, are you back? Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm in City Hall, so I don't know if I lost signal for a second. But my point of information to Ms. Worthing was, does she think that Two and a half people per year is worth 1.2 million. Does she think that one person is worth a half a million dollars? Because that's what they're providing. Um, Mr. Pfeiffer, are you aware of how much we pay uh, our CFO? Are you aware yes. of how much yes, financial management yes. is paid? Yes, I am. I'm aware that we pay him 135,000 okay. per year, but that's one person. Now I'm talking. This is two and a half people for. 1.2 million. So that equals out to $500,000 for one person. Are you aware of that? Mr. Pfeiffer, uh, we just have differing opinions. 
uh, you don't want a compliance firm because you want to spend it in just one or two categories, and I'm not cool with that. We need public did, input. Did I, did I, point of information. Yeah, but there's a lot going on, Mr. Pfeiffer. Point of and information. I don't have to, uh, yes, Mr. Pfeiffer. Question. Did I, have, you, have I ever said I do, not, I do not want compliance firm? Yes, yes, you have. You said you are not in support. I am not in support of this compliance firm because of the dollar amount. Mr. Pfeiffer, at the last meeting I was in, you said that you didn't think we needed a compliance firm at all because other communities like Phoenix uh, did not use one, uh, and you only no, wanted to spend no. it in one point or two of, categories. Point of information. That's exactly what you said. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Pfeiffer. Uh, I said Phoenix has four times the amount of money and used only $4 million for compliance. That's what I said. That is not what you said. Um, get a transcript. But thank you. Well, okay. Keep doing this. Okay, Factor Lewis. Okay, well, thank you so much, Madam Chair. So it, it looks like that we um, have the possibility to put some addendums with this contract. So if we vote on it tonight, then I mean that we'd be voting on it as is. However, if we um, table it to the next committee meeting, um, that may allow us to, to work through the addendums. And I also would like to add that I had Janelle send out an email to every council member, and it was uh, an email from Mr. Whittigan, um, breaking down, as I asked in a previous meeting, you know, um, the, the criteria and how they came about selecting um, Ernest Young. So um, step by step, it broke that down. So I think it would definitely be uh, something good for everyone to look at. Now, I just received it this week, so that will give us more time if we did a next committee meeting to look, to look through it, and then we have all of the information that we need to make a viable decision and also any addendums um, that may be required. Thank you, Madam Chair. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Do Ms. Lewis understand this ain't a motion for the next committee meeting? Well, Dr. Lewis um, does, and I'm just pointing out what I sent to council to help us make our decision. Thank you. Okay. Okay, yeah, the motion on the floor is to postpone it to the second um, finance committee meeting in January, just as a um, point of reference. Is there any other discussion? Yes, yes, this is Council Murphy. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Is any of the um, administrators, um, Clyde Edwards, um, on the line with us? I got. want to ask him a question. Is Mr. Edwards there? Yes, he is. Uh, this is Mr. Edwards. Go ahead, Mr. Murphy. Good afternoon, oh, good afternoon Mr. Edwards. Um, my question with this contract, you guys put a request for um, proposals out to companies, um, which included Ernest & Young Management Services. Um, <clears throat> when you put the RSCs out for this contract, um, how many people responded to these this contract? I, at this point, I think it best to um, allow Mr. Whittigan, because they were directly involved with it, allow Mr. Whittigan uh, to respond to you concerning the number. But we, we, for the most part, I will say this to um, to you, Councilman, that we have put forth the, the the best selection to move forward with. We want to try to. You know, one of the one of the outcries that has taken place with respect to this particular uh, matter is that we weren't moving fast enough. Now, I heard one council person say we're moving too fast. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out, uh, you know, which is it? Uh, we've got we put in front of council this particular uh, firm, which has been properly vetted based on the city's process. And so we're trying to move that forward. But I'm going to allow, I'm going to go ahead and move for Mr. Whittigan to answer your question. Uh, Rob? 
Uh, I am uh, here, Council Member um, Murphy, if, if you could repeat the question. Um, when you, you guys put the request for proposal out for this particular, um, for, to have someone to come and um, manage the compliances of the ARPA funds, how many people responded? Uh, eight firms total. Eight firms total. Out of those um, eight firms um, total, how many, um, uh, um, what, and one of the things I think I remember um, Pfeiffer asking in the um, proposal, you guys added additional um, activities in the proposal, in the ARPA funds outside of just um, the request for proposal for the ARPA, the um, $94 million. So, Say, for instance, and I'm going to give you an example, if I do a request for proposals for someone to come and manage um, the ARPA funds, you guys, then who decided to add additional activity in the request for proposals? So why why didn't y'all feel the need to just um, ask for a request for proposal for someone to just manage the ARPA funds versus adding some additional activities, because I think I heard you guys saying these people will be, be, be responsible for lobbying additional dollars. Why couldn't you guys just stick strictly to having someone come to manage the um, ARPA funds versus adding some additional on uh, what y'all wanted to do? Because that may have, um, that may have um, changed in the cost in you know, because I think you said y'all want them to at least bring in 20 or 30 additional dollar, uh, million dollars. Why, why did y'all feel the need to want to have to do something in addition to just having someone to manage the ARPA funds? Yeah, I, I, I believe I understand what you're uh, asking, Council Member. So, yes, compliance is, is a very important piece of this. Uh, we wanted a, a third party to be the city's watchdog to ensure that these federal funds are used properly. But then we also were looking for a firm to help us uh, implement the dollars effectively, ensure they're getting out to the residents efficiently and equitably. Uh, we also wanted them to look at other dollars out there. So if we put a proposal forward, uh, but there are possibly other pots of money we could use versus our, our city dollars, uh, they're supposed to be looking for that, if that makes sense. Uh, so, so they're not just simply here to tell us how to spend the money, uh, but they're here to partner with us, uh, council, uh, administration, and, and the community to help us with planning and administrating uh, the disbursement of the ARPA dollars and to ensure that, you know, obviously ensure the proposals are in compliance, uh, determine, you know, if, we should be using the city's $94 million or a different source of money. Uh, they also bring an economic development mind to the table uh, to support future economic development growth. So when we submitted, when we put out this RFP, we wanted a full encompassing approach to just simply, yes, you're in compliance, or no, you're, you're not in compliance. Uh, Amazing. Oh, we got Susan Wilcott that work in the Community Development Block Grant Department that I, I don't know if her job classification allow her to be able to lobby different dollars. And then I think you got Safani or something. Um, what is his job classification? I bull, Mr. Stevens, uh, Kalfani Stevens, is our Economic Development Director. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm saying, you already have people in those positions to be able to go and try to lobby dollars. I, I just think I would have preferred for you guys to put a request for proposals out to deal strictly with the ARPA dollars and then add, a, you know, because it's already a lot of money. And then from listening to Susan Wilcox, she got 8.5 full-time staff in her department, and she won't have the capacity to manage the dollars. So I understand bringing someone in, and I'm in support of bringing someone in, in compliance to manage the dollars. Just the additional um, request for proposal that you guys drafted to add additional services for them point to of, do something point of information. outside of the yeah. Mr. Pfeiffer. Uh, Mr. Murphy, are you aware that half of this, it's less than half of this is is for compliance? So the 1.2 in the first year 
Um, only 530,000 of that is compliance. Thank you for that. So, so that's just my uh, that's my issue with um, the request for proposal. So, is if we don't so if we don't approve this um, contract as is, is is there a way that we can change up the contract? Because it just seems like my colleagues have some issues on this. Is there you know, because you guys already put the request for proposal and what it looks like, you know, um, to, for us to come in to change, would that um, mess up the whole request for proposal that you guys put out? You know, like, y'all don't put it out. Now we want to change the request for proposal as far as how that activity is spent or the monitoring. Does that affect? what you guys have done when it came down to y'all putting a request for proposal. Will y'all have to go back to the drawing board after we make changes to put requests and do some new requests for proposal? Because I'm, I'm, that's what I'm asking. If we make some amendments, so say we postpone this to January, um, will you guys, uh, and we want to make some changes or we give you guys some recommendations on some changes and what we want to see, um, because it looked like my colleagues have some concerns. Will that affect the request, the proposal um, RSPs that you guys put out? We would have to go back to the drawing board just in the essence of you know, revisiting the contract. Uh, we, if you're asking if we'd have to reissue a new RFP, I believe in the RFP issued, um, Part of it said, you know, in our instructions to vendors said that the city of Flint reserves the right to award by item and or group of items. So, uh, contract, you know, that's under contract award or split of award. So, uh, if if that's the uh, you know, direction, what what we're focused on is the proposal before you, you know, for council to to either vote it up or down on what we're proposing. Uh, if, and if I may, I would like to correct uh, Brian from ENY isn't able to be on the phone with us. He's on a plane right now, uh, but I was able to text him before his plane took off. And uh, I asked how many staff EY would be providing the city, uh, and he responded with, we plan to have a core team of four to five staff members, and we'll flex from there, uh, four to five people dedicated uh, to whatever is needed. Point of order. Point of information. Monitoring. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Pfeiffer. So uh, four to five full time because that's not what the, um, I guess this would be the, the follow-up to the RFP states. Little less than 5,000 man hours, which is 0.5 people full time. So I to five. Mr. Pfeiffer, we can't hear you again. Motherfucker. We heard that. <laughs> we heard that one. <laughs> can we can hear you now. Okay, great. Great. Um, this is why I voted to go in person. Is he saying four to five full-time employees or four to five people that you're going to have on there and some of them part-time? Because the follow-up says 5,000 man-hours, which is equivalent to 2.5 full-time people. So what he is saying is that they, they will have a core team of four to five people that we can reach out to uh, and work with uh, to to get uh, these, these dollars spent in the community. Great. So we're going to have four to five phone numbers. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Yeah. Yes, Mr. May. Yeah, under these rules, what Mr. Piper has done, and you know you're a friend of mine, sir, I, and what you're doing now is out of order because they yeah. didn't suspend the rules. I'm That's just telling. I'm going to go back to Mr. Murphy. 
Um, I'm I'm okay. done with my questions. Um, Pfeiffer, you can um, have the floor now. Thank you so much. Um, Madam, you know, Madam, point Madam. of information. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Mr. Murphy, do you know you don't have that authority to get nobody to floor? That is correct. Um, I'm, I'm just, just just for the record, I'm done with my questions. Um, in all due respect, okay. um, my, my apology for um, not um, turning it back over to the chairperson, but to Madam Chair um, Judy, uh, Miss Presley, Councilwoman Fourth Ward Presley. I am done with my Presley. questions, and I turn it back yes. over to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. And I've heard Mr. Conroder. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, so my concerns with moving forward E and Y are expressly in the fact that we have not yet seen a full proposal or full budget regarding the ARPA funds for uh, for the city of Flint. As such, I do not feel comfortable voting for a contract that has not yet been properly budgeted. Um, and I think that we need to make sure that any money for compliance is included in that final plan. Now, I do want to clarify my position on a compliance firm because it has been uh, skewed by a number of people. I wholeheartedly believe that we need a compliance firm for a number of reasons. It is not against the compliance firm. It is simply for the process. We need to make sure that the process for any kind of allocation of dollars is in place before we vote on anything. We know that the $94 million is a lot of money. A lot of people are going to start issuing contracting requests for this money. We need to protect the interest of the city by making sure that we have an adequate uh, contracting procedure in place that is as objective as possible so that we can uh, prevent the city from future lawsuits um, should, should any kind of bidder be concerned with the way in which a contract was selected. So with that being said, I will be voting to table this for January. Thank you. Any other discussion? Madam Chair. Uh, is that Ms. Worthy? Yes. Point of okay. order. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, I have Ms. Worthy spoke in this first round. The order would be you get two rounds, and you want to first clear up if anybody in the first round have um, anybody want to speak in the first round before you go to a second round of folks? Have Ms. Worthen spoke in this first round is my point of order. And I was trying to determine that. Have you already spoken, Ms. Worthen? I thought you yes. had. Okay. Could, um, is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Because I have some comments. Um, yes, before I'd I like to um, speak, Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Worthen, Carter. Yeah, I um I do agree with um my colleagues. I'm I'm all for um a compliance firm. However, in looking at the bids, mm, there's there's a lot of um variation in the um um bid um amount. And, you know, they range from what, seven Seven million to one one point something million, and there's a lot of variations there. And so I'm I'm having concerns with the um, the bidding process, and also I, I agree with Mr. Um, Pfeiffer as far as you know to have two people on board to do the job and we're paying almost $4 million, that's a lot. So I am um, I'm in agreement with postponing this um, decision um, until um, January. So I will be voting yes to um, postpone. Thank you. Has anyone else not spoken besides myself? Yeah, Madam Chair. <laughs> Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. 
Yeah, Madam Chair, the purpose that I called a special meeting earlier, in, I think it was last week um, or earlier this week, whichever it happened, I'm listening to the comments of those council. I'm listening to the comments of those council persons who were absent from that meeting. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Ms. Word and Mr. Um, Murphy and Ms. L- Ms. Liddell Lewis. Ms. Lewis, I've heard you twice attempt to correct me to call you Dr. Lewis. I'm going to be in the habit of saying council person Lewis, Mr. or Mrs. That's the etiquette that I do here. If you continue, maybe I will say from now until the end of time, Dr. Lewis. But I hear you correcting me a couple of times, but I'm proper in the etiquette of city council business about saying council person or Mrs. or Mrs. or Miss or Mr. And so I hear you. But, you know, it's neither here nor there. I'm listening at the personalities of the absent members as we went over this stuff because I knew it would take up a lot of committee time. But this is committee, and I don't mind keeping it in committee, but I want to call to the attention of what's being said in these various resolutions. One of them is no money will be spent until a firm is in place. I've heard that, and I think you can read that. But, you know, my position is, and we went over this in the special meeting, where resolutions and things can derive from. And I'm firm in my belief knowing what this council can and cannot do if it relates to allocating funds for the residents, funds for employees, and things of that nature. Later on in this agenda, if I'm not mistaken, we'll have a resolution in order to deal with allocation of money for employees who have risked their lives in the middle of COVID-19, whether it's the Delta variant or whatever. People have died working for this city in the middle of this pandemic. And my intent was and still is to get them some help and relief prior to the holidays. We'll see what happens there, and then we'll see how it's executed based upon everything that I'm hearing. I'm listening to colleagues. Ms. Lewis, I want you to know specifically that the meeting that you was not here, it was a lot of discussion, particularly for Mr. Pfeiffer, and that's how this resolution started out. I wanted to try to bring council members all up to speed as it relates to what you're saying. You got information on as of today and emailed it out. I think a review of the video or audio recording from the MISS meeting would show that a lot of that has been discussed, particularly by Mr. Piper. I was fixing to see how he did any follow-up when Ms. Worthen made um, hey, about keeping everybody within the rules. My position is this. I'll look at a compliance firm, and Mr. Murphy, even though you said lobbying, I'll look at a firm that leverage dollars and don't do duplications as it relates to other pots of money before we spend money on stuff that we could leverage other money on and so forth and so on. But as far as who and how much and how long, you know, I'm concerned about. I'm also concerned as to whether or not we can get help from other community partners as it relates to colleges and others and bring people in-house, whether we pay them or whether they do it as graduate work. And so these are the type of conversations that I don't think you can have in five minutes under what I'm going to call these goofy rules. And so everybody who thinks that they can um, take care of the city business in five minutes and who want to listen to that logic of Ms. Worthen and Kate Fields and others, I think they got another thing coming. And I've watched the community watch council people, and I'm begging the community to watch this council in its infant stages. Watch and listen 
to the people who miss meetings, watch and listen to the people's logic when they vote. And I want to say this to you, Mr. Edwards, there's no confusion. I'll wait for my other five minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Now, I have comment on this resolution. I object to receiving two hours before the meeting um, the description of the um, R RPF. Um, I did not have a chance to look through this to see what was requested. I see there's been highlighted. I worked until 4.45. There was no way I could review that in time. I need at least 24 hours for myself personally before I can discuss things um, on an intelligent level. Um, I am totally 100% in favor of a compliance firm. I am not going to base my decision on whether somebody is going to give, possibly give us money because unless we have that guaranteed money at a dollar amount, it means nothing. Oh, yeah, we'll try to get you dollars, but they don't. So that has to come off of the table and out of our minds because that may or may not happen. So we can't sit there and use that money that might happen to leverage against the expense of the compliance firm. That being said, I do know that we cannot manage this in-house. Um, I have utmost respect for Ernst & Young. As an accountant, they were my top firms to want to work for when I graduated college. I never did get my CPA license, um, so I, and I was never able to get that dream. However, um, and also as an accountant who has um, dealt with budgets and created budgets for grants, et cetera, if the only overhead that um, we have is 3.9% or 3.7%, whatever percentage was exactly, that's, that's cheap. That's a cheap overhead. And that's one of the questions I'd asked Mr. Whittigan um, was what other overhead would we have so that we can calculate what type of percentage that we had. I understand that we can spend up to 10% of ARPA funds for overhead. We do not want to do that. We want to use that in the city for the good of the city and not necessarily for overhead. So um, I think that I have need more time to review what was sent to me today. And so I'm going to go ahead and vote yes to postpone. Any other comments? Yes, um, Ms. Worthy. Ms. Worthy. Um, to Clyde Edwards or um, Mr. Whittigan, I, I heard my colleague say um, that she wanted a process in place. Um, do we have a bidding process uh, for these types of bids? This is um, Rob Whittigan. Um, I can answer that if you'd like. Yes, please. Yeah, there definitely is a bidding process in place. We issued the RFP out. It went out to uh, on our city website on you know, bid night. I mean, it was sent out thoroughly into into the uh, um, compliance and management world. Uh, we. Per the timeline outlined in the bid, we received any questions, uh, we answered questions, we did a public bid opening, uh, you know, the, the city policy and process was, was duly followed. We had a, a committee of individuals that went through and reviewed every all eight proposals. We reached out to firms, um, asked for further information, further clarification to ensure that uh, the city was getting the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, we reviewed, like I said, all the proposals and then made a recommendation, which I believe is in your packet, a multiple page recommendation. There's a memo from myself to the purchasing manager outlining how we got to the selection. Um, so there's quite a thorough process. 
And how many people were in that process? Uh, let me count. Um, it was myself. Um, sorry, scrolling through the packet here. So there was myself, uh, our deputy finance director, uh, Kalfani Stevens, Lottie. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on from my office. Some, I'll be I'm doing sorry. Um, someone's not Thank muted. Anything? Oh, no, you did. Uh, let me tell you. Can't you. Hear you. Mr. Murphy, okay. could you please mute yourself? Um, that's not me. That's someone else. Thank you. Okay. Sounds like you in the background. Whoever is not um, muted, could they please mute themselves? Except for the speakers. Thank you. I think I got it. Okay, thank you. There was at okay, least I'm sorry. Oh, okay. there was at least five people <laughs> involved in the press, okay. involved in the review process. And I know this is like not a normal bid because it's not like you know trash or something that happens all the time. Right. But are there certain questions that you ask um, and agree on? And would you do this in a different way, or do you think the bidding process uh, went really well? Oh, I appreciate that question. Uh, I, I kind of inherited uh, this RFP was sent out as I was coming in, right? Um, uh, one thing that Council Member uh, Vice President Herkenroders mentioned, or she's asked a couple times, is, is was there a set template? Uh, uh, pardon me if I got that question misphrase, but kind of asking, like, do we have a set template? And, and the department head, as of now, the department head, um, you know, determines or sets uh, the evaluation process. But uh, um, there were questions, you know, how, describe how your firm uh, is defining and handling compliance and implementation. Some firms define that differently. Uh, you know, can you uh, sharpen your pencil and, and – uh, uh, refine your cost for compliance and implementation. Um, we asked, you, you know, what's your estimated time spent on compliance and implementation? Uh, we asked, you know, how do you see, how do you anticipate leveraging dollars? Uh, will you be at City Hall or are you going to be out of state and it's going to be all, you know, remote or Zoom? Um, so, yeah, there, there were quite a few questions. I guess one thing I would change is, is um, maybe the overall process of, of bidding in the city is, is let's just have a, a template that each department uses. Uh, I, I think, personally, I think we kind of went a, a, maybe above and beyond or overboard. We really grilled these firms, but, um, um, you know, we definitely followed the, the process set in place and then some. Thank you. I, I stand by what I said when I said micromanage. Um, because I think we need to look at the bigger picture. Do we trust that the administration is doing their job and that they care about the city and want the best firm uh, for the job at the cheapest cost possible? We have a lot to discuss and do, um, and if we start micromanaging, uh, we we – we lose out on a lot of important business of the city. So I myself trust uh, Mr. Whittigan's uh, expertise on this. There was a bidding process. It may not be preferable to you specifically um, or anyone, you know, on council, and maybe that could be changed. Um, but our job is, is not to micromanage. Uh, it is, are we in favor of this? Do we trust that the administration made the right decision or do we not? Um, do we have other ideas that we can bring forth? Um, otherwise, I fear we are just delaying uh, the inevitable and um, over small reasons. Um, I've heard the word transparency several times and I believe that we've gotten all the documents that we've heard about the process. I don't believe there's anything hidden by administration on why they chose the firm. Um, it, but if you feel differently, please um, share and divulge that information. I'd love to hear that. From what I've heard and from what I assess, I believe it's been transparent. 
Um, and and so it looks it sounds like the rest of council want to postpone. That's fine. I'm still voting no because um, we've been talking about this for quite a bit even before uh, the elections. Um, I'd like to get the compliance firm in um, place so that they can actually help us formulate a plan. Um, so, thank you. Any other discussion? Um, this Madam is Chair. Councilman Murphy. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, are you yielding to Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Murphy? Okay, Mr. Yes. Pfeiffer. First and foremost, I want to uh, apologize to the community for my language. As you can probably hear in my frustration with my voice, that uh, I do uh, very much dislike these phone antiquated technology that we're using to to uh, to deal with city business. Um, with that being said, I, I want to make it clear also that I have never said I'm against compliance firm. Uh, the record and the, the residents that are engaged in this process know that I have never said I'm not against compliance firm. I've asked if it can be done in-house, and I've asked if it can be done cheaper. I think that in a, uh, to the chairwoman's thing, it, her, her uh, percentage, it's actually 4.2% is what this compliance firm is charging us. The... Uh, the community needs every dollar it can get. And I think that there are other proposals in this RFP packet that are cheaper and can accomplish the same goals. So I want to be, make that clear. I'm not against compliance firm. I absolutely believe that we need a compliance firm because I do not think that we have the, the competency or the will to make sure that these dollars are spent correctly. So I just want to make that clear and I'm ready to vote, so thank you. Any other comments? Yes, this is Councilman Murphy. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Um, so I'm looking at my calendar now. If we we postpone in this, we, we only have, we got a um, council meeting on the 14th and the 28th of December, I believe. I, the one on the 28th may be. Um, change, I guess, because it's the New Year's. I don't know if it's going to... Uh, no, excuse me. Is I'm looking at the right calendar? Um, but anyways, the, um, the meeting in January, I think, will be on the 10th. So what is the plan? If we postpone this to January, I guess the first meeting in January... Point of information. It's yeah. the second second finance committee in January, not the first. That's the That's motion on the floor. That's what we're postponing this to? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. What is the plan in the meantime between now and January? What is the act to, to make the changes? Have we came up with a clear um, understanding um, collectively together as a as a council on what it is that we asking to change in the proposal by January. So when it come back to us, we want it to look like what? I mean, because we could postpone it, but in the meantime, between now, what is our plan of action and the mayor and the administration plan of action to collectively come together and work together to figure out the commonality and coming together on a mutual agreement on this contract so that we can move it forward because it just from listening to the colleagues it's a lot of us um, may not be comfortable with this contract so even if we postpone it till January when January come what is it going to be looking like that's my question to my colleagues and I, I support postponing it, but I don't. I don't support postponing it to come back to the same resolution that we have here today. So, what is our plan of action in between time if we're going to postpone it to January? To do what? Point of information. That's it. I'm Mr. Pfeiffer. Uh, Mr. Murphy, um, are you aware that with these rules, I cannot answer you with that question?
Okay. Okay. Do you have any other comments, Mr. Mr. Murphy? No, I'm done. Okay. Is there any other comments? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Yeah, in the second round under those rules, you're exactly 100% right, Mr. Piper. They voted to not allow dialogue on this important matter. I'm not going to vote to postpone it. Um, and take it off all agendas until the second finance committee meeting in January. My position is that it should stay on and we talk about it in each and every council meeting or committee meeting leading up to that. That's how important it is to me, this council person. As it relates to the, all of the stuff that we went over to try to save time, I'm hearing some of that being brought up now, particularly by folks who didn't attend the meeting. I don't know if they watched it. It's recorded. You can watch them. I watch them sometimes like um, a football player watches football games so I can know what's being said and double check what the administration and council people say. Um I think, in my opinion, folks have made a mistake. They don't know why. It might be one of them forgive them, but they know not what they do um, and what they say and how they vote as it relates to these rules, Mr. Pipe, on these important matters. As it relates to what we were starting out to do, Mr. Whittigan, I guess, had checked to see if we could start out with a smaller contract with the firm they recommend as it relates to um, dollars as well as personnel as well as um, length of time. You know, I've looked at these rules more in detail from the U.S. Treasury, and I know that some of these category areas, we will be in compliance. We have that much sense. I'm also um, in favor of looking at um, – what we can do in house and other ways as well, but I'm not in um, agreement with putting it off that long and taking it off a committee meeting agenda. If it relates to what you said, Mr. Um, Edwards, I'm gonna just be <clears throat> plain and frank with you. Um, this administration is trying to blame this council for delaying and this word indirectly to you. This the old council voted for yes. And five, no. You were part of the no on trying to administer and move on these funds. The administration, Mr. Neely, was part of the no group. The four yes was Galloway, Ms. Winfrey Carter, Maurice Davis, and Mays. Now, I know what can happen, Mr. Um, Edwards, so I don't care who say what about the land. As you can see, you got a new council group. And some of them are smarter than me. It seems to uh, want to try to get me told, um, even just in following rules, that's going to trip them up and boggle down the conversation of trying to take care of the business. That might be a forgive them, but they know not what they do. They just don't know. They just don't know. Don't get it. These are serious matters. Here we are this deep in the meeting, and because of rules, we ain't went nowhere but off the first resolution. I'll be voting no on that long postponement because this is something that needs to stay in front of us. It's something that needs to happen so we can administer these funds and vote these funds to get into people's households, get into employees' families and their pocketbooks, and I'm not for delaying it. I've been trying to get these funds moving since they got here in May. And now I'm listening to a new council. I'm listening to an administration trying to point the finger at council, and they hadn't brought not one resolution before council until now. And so I know the politics. I know it's the election year for the mayor. 
who wants to administrate these funds as a campaign. I know certain council members who don't like me and don't like others who voted yes to try to administer these funds. I'm going to do what my mind tells me. And I'm tempted, Ms. Winfrey Carter, to make an amendment to the motion and to the next finance committee meeting. I'm not fixing to stretch it out, Mr. Piper, that long and just take it off the agenda. It warrants attention, and it warrants attention yesterday. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other comments? Okay, I do have an additional Madam, comment. Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Winfrey Carter. Well, you know what? I can I can wait. I can wait. Okay. So um my comment is is that I think the compliance firm being in place um, would be as helpful in us determining or the city, not just the council, but the city, where the money should be spent, because they have the knowledge, they will have the um, the wherewithal um, in order to assist us in doing that. So I'm not in favor of having the whole budget, including the, the um, compliance firm as part of that. I just prefer to have that as a separate piece. And that's the only separate piece of the ARPA fund. I do agree with um, previous council people who said that um, waiting until the second um, finance committee um, in January is a bit excessive. I do want at least one more meeting before um, making a final vote. Um, so, I'm going to vote no to postpone till January, but I do want to postpone it. So we'll deal with the motion on the floor um, prior to making another motion. Is anyone else interested in speaking? Um, Madam Chair. Mr. Carter? Yes, so I'm all about compromise. Why don't we... Um, I want to make a motion. I want to amend the motion. And I would like to make a motion that we um, perhaps keep the resolution um, on the agenda for further, for further discussion. Um, and if it leads to maybe a vote up or down, then that's what we do. I did hear what um, Councilman Pfeiffer said, and I also heard Councilman Mays, and, and I sit back and I listen to all of my colleagues. And to make everyone, um, you know, to appease everyone, let's... Um, Let's postpone it until the next council meeting. And then if we have to, just keep it on the agenda until um, January, until we get all of our answers, um, um, all of our questions answered and everything that we need to do with this um, resolution. Okay, so, we have I don't a, know. Are you making, would you like to restate your motion? Yes, um, I'd like to make a motion that we um, postpone this resolution until the next um, finance committee meeting. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I support Ms. that. Ms. Weaving, Swerving? Correct. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just supporting. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that was the second. Okay. 
So we have a motion on the floor with a proper second um, to postpone further discussion until the next finance committee meeting. Is there any discussion Madam on this motion? Yes, Mr. Madam Pfeiffer. Chair, Madam Chair. Mr. Pfeiffer. So I will not be supporting this motion because the next council meeting and finance meeting is a combined meeting on the 20th. So I think the, the public uh, needs a break from this back and forth on the same resolution that is not going to do anything for the community. Uh, the community does not want to spend $3.9 million that is not going to bring one positive change to this community. We need every dollar to go into the community to fix our blight, to fix our crime. And if we can save $1 million, $2 million on a different compliance firm, that's what we need to do. And I don't think that keeping this on the agenda, especially the next meeting where it's a committee and council meeting is going to do the, the public any benefit. So I will vote no on this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Mr. Mays, you were the next one. Go ahead and call on them. I'll wait, Madam Chair. Okay. Is that Ms. Weirding? Yes. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Thank, thank you. Um, we, um, Mr. Pfeiffer does have another opportunity now to answer the question that Mr. Murphy asked, which I thought was a really good question. What is postponing it going to do? You don't want to spend $3 million and you say the community doesn't either, although I've heard from others that disagree um, that they think it's worth it to spend the money um, because they know we can't do it on our own. Um, what is what is going to change? What are you personally hoping for to happen in January? Uh, the bidding process has happened. It went through a thorough process. We can't change that process. I, I just want to know why are you so dead set on postponing it? If you don't want this compliance firm, you can vote no, um, and then that's it, but we can't it's like a garbage contract. We can't say, hey, I want so-and-so uh, to do the job. Uh, that, it's just not how the process works. So I just want to know your thinking um, on your second round if you um, are willing to, to tell us what, what you want to do. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Pfeiffer, would you like to address that comment or... Would you like me to go on right. to the next person? I will do it in my second round. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anyone else who has a comment? Um, this is Councilman Murphy. Yes, yes, Mr. Murphy. So rather we postpone it to um, the next finance committee meeting or um, to special affairs on Monday, regardless of whatever we um, postpone this um, resolution to bring in a compliance, my question would be what is going to be the um, what is going to be the ask in the contract to amend it? What do, what does that look like? to the, our, us as counsel, to my colleagues, to um, Dr. Lewis, councilwoman in the second ward, um, you know, uh, the other colleagues, what is it that y'all want to change in the compliance to make it fit where they can go back to neg the negotiating table and negotiate making the um, contract fit what it is that you guys want different in the compliance to make it um, go through to where we can pass it. Because if we need the compliance in order to move forward in the city of Flint, but, I, you know, you all of you guys' questions were good. I liked it, the fact somebody brought up um, that they, um, they want to see the whole total where all the money is going. Like, we don't want – some of us don't want you to cherry pick, bringing resolutions to fund this 
when we got $47 million. No, let's look at the whole $47 million. Why don't we just call a special meeting? Why don't we make an amendment to call a special meeting and, and stay in the meeting all day until we get all of this um, um, cleared out? Where we spending the money, where it's going, so we won't be blinded by, oh, now you want to bring a resolution to for me to fund public safety? I don't have a problem with it, but what if, what if we want to fund um, Flint Rising or or, or um, the coalition that's working? You know, just some whole, it's a whole bunch of things out there in the community that need to be funded that can um, qualify for these funds. I, I want to, you know, some of us want to see. Roofs done on people's houses. We got a whole bunch of ideas. Constitution. We want to have y'all. Y'all voted to have four more meetings. When you know, the, I have, I just don't want to um, keep postponing something, and we don't have a, a, a solution. So I think the mayor and the administration. You guys here with the councilman saying they saying they want to be able to know where we spending all the money. They want to know. They want to change some things in the contract. Let's just have a special meeting to deal with this stuff and get this out the way because this is a big, this big, $47 million, this is big to some of us. And some people want us to pass the resolution. So I can't agree that everybody want us not to pass the resolution. I've been getting calls to pass the resolution. So everybody, you know, it's just a mixture. So I can't say everybody just want me to um, not pass this resolution. That's my thing there, and I'm done. Okay. Anyone else? Madam Chair. Yes, Hickenrober. I again want to reiterate my hesitation for moving forward with the compliance firm not being that we don't need a compliance firm, but exactly like what Mr. Murphy just restated was that how can we vote to move forward on dollars if we don't know where the rest of those money, oh, the rest of where that money is going to go. We need the plan before we need the compliance firm. It's not that we don't need a compliance firm, it's the order of operations in which we are trying to hire one. I will not be voting to move forward on any ARPA dollars until we have a solid plan in place before, and, and that's, I won't move forward with that. So that being said, I will be voting no for this um, amendment as exactly like what Mr. Pfeiffer said. I think our 20th, our December 20th meeting is going to be uh, very jam-packed to say the least. And I think that we need to provide the administration with enough time to develop a plan before we are to vote on a compliance firm. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Yeah, I'm listening to my colleagues, and I'm listening to them on purpose. Like the, what Ms. Herkenroder said. Ms. Herkenroder, you can postpone something to the next meeting and then postpone it again if you ain't ready. My thing is to keep it on the agenda. And um, anybody, two council persons or more, can call a special meeting on this subject matter. And, um, you know, we had a special meeting, Mr. Murphy, and some people didn't attend. And maybe they had other issues. It's, it's a variety of reasons that people miss meetings. I'll miss them. I just have been blessed not to miss them um, since I've been on here for eight years. And so when you call a special meeting to do this type of stuff, and we've done that and we made some headway, then hopefully people can attend. If they can't, for whatever reason, that's their business. But I listen to the council. I listen to individual council members' logic. And Ms. Hurricane Rota, um, you know, you can lay out a plan for the whole $47 million out of the $94 million. I think you're a little misguided on that as it relates to have a plan to spend all the money before we um, move forward. I don't agree with that because um, we've got up to four years to spend this money, and I don't know if we'll be doing it year by year, amount by amount. We might run out in four years, and we might not. But as we try to navigate and communicate under the rules, um, Mr. Pfeiffer, I don't know if I want to would spend my 
time under these goofy rules answering these folks' questions that they ask. But maybe you have no other discussion and can do that. You relax the rules. You communicate among colleagues. You communicate on the business. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Whittigan. I'll give them one example. Mr. Whittigan, can you proceed? We started over half an hour ago, and then we went into these goofy rules. Can you proceed and tell them what you've discussed evidently with this um, Ernst and Young as it relates to five years versus two years and all of that that we were getting at at the beginning? Yes, uh, President Mays, just that, um, you know, they, they would be happy to do a two-year contract um, versus a five-year contract. That would be close to $2 million, uh, versus the $3.9 million. And I've listened to my colleagues talk about what do folks want, what is being proposed, when we'll do it, and so forth and so on, but they don't really um, seem to want to get into the details or don't understand some of them, what we can do when we work together, what we can do when we amend resolutions. There was discussion all last week in the special meeting about resolutions coming, what the council can do, can they be amended, can we help shape it, do the mayor veto it, do six votes override the veto and things of that nature. This council, in my opinion, has not really understood the mechanics, even the mechanics of special meetings and um, putting stuff on agendas and whether you can postpone it if it's on the closest agenda and so forth and so on. So I'm kind of just laying back listening, and I'm listening at people trying to make points, and maybe they are. I'm listening close to you, Ms. Worthy, and as a senior council person, um, as you try to say things, talking about micromanaging, and this ain't micromanaging. This is our job. You can use all those adjectives but they don't affect me none. They might affect um, my colleagues, but they don't affect me none. I've been listening to it for years. You voted no to get this thing off the dime, Mr. Edwards. Um, the majority of council, Kate Fields and others, who was meeting with the mayor, now it's election time. And now the mayor want to make it like the council is moving slow. And he's just now bringing the first resolution since May. I look forward to the discussion on the resolution dealing with workers. I look forward to the discussion on the resolution helping households, nonprofits, and small businesses, and anybody, in my opinion, that delays it and, and, and try to discuss it under these bell rang and goofy rules. <laughs> ain't a really council person with an understanding. It's stupid. You discuss it, you vet it, and you get it done. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other further discussion? If everybody's done their okay. second round, I'm, I have... Go ahead. So, um, just just so the, the public is clear and, and my colleagues is clear, are clear on this, that a an abbreviated contract for one or two years, we're going to be married to them for full duration until every dollar is spent and every project is complete. I don't want to to disguise this as you know if if we get a two year, it's only going to cost us two million. They will be in place until every dollar is spent, and not every dollar is going to be spent in two years. If we had a plan that said every dollar was going to be in spend in two years, I'd read look at it. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, through you to Mr. Pfeiffer. Um, that's an example. You understand that. That's not nothing settled on, and we don't know what the contract will end up saying. It's an example. You understand that. Nothing I've settled on. No, I understand that. I understand that. But the dollar, the dollar amount isn't changing so that it's going to be signed for two years and then 
three, four, and five are going to be exactly of what is on this RFP. So I just wanted the public to be clear that we cannot have an abbreviated contract with these same dollars because we're just kicking the can down the road, even if it's going to be costing the same $4 million to the, to the residents. Um, with that being said, the reason that I put this on... Point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Through you to Mr. Pfeiffer, do you know that to be a fact? Uh, sorry, do I know what to be a fact? That it would be the same amount of dollars that we would use the same firm and so forth and so on. Do you know that to be a fact? Well, Mr. Witt again just said it's going to be the, the same dollar amount for years one and two. So it could only be higher for three, four, and five. They're not going to be any cheaper, if that answers your question. So um, I, I will say that I postponed this to the second week for a reason. And under these rules, we can't have open dialogue. So as I said, next council meeting is going to be a is going to be a combo so it's going to be not very good right for the for the residents listening it's going to be uh, jam-packed no time to be spent to argue the same thing over and over again and if we don't suspend the rules we're going to go down the same path of we got to have a motion on the floor so the, if we look at the calendar in January the first meeting should be on the 5th and nothing is going to happen between New Year's and the 5th. So meeting. So if I didn't want to put it on the first one and then call a second or have to call a special meeting in between the two when it's on the first one. So I postponed it to the second one so that we could call a meeting before the second one because nothing is going to happen between the 20th and the 5th. That's just realistic. And keep putting this on the agenda is wasting paper and wasting time. So I would like to review the 479-page document that I received from Mr. Whittigan and I shared with the council uh, via email today to fully download everything and find out what our solutions are. So that's the reason. And I would hope that this amendment would get withdrawn and we could just postpone it to the second one so we can be realistic about the time frame. Thank you. Any other comments? Point of order. Yes, Mr. Mays. You mean any other comments in the first round on this amended motion? I believe we're on the second round. Well, if it wasn't Mr. Pfeiffer, the first one in the second round. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Any other comments in the second round for this amended motion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Sir, excuse me. Yeah, the motion is to amend it to the next finance committee meeting or postpone it and keep it on the agenda to the next finance committee meeting. The only thing I would look at was um, if there's a special meeting in between, whether it discusses the ARBA funds generically or whether it includes discussion on this um, resolution. I mean, I'm not going to call another special meeting at this time. Two or more council people can. Hopefully it will be some that didn't show up the first time, and then some of us who showed up the first time might show up if they called a meeting, two or more. Well, two. Um, so, you know, I'm just listening at the mechanics and the understanding as it relates to this important issue, trying to service the residents of the city. That's what's important, trying to service them in a timely manner. And, um, you know, I guess it will be a debate what's timely between individual council people, old ones and new ones. And so, you know, I'll vote to postpone it to the next finance committee meeting, hoping that it would be resolved in between. 
I know I spend time outside of council meetings trying to get stuff understood and together, and I would encourage other folks to do that as well. So, Mr. Pfeiffer, I just respectfully disagree that I want it hanging out there. And I'm knowing that people can learn outside of meetings. They can come to meetings and form. They can attend special meetings. They can have special finance committee meetings. I'm just hip to all the ways to do stuff and do it in a timely manner. And then I'm trying to also protect this council with the political rhetoric of who's slowing what up and how it's being slowed up and all of that politics because I want every elected official to know you're in a political arena. You can think it's just a mechanical arena, but it's a political arena. I'm going to continue to survive politically. I'm going to continue to be a good um, politician, and I'm going to be heard by residents even in the middle of other elected politicians. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other comments? for the second round of discussion. If not, I will ask Madam Clerk to please call the roll call vote. This is to postpone to the next Finance Committee meeting. Mr. Murphy? Correct. Right. Oh, yes. Ms. Priestley? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? No. Mr. Pfeiffer? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. The vote is five yes, three no. Okay, the motion to postpone till the next council meeting. Um, right, point of, point of order. Committee. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mr. Mays. Yeah, my point of order was that it was not postponed to the next council meeting. You caught it. Right. It I was, was thinking. Only, it was, yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the motion to postpone to the next finance committee um, was approved by, what was it? Again, six to three? Five yes, to six three no. Five yes, three mm -hmm. no. Yes. And so that has been approved. So. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Pfeiffer. I would like to make a motion to postpone an mm -hmm. FMLE resolution 210542. I got to find the motion. Thing, sorry. Two one. 0542 permanently? Yep. Postpone it. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to permanently table motion number two, or resolution number 210542. Do I have a second? Any seconds? Um, Madam okay, the, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, what was the motion? To permanently postpone item number 210542. Oh, I'm not seconding that. Okay, the motion fails due to a lack of second. Um, the next item on the agenda is 210542. Point of order, point of order, point of order. Yes. Point of order. Yes. You still on that um, particular resolution just because one motion didn't get a second right. that don't take it I'm to sorry. the next one. I did. Yes, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Um, yes, yeah, so we now have we now have to deal Madam with the Chair. original motion. Yes, ma'am, sir, ma'am. This <laughs> worthy. It's worthy. Oh. I know. I'm like, oh. I, I move that we approve or, or send to council, sorry, um, resolution 210542. Support. We, okay, I'm going to rule that 
out of order since we haven't dealt with the original motion for the 210540? Is that is that correct ruling on that? Can someone let me know? Madam Chair. I got lost. <laughs> yes, ma'am, sir. Yeah, Madam Chair, we are on 210542. Okay. Ms. Worthen okay. made That's a motion. Ms. Worthen made a motion to move that to council. And as you was getting ready to restate or repeat her motion, Mr. Murphy yelled out, support and second. I would caution Mr. Murphy and everybody else, my point of order is that you have to wait to be recognized under these rules. You've got one warning. Don't get throughout just hollering out. This is a little bit more of a formal um, situation than... Uh, Y'all voted for it to be formal. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. Yes. Point of order. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Point of order. This is Mr. Mays. Mr. Mr. Mays. I am sorry, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, you voted to follow the rules. They voted to follow the rules, something that I don't think they know what they're doing. They're ignorant to all of the rules, but they're voting to follow them, and they're breaking them. And I'm telling you, I'm trying to be nice, but after one warning, folks can be gone. And so they need to be careful what they ask for, because when they try to disparage my name, I'm going to fight back politically. Now, I'm just telling you what didn't happen here. We're on 210542, and people need to be recognized even to support or second a motion. Madam Chair. Correct. Ms. Ms. Worthing. I just want to correct what Mr. Mays is saying, and I know he's not going to like that. Uh, but I think he's being unnecessarily harsh. Point of order. Point of order. <laughs> Mr. Mays. It's a motion on the floor. The chair should be asking, is there a second rather than entertaining the person who made the motion? You should be repeating the motion and asking for a second instead of listening to Ms. Worthen's mess. Okay. That is correct. And what I was trying to say earlier was that we, many of us are used to more of order. formal organizations. Yes, Mr. Pfeiffer. You do not have the floor right now. You're correct. Okay, we um, have a motion on the floor. Ms. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. I'm sorry, Miss Priestley. I, I really don't know what Mr. Pfeiffer's point of order was about. You're the chair. You can say you have the floor. Point of order. Point of order. This is unnecessarily Mr. rude Mays. and demeaning. Point of order. Miss Worthen should be getting her second one, and she should be removed. She ain't no chair or nothing. She ain't nobody to be just interrupting and trying to guide a meeting without doing a privileged motion. Who do she think she is? She started this mess. People bought into it. And now this is what the old council was doing. doing. Somebody got to get control and live up to the roof. Okay. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. 210542 to move the contract with Garland DBS, roof replacement City Hall South Building to the council. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Murphy, second that. Thank you. Madam Chair. Please, re- please request um, to be recognized before you second, though, please, in the future. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Pfeiffer. So I will not be supporting this because I think that this needs to go and run through our internal RFP process. This is, we got a breakdown of the numbers, but we don't have the actual bids. And I think with um, any contract that comes through the city, the city should be able to see the open numbers. And I don't think that we have this. So I would like, I wanted to kill this and make it go through the RFP process because I think that there's potential to pro- potential fraud 
when we can't see the, the, the true numbers and the actual bids. Um, and then that's the reason I, I wanted to postpone it definitely because I, I feel like it should have went through the RFP process so that the, the numbers can be open and transparent. And right now they're hidden, and I think they are higher than they should be. So uh, I will not be supporting this. I will not be supporting anything to do with spending this amount of money. Thank you. Madam Chair. Thank you. Worthing. Ms. Worthing. Thank you. Ms. Um, sorry. Go ahead. I have, okay, thank you. Um, I don't think there's any fraud. We have an emergency pr uh, procedure, and this was an emergency. Um, I don't know if Mr. Pfeiffer is aware that COVID has really changed things. Prices have skyrocketed, and it's extremely hard to get supplies. And if, if we start this now, we might – you're just interrupting me. I, I don't accept your point of information. I'd like to, to say my – Point of order. Point of order. Yes. yes. Ms. Priestley, right, Ms. 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 Priestley, this is Councilman Mays. I'm calling a point yes. of order because Ms. Worthing has no right to tell him what she's not recognizing. She should cease talking. She's been a burden and a problem in this meeting. If I'm not mistaken, she's been warned once. you got to have the nerve and the guts, yes. guts to remove her so we can take care of the city business and then all of the people who voted like you with her to keep these rules up should support that. Now, this is just a little much. Who do she think she's talking to and how are you going to rule on her? I am sorry. Ms. Burns is trying to get on and I was communicating with her. Um, yes, I'm communicating with Ms. Burns. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Ms. Worthing. Um, I, I just would like to point out that this council is warning. And Mr. Mays is not the, the one to order us around. Order. Mr. Pfeiffer. There are multiple points of order and points of information that have not been addressed by the chair. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, please refresh my memory of the point of orders and the point of information that I have not addressed so that I can address them. Mr. Pfeiffer called a point of information, and um, it does need to be recognized, but I don't have to answer his questions. In my opinion, he's abusing Point of, point of order, Madam <laughs> Chair. Mr. Mays. When I called the point of order, it was because Ms. Worthing was blessing Mr. Pfeiffer out about recognizing her, his point of information. She don't have the right to do that. She should cease talking. You should rule on it. I understand you saying you was talking to Chairman Burns, but Mr. M Madam Chair, if you ain't keeping up with her blatant violations that you and the majority voted to follow, when we tried to get y'all to relax these rules, you letting her abuse everything. Under the old council, I'm going to just start doing it, and when I start doing it, I don't want to be treated differently. I don't want to be warned. I don't want to be muted. She's repeatedly, as a senior council person, just just butchering these rules and getting away with it under your watch. And I'm getting tired of it. Y'all voted to go by these rules. Point of order. order. Rule on my point first. Okay. We are. But Mr. Mays cannot bully you and tell you what to do. I just want you to uh, know that. Well, <laughs> nobody can bully me. I am. Um, I am new in this role. I am new in this role. Am I doing a great job? I don't think I'm doing such a great job. And I feel like I am being bullied. Not from just. I'm not bullied. I'm being overwhelmed by animosity from both sides. And I'm going to ask you to please stop and let's be civil. 
Am I ruling on, on these issues? If I rule on them and rule against you, that means it could be gone. I don't want to do that. I want us to be civil. Can we do that? Do I have to rule on these? You got to rule on them. Y'all decided to go by them. Mr. Piper had a point of information. She went to doing your job, what she wasn't going to entertain or whatever. Yeah, you got to rule on that. She should be born the second time and gone. I mean, y'all voted to go with these goofy rules. You can't be civil under these rules. They wasn't designed for that. And you can't discriminate. You are correct, and I will not discriminate. So I have ruled against Miss Worthy. This is the second time today. And we must follow the rules. So if it's twice, which I'm looking up, then that's what we must do. Ms. Priestley, what was the first one? Well, I am trying to – I thought I had written it down. I do not have it written down. Did I not rule against you? I if not, have a- then – then I, this is your first warning. I'm going to appeal the ruling of the chair. Okay. Is there, is there a second for that appeal? Five seconds. Councilman Lewis. Okay. Dr. Lewis has seconded discussion. Yeah, Madam Any Chair. Discussion? Madam Chair. Mr. Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. I was getting I was second this appeal because I wanted to discuss it. In fact, the clerk can tell you that this would be her second warning. I think Mr. Murphy got a first warning and she did too. They wanted to go up under these rules. We voted to be civil, use common sense. Everybody don't know the rules and so forth and so on. And I said, okay, these rules going to take you to school. They made an issue about my use of that. But that's exactly what needs to happen. It does not bother me when you have a bogged down council meeting with all these goofy rules. And I know when Kate Fields and Eva were then they made them and they were trying to come after me. And they backfired on them then, and they backfired on them now because she runs them out. This is, would be her second warning. She can appeal okay. the ruling of the chair on a warning, but we'll get to the record and show that it's the second one. She should be muted. She should be gone. She should not be able to delay this meeting and influence new council people with this mess. That's my goal because it's been some mess. It started Madam out Clerk. trying to take it. Madam Did somebody Clerk, do a privilege motion? I, I am making my own privilege motion. Point of, well, uh, call it out as a point of order, a point of information. Point of, you, point of you, point you can't order. just interrupt uh, the Madam speaker. Clerk. Ma- um, Madam Clerk, was this Ms. Worthing's second or, um, warning or first? I will defer to the city attorney on this. Point of order. I'm in the middle of having the floor. You will get a chance, Ms. Priestley. Everybody will get a chance. Y'all can do that in your own time. I'm going to just be quiet because, you know, people don't understand the rules but voted to live up to them. I have no further discussion right now. Madam City Attorney? Yes, back to Lewis. Oh, no, go, I'll go after the City Attorney, please. Thank you. Okay. 
Mr. Turney? Yes, I'm here. Um, yes, I'm here. Uh, I believe that this is the second warning. The problem is I don't recall exactly what the first was about. I believe it was um, during the period when um, Councilman Murphy was discussing um, the use of the word ignorant being used. Um, yeah. I don't recall what the warning was for, though, and I, I didn't write it down. Uh, but I, I, I remember that it was in that period of time. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure since there was a question whether that was the first or second warning. So, Madam we have a, yes, Ms. Worthing. I would just like to point out that a warning does not mean you get removed after two. I, you, have to, you have to call the person out of order. I was never out of order. Um, you can warn me, and that's okay. Um, but I'd also like to point out that Mr. Mays was called out of order for calling me ignorant, which in my opinion is a very serious offense. He threatened you, and you said, I'm going to just drop it now. So does that mean if I threaten you, you'll drop this? Um, or do you not appreciate me trying to help you, Ms. Priestley? Every time I've tried to help you, because Mr. Mays is telling you how to chair. And not only is he doing it incorrectly, because he wants you to think that he knows the rules and only he knows how to chair, but he's doing it in a very rude way. And if you truly want to be fair, um, this is not about letting Mr. Mays have his way because you may be threatened or intimidated or want to, um, you know, think that everyone that you're fair. But what about the fact that he called me ignorant and, and his, his out of order was dropped after he threatened you? I just want to point that out. Um, when, I, when I spoke, um, I was trying to help you. And Mr. Mays is being unreasonably rude. In a civil meeting, we can still have our rule, but then also help each other out. As a senior council person, that's all I was trying to do. And to be honest, um, I'm, I'm feeling a little hurt that I, you would even think about throwing me out of the meeting. Point of information. I'm trying to support you. Uh, point of information, Mr. Mays. Was to, through you to the speaker, was you trying to be helpful when you told Mr. Pfeiffer you wasn't going to recognize his point of information? That's what we're talking about. Mr. Mays, you and Pfeiffer have both been very rude today. Um, Mr. Pfeiffer can, um, repeatedly called points of information to take the floor. And as we will learn, um, once a point of information has been recognized, I do not have to answer the question, nor do I have to accept it. We learned that uh, with our parliamentarian uh, just a couple years ago. Um, we did not implement it. Uh, because it's near impossible to implement any civil rule in this council. Um, but that is the fact. So if we could get a parliamentarian to help the new council out as soon as possible, that would be great. Because I also don't appreciate being said that I am trying to um, cause chaos. Because, in fact, I've only tried to help you, Ms. Priestley, um, and it's not the same as berating other members, calling them names, and threatening them. That's not the same. Uh, and, and I don't appreciate being lumped into that. I, I've tried to be very civil while trying to help, not cause chaos. Um, thank you. Madam Chair. Dr. Lewis. Oh, um, thank you. And I just want to say I definitely appreciate you I'm standing in as Mr. Pfeiffer. I believe Dr. Lewis already spoke once. I haven't spoken in a while. She, Thank he you. has not I, spoken. I speak, uh, but I yielded. Yes, Dr. Okay, Lewis. Okay, so, uh, so thank you, Madam Chair. Order. Definitely. A she spoke and she asked the lawyer, the attorney, a question. She took the floor and asked the attorney a question. What, what question did I ask the attorney? 
Didn't you ask the attorney if it was her second term? It was me. No. Oh, it was I Judy. Apologize. I apologize. Okay, I, thank I, I you. I from my point of order. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, Dr. Um, Lewis. Madam Chair, thank you so much for being Vice Chair of Finance and taking on this responsibility. It's definitely a learning curve. And I'm a little disappointed to hear my colleagues having such a vengeance um, towards one another that we can't move on and get this done. Yes, we are brand new. Yes, we are still learning. And this should be a safe place for us to learn and move forward. Point and of this information. Is not- Mr. Mays. Through you to Miss Liddell Lewis, did you take offense when she first took the jab at me as the only person talking when Quincy Murphy made a point of it? We got to remember how this whole thing started out. So that's my question to you. Did you take offense then when it started? Thank and you, do Madam you realize Madam. she started it before you got here? Madam Chair, being interrupted with these phony points of information and points of order is really time-consuming and is wasting our time. Our goal is to work through this as a team and get the point of information. Be so focused on interrupting this way, moving up a point. Ms. Lewis, do you understand that these are privileged motions under the rules you voted not to suspend? You can be frustrated, but do you realize this is proper, adequate points of information and points of orders? You voted for this. Do you realize that? Well, you know what? I sure do, and I realize that I was on a council amongst grown people, Mr. Mays. So as Dr. Lewis answers your question, we need for you to step up and be that senior council member that you claim to be. So, yes, things may not be going your way, but we need Point for of you information. to move forward and handle the city's business. Going this way, we will... Point of we'll information. Be- if you don't I- cease talking, you out of order. Mr. Mays. I didn't try to be interrupted, so when are we going to allow him to quit abusing point of information? Point of, point of information, point of order. Mr. Mays. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lewis, a privileged motion is in the rules, and you didn't want to um, vote to allow adequate and common sense that we've been going under. So you voted. Now you're crying about the rules that's being used properly. Do you realize that? Do you realize that you are talking about common sense? You're not using any. You're acting like a child, a city council child. And the city Point of order. Point of order. Mr. <laughs> Mays. If she want to make personal attacks, I'm up for it. So if you allow her to call me a child and make personal attacks, wait and hear what she going to be, Madam Chair, if you allowing these personal attacks. Madam Chair, I want to go ahead and yield the rest of my time, but I want to speak. I'll speak on my behalf, and I vow that when I represent War II, I will not get involved in the pettiness, strictly the city's business. I will work as a team in the best Point interest order. of the city, and that's what I'm looking to Point do. Order. So, so as I, Madam Chair, rule on the previous point of order. Yes, I I am ruling the point the previous point of order that you're referring to. Please, 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 please remind me. Which one I am doing? I am. There has been so point many of information, points of order. Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mays. May, uh, Madam Chair, it had to do with her calling me a child and making personal attacks, and I'm trying to prevent because I'll go in on her, and you need to rule whether those personal attacks are relevant no. because I sure got a lot of them for her if she want to start that. Okay, Mr. Mays. I that I am going to rule that personal attacks are not acceptable in this council, period. And during this meeting, um, we will not. And so that's my ruling is that it, it was inappropriate. And my decision is that it was out of order.
still has the floor. Dr. Bullock still has the floor. So just for a point of clarification, so um, for I'm out of orders, want to make sure that I, I have it correctly. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, well, thank you. Um, this is Councilman Murphy. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Um, Madam Chair, um, um, Councilman um, Presley, you are being um, very selective on who you want to rule out of order. Now, um, you done heard Councilman Mays um, call people ignorant, and you did not one, one time rule him out of order. I will, on this motion, I will be supporting um, Councilwoman um, Eva Worthy, but as a chairperson, you ought to be fair across the board. Now, you done heard him um, been disrespecting the Point of information. Council. Mr. Mays. Through you to the speaker, you know the rules say that you should object or call a point on that immediately, not um, a half an hour later. Do you understand that rule while you chastise the chair for something you don't understand? Do you understand that I'm talking on this um, uh, motion um, that is dealing with evil worthy and I'm making a point? that the chairperson is being selective of who she is ruling out of order. Do you also understand what I just said? That's my point. I'm done. Madam Chair. Mr. Pfeiffer. I, I just once again point out that the, the colleagues that voted for to support this not suspending the rules and want to follow the rules are the ones that are violating the rules. Um, as the public would know, right. by the previous yeah. meetings that we've had, we haven't had any of this nonsense. And it, it all started with a easy vote to suspend the rules, whether or not it failed or it passed. Councilwoman in the ninth ward wanted to put digs in and start this nonsense. And that's where we are. So the the people who made the bed need to lay in the bed. Thank you. <laughs> Point of information. Yes, Mr. Murphy. We at a council meeting, we ain't laying in no bed. Um, bad choice of words. I'm at a council meeting and we run in the meeting. We ain't nowhere at home in the bed, even though we at our home. Point of order. Mr. Mays. Yeah, uh, point of information is a quick inquiry. It's a question form. That was a statement. Mr. Mr. Um, that Mr. Murphy could be ruled out of order for using it wrong. So if you're going to follow the rules or vote against them or do whatever, know them first. That was a statement. That was no point of information. Okay. We have an appeal of the chair's rule on the floor. Is there any other discussion? Madam Chair, point of order, can you state the uh, what the appeal was? I think she appealed um, your ruling that she could just keep talking when Pfeiffer did, the council person Pfeiffer did a point of information. I think that's what she appealed. Point of order. Let's not phrase it that way. That's ridiculous. Okay. Ms. Clark, could you please read back? Councilperson Worthing appealed because she got a warning from the chair. Okay. So I am not going to reverse my decision, and I'm going to be fair across the board. I'm listening to what Mr. Murphy has said. I'm listening to what Dr. Lewis has said. 
And let's continue on. My ruling stands. We have a motion on the floor to take 210542, and it's properly seconded to the council. Point of order. Yes, Sister May. What's on the floor is a vote on an appeal. Whether or not we vote yes to agree with the ruling of the chair or no to vote against the ruling of the chair as it relates to the warning, that appeal must be voted on first. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Can Madam Clerk, I'll can drop call the, the appeal roll, then. Madam okay, Chair. Ms. Worthing has dropped the I'll appeal. Drop the I appeal. believe this. that's what we did last time. Well, she would need to withdraw it, and then it would have to have a second, and then you'd have to vote on the it. The second would have to be withdrawn as well. I would like no, to. No, point of order. Point of order. <laughs> Mr. Mays. The clerk is right. She'd have to make a motion, but she can't even get the floor. She didn't spoke once. She'd have had to make a motion to withdraw it when she properly had the floor. She can't just holler out, I drop it, I withdraw it. She's in a bind because she's spoken. The chair is calling for the vote, and she done waited too late to withdraw it. That's my point of order, and you can rule Madam on that. Chair. Ms. Worthing. Point of order. I would like, if it's you're not too late. We'll we're in an appeal. We'll she's call. spoken once. Point of order. She's, we've, she's spoken once. It's impossible for her to get the floor. That's my point of order. Hey. Then how did we do it? Madam Chair, I'm sorry. How did we do the set? Yeah. Then? Point of order. She's steady out of order. Yeah. All right. Now, you got the rule whether or not you can give her the floor. My point of order Madam, that she can't order. get it. Madam Chair, Mr. Mays uh, yeah, is out of order. I'm the one called the point of order, order ma'am. Point of order. I'm the one who called it, and she got a rule on it. You can't get the floor in the middle of that. Point of order, Madam Chair. What's your point of order? Um, He can call a point of order, but he cannot tell you what you have to do. This is manipulation at its finest. Um. I am going to allow the withdrawal of the motion. I appeal the ruling of the chair. (laughs) A second. Is there a second? Okay. Discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah, Madam Chair, you can try to create rules and be nice to Ms. Worthing after all of these fragrant violations, and this one had to do with telling Mr. Pfeiffer what she wasn't going to recognize his privileged motion. Now you want to be nice and give her the floor. We was at a procedure where he was restating what the appeal was. We was getting it right and getting ready to vote. If she had a want to withdraw it when she got to Florida at one time, she could have. Anytime somebody do something wrong, to Mr. Murphy's point and to hers and everybody else, you must appeal immediately. You can't wait and then say what somebody else done. It's immediate. And now here you want to create a rule to allow her to get the flow to withdraw, she might be in trouble. You know, y'all can do what you want if you suspend the rules. But when the majority vote not to suspend them and don't know them, that's an ingredient for chaos. And it's clear that folks don't know them, and you can't just make them up and allow her to do stuff with all her flagrant violations. 
So, you know, I appealed to you because you're making up rules, giving her a chance to correct that ignorant stuff that's been going on and the violations. And if you do it for her, you got to do it for everybody. If you do it for Mr. Murphy or Liddell or say anybody, you got to do it for everybody. We tried to get it where everybody could just get along and take care of the business. Y'all voted no to do that. Now you under some rules that people don't know, and it's frustrating the hell out of them. But it ain't frustrating me. I'm used to it. You can't allow her to withdraw. That's what we appeal in. You're okay. making up rules. Mr. City Attorney, could I please get clarification? Point of order. Point of order. Yes, sir. Ms. Priestley, Ms. Priestley, when we go into an appeal, you can speak first and you can speak last. Your job is to ask, does anybody want to speak on the appeal? When you get to your last speaking, you can go to the city attorney, but right now you hopping all over the place in the procedural way. Wait until you get your last shot to all of a sudden go to the city attorney to see if what I'm saying is right. I know what I'm saying is right, but just do it the right way. Y'all caught up in these rules. You ask is anybody waiting is waiting to speak, and then when you get to yours, you go to the city attorney. But this is stuff we have to know. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Okay, then I will now ask the city attorney. My previous question was: Miss Worthing allowed is. Miss Worthing allowed to withdraw her appeal. Um, once the appeal has been addressed, um, the body has to give permission to withdraw. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Sorry about that. Um, I don't have. Uh, the rule in front of me, but I know that for once the uh, appeal has been brought to the floor and addressed for a motion to withdraw, the body has to give permission for the withdrawal. Thank you very much. The motion to withdrawal can be given by the um, person moving is if it hasn't been addressed by the point of information. Yes, Mr. May. Through you to the city attorney, if the rules allow for everybody to speak once and she speaks once and then we're getting ready to call for the vote, the question is can she break the rules and be given the floor to make a motion to withdraw? I think not. What do you say? Um, that's a difficult question because the motion is an instant motion to the main motion. Um, there's no precedent to incidental emotion, uh, incidental motions amongst themselves. But if the most, if the motion itself is directly related to the question at hand, I believe it takes precedence over the issue. So it may be that she can make a motion after she's had an opportunity uh, to speak, regardless, as I'd mentioned previously, if she does make, I, okay, so I believe that. Point of information. Mr. Mays. Yeah, Mr. City Attorney, are you making up rules that we can speak <laughs> once and then get the floor? Are you making that up? Uh, no, no, I'm not making it up. I'm relying on what I know of Robert's rules of order. Uh, a point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, through you to the speaker. Do you know that council rules take precedence over Robert's rules? Uh, yes, uh, Council President Mays, I'm aware. I don't believe that there is a city uh, council rule that specifically 
uh, addresses this particular nuance. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Would you be willing to look at the council rules on an appeal and see how they work? Yeah, of course. No, I have no problem. We get that. one round of speaking. The uh, the issue, though, is um, one round of speaking as opposed to if the person who brings up the original motion, if they're able to withdraw the motion separate from their opportunity to speak, though. So. Point of information. Come on, dude. They would have that right when they had their only round of speaking. The question is, Mr. City Attorney, can you just create a rule and give them a second round to withdraw the motion? I think not. What you think? Well, of course, you can't just make up rules. And was that Ms. Worthy? That, uh, this is Councilwoman Herkenroder. Herkenroder, excuse me. Yes, Ms. Herkenroder. Um, Madam Chair, my point of information is can Mr. Mays please share what rule um, regarding appeals in the city council rules it states that council members only have one round of talking during an appeal, please? Point of order. Yes, Mr. Mays. A point of information is to the speaker, not to me. Actually, Mr. Mays, uh, Point of order, Ms. Creasley. Okay. So you have a point of order. Um, I do not, I have not seen in the rules. Your, answer, your question, the answer to your question. Madam, Madam Chair, this is um, Lewis. Can Councilman Mays um, tell us um, the rules so we can find it exactly? Ms. Ms. Lewis, you didn't get recognized. I'm trying to be fair and... Um, Yes, Mr. Mays, you are you are asking for um, you are referencing a rule. If you have a rule number that you can direct the council to, Madam Chair, um, y'all was talking to the um, city attorney. I think I might have even spoke once in this appeal. And so the questions ain't to me. The question I did was a point of information to the city attorney. I've spoken. Okay, Mr. City Attorney, would you like to continue your discussion? Um, to be honest, I don't remember what was what, what I was saying anymore. Um, or what was being said. Um, there were a lot of point of information. I kind of got lost in the middle of that. Yep, I get you. I'm here. Okay. All right. So I did call for a roll vote. Um, Ms. Worthy, my... I think that is the yes. I, I can't hear anything. Like somebody is building a house or scratching their their self in the background. Can we mute whoever is making all that noise, please? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Clerk, could you please call the roll on the motion to reconsider the. Um, Re repeat that again, please. Well, I believe we're on an appeal. Yes. That Mr. Mays made that because the chair said Ms. Worthing couldn't withdraw her appeal. So the roll call would be Ms. Priestley.
Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Piper? No. Ms. Worthing? I got lost. I'm so sorry. Can you please clarify the yes and no votes? I believe that uh, if you vote yes, you agree with the chair. If you vote no, you agree with the appeal. Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. So it is five yes, three no. Okay, and now we have... So point of order. The vote was the... Yes. Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, that means if she if she withdraws the appeal and y'all wrongfully allow her to uh, withdraw it, then your ruling stands that she was out of order for denying Mr. Pfeiffer's um, point of information. That would be her second warning, and she should be gone. So since y'all let her withdraw it and didn't vote on it, it stands. She should be gone. Could you please reference the rule number that says that they have two warnings and then they get removed? Well, you read it in every meeting. You read it in the rules. It's a it's an ordinance. It says if somebody disrupts, they'll get one warning, and then after that, they can be removed. Now you can decide what you do with this second warning. It should have been three or four by now. So that's the rule that I'm going under. And if the person is warned one time and ain't removed and warned two and three, then I should get five and six. They withdrew the appeal, didn't vote on it, didn't try to save her. You already ruled that she was out of order. I said it was a second order. time. Some Point of order. Yes, Ms. Worthing. Um, Madam Chair, you dropped that out of order, and that's why I wanted to withdraw my appeal. The, I, I don't know where this is going, but it's not correct. No, we, we still have to vote on your appeal. To my ruling. Madam Chair. It's Point of order. Who called point of order first? I did. I called the point Mr. of order. Y'all just voted wrongfully that she could withdraw it. So if y'all vote to withdraw it stands, your ruling stands. And it ain't no appeal on your ruling. She should be gone. Point of order. No, Mr. Mer Mr. Yes, Ms. May, Ms. Worthing. I'm so sorry. Can we get clarification? Uh, it, from my understanding, yeah. we just voted um, on Mr. Mays' appeal. Yes. And it was turned down, correct? The correct. ruling of the chair stands. So I'm not, again, so, I would like the floor when this is over so that I can withdraw that appeal. Sorry. Thank you. Point, point of order. Mr. Murphy. Yes, I, I thought that the vote that we just um, was voting on, um, Councilwoman Wordy wanted to withdraw her um, appeal. And then um, when we voted, uh, Councilman Mays, appeal the decision of the chair to allow her to withdraw her motion appeal and then we voted on um may's appeal it was five to three for may's appeal so may's appeal lost 
So then I thought it went back to um, Councilwoman Worthy. Point of information. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Mays. Yeah, through you to Mr. Murphy, do you realize our appeal that she couldn't draw it, it w- withdraw it? It was no vehicle. Y'all created a vehicle wrongfully and voted she could withdraw it. Without that appeal, the chair's ruling stands, and then she gets a second warning. You understand that? I don't agree. <clears throat> Okay. Can we please take a 10 minute recess? Okay, the chair is asking for a uh, 10 you, minute recess. You can call a recess without objections, but if there's some without objections, objections, we keep going. Yeah, so I'll object to a recess. Madam Chair. Ms. Worthing. I make a motion that we have a 10-minute recess. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Converter. I will second that motion. Any discussion? There is no if it is discussion, no Madam discussion? Chair, I would want the floor. Okay. Okay. No Point discussion on this motion? Yes, correct. There is yeah, no if it is discussion, I would want discussion. I don't think there is discussion on recess. I'm looking. You asked was there discussion. If it is, I, know, I want discussion. I... Uh, without debate. Yep, without debate. Okay, we have a 10-minute recess. We'll resume at 9.15. Point of order. Point of order. You have to vote on the motion, ma'am. Oh. Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? No. Ms. Priestley? Yes. The vote is four to four. Four yes, four no. <laughs> Motion fails. Point of order. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, what you going to do with Ms. Worthy now that she's withdrawn her appeal um, ruling and you ruled that she was out of order and gave her, her, I think, her second warning. What do you do now? I am reading the disorderly person says, shall be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the menu, the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. But however, I don't think that it was disrupting. And if they persist, it says if they persist. It doesn't say how many times. Um, Mr. Attorney, City Attorney, I need help. Yes, I'm here. I, that's why I wanted to recess. I needed to regroup. <laughs> Could you please give me I guidance on this? I understand. Um, as far as the... Um, uh, the city ordinance 31-10 that's read at the beginning, that is not the same as the issue of being in order for a parliamentarian procedure as opposed to being out of order or rather disorderly 
in um, a criminal matter, the, they're just they're two entirely different things. Well, I mean, I, I guess I should say they can be the same thing, but they they can it's um, they can also be independent of each other. You can be out of order in a parliamentarian procedure and not be disorderly in a criminal matter. Okay, so in, in um, this instance, this is not cause for removal as per... I would have to say that uh, in, in this particular situation, I would uh, have to defer to uh, the chair and your discretion. Uh, I'm simply saying in a legal aspect, um, the, the disorderly person city code subsection that we read at the beginning of each meeting is not the same necessarily as it is in the Flint, uh, as the uh, parliamentarian procedure understanding of being out of order but in, in a parliamentarian my, procedure. That was my understanding as well. So I, I do feel not the ruling. Order. I appeal the ruling of the chair. Is there a second to that appeal? There is no second to that appeal. I'll I'll say. Of course. Discussion. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Murphy. No, this is Mr. Mays. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam I'm Chair, so let me say this. A lot of the pushback is coming from the council members who did not vote for me for president. And I'm here to tell you from what I hear, they are already on a path to try to discredit me when all I'm doing is fouling and articulating the rules that they voted not to suspend. Now, they voted not to suspend some rules. Ms. Worthen been here longer than y'all, and I've been here longer than her. And this city attorney who I'm listening to, every practice, everything that we've done has been the first warning and the second warning removal. Now, he put it to the discretion of the chair. You chose not to remove her, but Ms. Pfeiffer is right. Mr. Murphy can say whatever he wants. They made the bed lie in it. She had no right to be blurting out at the mouth telling Mr. Pfeiffer, I'm not going to entertain a point of information. I'm just not going to do it. You're interrupting me. They the ones who voted for this bed, and they should lay in it. And you trying to be nice, but you being discriminatory. I'm telling you. That second warning, she should be gone and get ready for another day. She talking about she's a senior counsel person but don't want to exercise privilege motions, points of information, points of order. It's just been a little messy tonight. And it started early on. And all of those who voted with her who don't know the rules, can't articulate them, can't find them, <laughs> y'all made this bed, lie in it. Starting with your fearless leader, her, who is causing chaos, and then other people setting on warnings. We wouldn't even be at this mess, in my opinion, if it wasn't for her and y'all. So y'all made the bed lie in it. I appeal your ruling to treat her differently than I've been treated for years. Any other discussion? Um, this is Council Murphy, Councilman Murphy. Yes, Mr. So, Murphy. What, what I'm saying is all, all councilmen have a right to vote the way they want to, regardless of whatever colleagues don't like. I don't think near one of us going to always vote in the way that we all going to like each other vote. What I'm saying and what some of us colleagues are saying, what this Councilman Murphy saying in the third ward, and I'm asking my colleague, Councilman Mays, is to put, put some respect behind my name. Don't talk to me or talk to my colleagues like we ain't nothing. We all are equal. I don't care how 
how long you've been on council. All I'm saying coming in, and I'm trying to set the tone to you that I don't want you talking to me or my colleagues no any kind of way, and I'm quite sure you used to talking to people any kind of way. Point of information. I'm asking you to put some respect behind. Point of behind information. Mercy name. That's all Mr. I'm saying. Mr. Murphy. You can do it the easy way. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy, you are out of order. Point of information. Mr. Mays. And that's his second one, and he should be removed, shouldn't he? <laughs> but my point is but my point is this, Mr. Murphy, I don't appreciate how people talk to me. And so do you believe that I don't appreciate being called a child and uh, being talked to by Ms. Worthy and you first caught it and raised the issue? Now do you realize you out of order by not stopping and ceasing talking? You did right, Ms. Priestley. What do you say about all that, Mr. Murphy? Any other discussion? Madam Chair. Miss Worthy, I, I hate to belabor this. I am just actually really lost. I, I don't know what is trying to be accomplished. Uh, we were on our way for me to be able to withdraw my um, appeal because you um, dropped me being out of order. Um, it's vindictive behavior and this is constant this is just a taste of uh what happens when you don't vote the way uh mr mays wants you to um the the moment you do not vote his way he will make your life miserable and i'm very sorry for that Um, point of information mr mays through you to the speaker, isn't the rules that you and Miss Fields came up with making your life miserable? I'm going to answer that. They are not. Because in every other city, um, in every other meeting where they have Robert's rules, it's not like this. So only the city of Flint, maybe a few others, who hold their meetings uh, act this way, uh, yet, Robert's Rules is used in probably thousands and thousands of communities around the country. And, and, it, and that doesn't create chaos. Points of orders and points of information constantly just to throw off the chair um, because she didn't vote to suspend the rules. Now, that creates chaos. Um, and it's a manipulation tactic. You did not vote to suspend the rules. So I am going to make your life miserable so that next time you'll suspend the rules. I mean, it's clear as day to anyone looking at this objectively. Um, But the unfortunate part is that we all have to sit here. um, You know, Judy, this is her first time. I don't know if it's her first time sharing, but, you know, it's one of her first few times. I thought she was doing a pretty good job. um, And, anyone in this situation would be flustered because it's impossible to keep up with all the points of orders and points of information. It's impossible. And that's a tactic to make chaos and then blame the other person. Um, I I don't even know how to vote. I I guess I have a point of information. Yeah, Ms. Worthing, are you saying that Mr. Pfeiffer was creating chaos when he did a point of information? Is you now blaming me and him? Um, Madam Chair, I don't I um I just need clarification either from you or the clerk. Um, what is this appeal? How, what what are we doing right now? <laughs> I don't understand what the appeal is. You've made your ruling. It was passed. You can't appeal an appeal. I'm just very confused. 
This is Janelle. Yes, Janelle. My understanding is that he's appealing because Miss Worthing was not removed from the meeting. That was the okay. decision of the chair. Okay. Okay, thank you. So um, he's appealing the decision of the chair. I am um, going to vote yes in support of the chair not removing me from the meeting. Thank you. Any other discussion? Point of Madam information. Excuse me, I heard two people talking. So one I couldn't identify council. either. Madam Chair? Councilman, I think Mr. Murphy was said something first. Uh, uh, nope, I didn't. Okay, Mr. Pfeiffer. Um, through you, Madam Chair, to City Attorney, what are the what are the rules for removing um, disorderly council people? Is it solely up to the chair, or is there a rule for disor- for disorderly and multiple offenders, if you will, on uh, being out of order? Uh, there's a procedure. Um, often, Robert's rules makes exceptions and provides room for assemblies to resolve issues outside of removing members uh, to maintain the integrity of the assembly. Um, often as simple as just apologizing is acceptable. Um, I'm walking right now to my Robert's rules. Just give me a moment. Point of information. Yes, Mr. Mays. Through you to the city attorney, why are you walking through Robert's rules trying to find some when we got clear-cut rules under ordinance that's read at the beginning of every meeting and our council rules? Why are you doing that? Uh, Mr. Uh, council President Mays, the... Uh, uh, Flint City Ordinance 3110 that's read at the beginning of the meeting isn't the same as being out of order in a parliamentarian procedure. Point of, um, point of information, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. But appeals are the ruling at a chair not to remove its council rules. Correct? An appeal to not remove them? Go. Go. No, it's been appeal um, that she should be removed because she's getting a second one, and her and Mr. Murphy both, and their behavior has been disorderly. Well, the, the appeal itself, that is, yeah, it's correct. That's parliamentary and procedure. That would be something that would be regulated by either... Uh, the city rules, the city council rules, or Robert's rules, if the city council rules are silent to it. Um, the issue, though, is that it does become the discretion of the body how they discipline their members. Um, there's, there isn't anything that necessitates uh, how a, like, a certain way that, uh, that the body will discipline unless the body itself has made a rule saying that. Point of information. Mr. Mays. The council has adopted by ordinance and by rule that people shall be removed from that meeting. Are you familiar with that, Mr. City Attorney? Uh, council President Mays, I am familiar. Uh, I guess then uh, the answer would be it would be up to the body as a whole to determine whether being disorderly and being out of order are the same thing. Um, because as far as from my legal interpretation, they aren't necessarily always the same thing. Some point of information. Miss Dr. Lewis. 
Okay, so um, so through you, Madam Chair, to the city attorney. So, so looking at the the rules. Point of order. Mr. Mays. I just so, did a point of information. Mr. Piper had the floor. Do you want to see if he's done with the floor before you go to Ms. Lewis? Mr. Piper. Um, I, I would just say that we're, we're, I don't know what that is. Uh, I would just say that there are rules in place, and it clearly states, and we we read it for 3110, and I believe that was put in because of the disorderly of council members, and now we're saying it's not because of the council members. I think we're going down a slippery slope on what the rules are, and it's going to be at the discretion of the body. So you're going to be, you're going to have different chairs having different rules, and that's how we get into this debacle that we're in now. So uh, the clear the rules that everybody is on are outstanding is if you will be given one warning. Well, I'm going to I don't believe that the rules meeting. for well, the clock, dude. They've been talking the rules. I don't know. They're I don't know. Trying to get one of the ladies kicked off out of the somebody meeting. Somebody else speaking for two and a yes. half hours now. It may somebody point 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 mute mute this person. Uh, I believe that's a city attorney, I got it. And, and if that's the city attorney, I want him removed. No, it was not. Viper, that was me. It was not. It was not the city attorney. So whoever that was. They need to be muted. But the ordinance yes. that we read, 3110, shouldn't be for the public only. There shouldn't be rules for thee and not and not everybody else. That rule was put in place and read as the understanding that is for council and public. And it shall say one warning, not two, not three, not five. Thank you. I yield the floor. Point information. I believe Dr. Lewis had, had the next first one before. Is that all right? Yes, and I, I do. You, you needed a break. Um, you did need a break, didn't you? I, I am. I am now in. She was able to unmute my phone. Great. Okay, Dr. Lewis, and then we'll call okay. you on you. Okay, thank you. So I do have a question regarding the uh, point of order and request for information. So according to the new rules voted on by council in October 2019, um, it reads, and, and this is um, through Madam Chair to the city attorneys, maybe he can um, get a little clarity here. So it's a point of order, request for information, or parliamentarian inquiry cannot interrupt a member who has been properly recognized to speak, and that does not include the chair. So, so is that interpreted as when someone is speaking, they don't have to just stop and be interrupted. They can finish their statement before the point of order or point of information is brought to the floor. So I'm just trying to get some clarity there. Dr. Lewis, would you mind reading that for me just one more time? I'm not sure if it was on my end, but I had a hard time hearing you. Absolutely. So according to the new rules voted on by council, it says a point of order, request for information or parliamentary inquiry cannot interrupt a member who has been properly recognized to speak. And this does not include the chair. So my question point of is information. My question and see and, and that's what I'm saying. My question is point of information our entire thought out, does this point say that Mr. we can be corrupted? Point of information. Dr. Lewis? Uh, yeah, my yeah, point I mean, of information, when she is continuing to keep talking, what number rule are you talking about on what page? Page 22, where it says new rule voted on by city council, and that's what I was talking about, Mr. City Attorney. Um, the fact that we have to, I guess, cease speaking instantly and let the other people talk according to this, my interpretation, and it could be wrong, says that the request for a point of order, information, or parliamentary inquiry cannot interrupt a member who has been properly recognized to speak. So if the chair rec recognizes us to speak, 
then we can get our thought out before it's another point of interest. Point of information. That right there. Mr. May. Point of information through you to Ms. Lewis, Rule 26.3. It says a request for information cannot be ignored by the presiding officer. Do you see that? Okay, well, with my glasses, I also see that page 22, it says that when we have been properly recognized to speak, we cannot be interrupted. Do you see that, senior councilman? No. Yes. Point of information. Mr. Mays. Um. If, no, I do not see that, Ms. Lewis. What I do see is 26.3, a request for information cannot be ignored. I also see at 25.4, a point of order cannot be ignored. Do you see that, 25.4 and 26.3? Because, I no, I don't see what you're saying. Well, let's move on to the interpretation of that. It's not being ignored, but according to this new rule, you cannot interrupt or stop someone mid-sentence just because you feel that you have a point of information at that time. So you can get it, but the person does not have to cease to quit talking if we have been recognized by the chair that we can speak. So after our time of speaking is over, then your point of order, your point of information can be recognized. So I'm just trying to find out. Through Madam Point Chair. of information. Here we go. Mr. I'm Mays. simply asking, where do you see that? Give me a number, because I'm giving you 25.4 and 26.3. Can you give me the number that you're reading from? Page 22, new rules voted on by City Council on 10-9-2019. And it has two In answers my- of it. So through Madam Chair to the city attorney, could you please clarify that for the body? Sorry, that I was, I was muted. Um, I'm so sorry. I, I would need that to be read a third time. I'm re- realizing that the rules that I have in front of me are from 2017. So any new rule I just don't have available in print. Okay, not a problem, and I'll definitely read it again. So it says, new rules voted on by City Council on October 9th, 2019. A public order request for information or parliamentary inquiry cannot interrupt a member who has been properly recognized to speak. This does point, not... Point of information. Point of information. Miss Winfrey Carter, are you um, through you, Madam Chair, to um, the speaker? Are you reading from the rules that were given to you, and it says draft? I'm reading from draft. The, oh no, 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 I'm not. I'm reading from the rules governing meetings of the council. And and it was supplied in a green folder, and I went right. all the way to yes. Do you do you realize that we as a council did not vote on those rules? That's a draft. That's oh, a draft. Ma'am. We never ma'am. voted on those rules. Um, okay, so but it's point of information. New rules voted on by city council on October the ninth, two thousand nineteen. That's what it says here. No, the, we never voted on those. They did, so, they did change some rules during a, a committee meeting, but those rules were never voted on. So what you are reading from is a draft. It's from a draft. Okay. Madam Chair, this is Davina. Yes, Davina. If I could offer some clarification on the rules that Ms. Lewis so. is referring to. You were all, yes, and by you, I mean the new council members, were given copies of rules that included drafts that also included rules that were voted on by council during rules committee. Those rules at the back were, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to precedent, council did enforce those rules for a short time. 
And then last year, they did an, or um, earlier this year, I should say, they did an emergency resolution to enforce these rules with a, with a time set. After that time ended, they continued to enforce these rules, and that is why you guys were given a copy of them. When Ms. Uh, Winfrey Carter is saying that they weren't voted on by council, what she's saying is they were voted on in the rules committee, but they were placed on a council agenda for council uh, formal approval, which never came. But again, right. council was enforcing those rules periodically. Again, they did do an emergency resolution, which has since expired, but council does periodically enforce these rules. So that's why you were given a copy that included these uh, rules that were voted on in 2019. Point of information. Mr. Mays. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, to the speaker, um, Davina, on page 18, rule 26.3 and 25.4, that a point of order cannot be ignored, and 26.3, a request for information cannot be ignored. Those are the council rules. Those emergency rules expired, which did have that in it. Would that be a fair statement? Yes, that's a fair statement. And if you have the correct draft, you will see the language that is in all caps and bold is new. That is what wasn't voted on or that wasn't approved by Thank the whole body. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for that clarification. Okay. Now, Ms. Burns, you wanted – yes, Ms. Herkenruder. Her uh, I make a motion to call the question on this motion. Support. Okay, there's – does someone like to be recognized to create that second? Um, this is Councilman Murphy, support. Okay, Mr. Murphy has been moved and seconded to call the question. There's no discussion on a call of question. Would you like what to call? What is the question? Yes, please. Well, first you have what to do a question, call though? question. Restate. Yeah, restate the... Um... Well, right now we're voting to call the question. On whether to vote on the last question. <laughs> to call the question is to the call the question comes first and then the appeal comes after that. Okay. Point, point of information. Yes. Mr. May. Yeah, I think she's asking the call for the question is on whether or not the second one re, re, removes Miss Worthing. That's what the appeal is. So he called in a question on the appeal. Correct? Yes. Okay. Matt, point of order. Yes, Ms. Herkenruder. To clarify, there is going to be two votes. The first vote requires six people to vote in favor to call the question. If that motion passes, then we will move to the appeal. There will be two correct. votes. That's absolutely correct. 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 Okay, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Burns? Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Burns, yes. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. The vote is seven yes, two no. Okay, it is seven yes, two no to vote on the, to call the question on voting on the appeal. Yes. Okay. Please call the roll. Uh, point of order. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Point of order. Mr. Mays. Yeah, can you state what the appeal is? Please please state it. The appeal is that, I'm sorry, do you want to do it? That's fine. No, please. Janelle, the appeal please. is that the chair did not remove Ms. Worthing. Uh, Ms. Herkenroder? No. Ms. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yes. We started um, calling and, uh, voting. Can you clarify a yes and no vote, please? Point of yes. order. Yes, Mr. Mays. Ms. Herkin wrote a vote at the call to question before we could clarify these issues. We're not going to get back into discussion. That's what that will amount to. She called for the call for the question. She should be clear. It was Ms. Worthing who wanted clarification of the question, and I... Well, she would the same would apply. This, we have started voting. Please continue to vote. The Turk and Rotor? No. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? I'm not going to vote until the yes and no is clarified because I believe some are voting wrong already. Point of order. What does the yes and no vote mean? Point of order. Ms. Her- Ms. Herkin um, it is against the rules to discuss one's vote in the middle of a roll call. I just want clarification of the vote. I don't want to discuss it. What is a yes? What is a no? Do you want me to answer that, Madam Chair? Yes, please. Point of order. Yes, she got a Miss Herkett. No, Miss Miss Priestley have to rule on that. You know, this ain't just no free fall. People call for the question. Miss uh, Miss Priestley have to rule what she gonna do, and we'll see if we appeal that. We're in the middle of a vote. There's we are in the middle of a vote. Miss Worthing. Yes. Mr. Mays. No. Miss Lewis. Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. Vote is five, yes, four, no. Okay, the vote is five, yes, and four, no to overrule the, to not, oh, oh, see, I was even coming up. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. That gives us all leeway. And when we continue to violate the rules, I don't want to hear Mr. Murphy, Ms. Worthing, Ms. Lewis, or nobody who voted a certain way. I think you made a mistake, Mr. Pfeiffer, whining and talking about who being treated a certain way. I don't care if they removed or not, but when they vote not to suspend the rules and don't know the rules and they howling and Mr. Murphy done raised his voice, I can be louder than him. And Miss Worthing and told Mr. Pfeiffer what she ain't going to entertain a privileged motion. Then I see the confusion with these rules that Miss Lewis was talking about, but they just don't know. And ignorance ain't no excuse for violation of rules and law, but they already done started making new rules because of their relationships and partnerships and political ships. In my opinion, the same ones who didn't want to move this thing along because they think they know more than they think they know. So we have created chaos. And so remember, I know how to do it. And um, so with this group, nobody should be getting put out of a meeting with the president that this group said. But, you know, I'm used to them. Different treatment and discrimination depending on their um, clique. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Y'all done created clicks. Ms. Madam Ms. Chair. Kirkenruder. Um, I make a motion to limit debate to resolution 210542 for the next 10 minutes. I do believe we have a motion on the floor to send it to council. Yes. Point of uh, order. So we have a motion. Point of order. Mr. Mays. Yeah, if the chairperson, Ms. Burns, is here, she should maybe be chairing. I, yes, yes, Mr. Mays, I was just going to say that. Please give me a chance to say that so that Ms. Burns knew where we were at before I turned the meeting over to her. Ms. Burns, you are here? Yes, I'm here. It's all yours. Okay, we are still on item number uh, 210542. Um, I believe there is a, uh, I believe Mr. Pfeiffer, uh, Councilman Pfeiffer, you made a motion on the floor. You put a motion on the floor to um, have it um, indefinitely. Janelle, could we have, could I have that read back? Um, I'd like to find out what was the motion put on the floor for Mr. Pfeiffer, for, from Mr. Pfeiffer for clarity, please. Point of order. I don't, I don't yeah. What's the point of order? Point of order, Madam Chair. Yeah, Yeah. I think that motion died for lack of a second. There might have been another motion after that. Okay. Um, Um, No, no, Ms. Herkenroder put a a motion on the floor to limit debate for the next 10 minutes on Resolution 210542. And at that point is when you took over and there was no, no one ever asked for a second. Okay, so no one, so is there a second? Uh, so no one ever asked for a second. Is there a second for the motion or for from Ms. Herkenroder um, to have a 10 minute, no debate for 10 minutes? Is there a second? This is Councilman Murphy. I second that. Okay, it has been second. Um, can we do a, a roll call, please, madam? Clerk. Uh, did you want discussion? Oh, sorry. Is there discussion? I apologize. Is there discussion? Is there discussion? Madam Chair. Well, yes. Yeah, if there is discussion, there's been a lot of time wasted. I'm not going to vote for a 10-minute recess or whatever this 10 minutes is. I'm not in favor of that. We done wasted a lot of time with this unnecessary mess and people jockeying. And so I'm going to vote no. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Is there any more discussion? This is Councilman uh, Murphy. I thought the 10 minute was... um... Councilman Murphy? Okay, yeah, I was just waiting. Yeah. I thought the 10 minutes was just a 10 minute limit discussion on this agenda item. I didn't know it was a 10-minute recess. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilwoman Herkenroder. Um, Councilwoman Murphy is correct that this is a 10-minute limit on debate for exclusively resolution 210542. Okay, thank you. Point of order. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, that would require a motion to suspend the rules, Madam Chair. They voted not to suspend them when you were not here. I'm in a point of order. And so, you know, I want you to rule whether or not my point of order is correct, whether they can now come back with some type of motion to suspend the rules without doing it. We got rules in place. Councilman, uh, uh, Councilwoman Worthing. What is your point of order? This is Councilwoman Herkenroder. This is within the guidelines of the no. rule. It is Rule 17.1. Rule point of order, Madam Chair. Point of order. Yes, Councilman Mays. 
Yeah, when I call a point of order, I'll stop talking when she call one out of the way. But you have to rule on the point of order that I call. And then go. you can go to her second point of order, whatever it was. But mine had to do with they done voted not to suspend the rules. And here they go trying to suspend them in a different way. And I need a ruling on that point of order. Council woman, is that worthy? Uh, nope, this is again Councilwoman Herkin Roeder. Okay. Again, I this apologize. is not Your a voice suspension down. of the rules. I'm sorry, I was not recognized. Can Can you please rec- uh, Can you please repeat yourself? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, no. I uh, misspoke before the chair. I do apologize. Um, per the raised point of order from Councilman Mays, it is not a point of order. This is well within the guidelines of the rules per Rule 17.1. Okay, and 17.1 states that the council may decide by majority vote to limit or determine the time that will be devoted to discussion of a pending motion or to modify or remove limitations already imposed on its decisions. This may include a limit of time for each council person to speak to the issue. Failure to cease talking when a time limit has been reached shall result in disciplinary action. Violators, violators shall be removed from the meeting. So, Ms. Herford, you Madam, have to limit all. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah, we have two rounds of five minutes in the rules on the motion. I don't know what this motion is doing differently. That's where the 10 minutes come from. So, you know, when we vote on rules, when we deal with resolutions and motions, those rules are in place on those resolutions and motions. Um, what this mo- what this motion does doesn't change the 10 minutes. It's two rounds of five minutes. I don't know why people are trying to get creative with these goofy rules. The easiest thing to do was to suspend them and don't get caught up in them. We wasted this whole meeting dealing with these goofy rules, and some of them conflicts, some of them they all over the place. So, Ms. Herkin wrote it to you. It's already 10 minutes there. Two rounds of five minutes. Did you realize that? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mays. I uh, miss Madam Chair. Roeder, I, yes. I would say I'm, that. I'm sorry. Who's speaking? Uh, Councilman Pfeiffer. Councilman Pfeiffer. Yes. I would say that this motion is probably invalid, and I'm, I'm hesitant to call a point of order because it's it's you can't eliminate. How are you going to? Uh, divide that 10 minutes up if there's a five minute round. So two council members would take up the whole to- the whole 10 minutes. So I'll be voting no on this. Thank you, Councilman Pfeiffer. Uh, Councilman Mays, um, speaking to your point and in, to also uh, Councilwoman Herkin Roeder, um, basically she wants to do 10 minutes. You're saying that it's 10 minutes within the two five minutes. Um, so that gives you your total allowed allotment of 10 minutes during that time. Am I correct, Councilman Mays? Is this what you're stating? Yeah, Madam Chair. And, um, you know, I don't even know, you know, where we at on the agenda. I thought we were on whether or not, according to the rules, we had to put a motion on the floor dealing with the South Building. That's where I thought we was at on the agenda. Now we've got a motion without a motion um, to um, limit it to 10 minutes, and we already got 10 minutes under these goofy of, rules. Is she saying 10 of, minutes total for everybody? Yes, Councilman Pfeiffer, you've been yes, recognized. Uh, Mr. Mays, are you aware that she the motion is for, for all council members to decide? No, no, I was not. I was not. I can't vote. I vote no on that. Okay, Councilman Mays. Um, Councilman, um, I, I believe where we're at is on the 210542, which um, Councilman Pfeiffer, it was the contract with Garland DBS. We were discussing that. And, and let me just say this. Um, this. At this point, we're doing what they have elected us not to do. Um, and right. we're, still on, we're still on two resolutions, and we're still in finance. And right. this is... This is disappointing because we need to move this along. Um, I don't even know um, if the administration is still on the line because it's after 9 o'clock. 
is Mr. C- Mr. Uh, Company oh. Administrator Clyde Edwards, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, do we have, um, because we, for us to move forward, who else is on the line? Is it just you? Are you answering for the rest of the staff, or have they been dismissed? Because I know it's after 9. Point of order, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. We never voted on the motion to limit debate to 10 minutes. Okay, and I'm, and I'm going to get to that. Thank you. You've been recognized. Mr. Edwards, is the staff still on the line? I, I do need to be brought up to speed with some of the things. I am, I am here for the administration. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's going. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so we are, Janelle, can you tell me exactly where we are at? We need to vote on what so we can have it read correctly into the record so we can move this along, please. Well, right now you're voting to limit debate for the to 10 minutes on this particular resolution, 210542. Prior to that, you had a motion to move 210542 to council. That's never been voted on. Okay. So let's deal with um, first uh, with council uh, woman Herkenroder to limit the debate, to limit the debate. Um, um, is there any more discussion before I do the roll call? Roll call. Madam Clerk. Ms. Hokenroder. Madam Chair. Hokenroder, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Mays. Yeah, sorry about that. I was muted. My only discussion through you to Ms. Herkenroder, what rule are you looking at? Madam Chair, may I respond? Uh, yes, Ms. Herkenroder, please. Mr. Mays, it's rule 17.1. Okay, what page? 15. Page 15, 17.1, a motion to limit or extend debate. The council may decide by a majority vote to limit and determine the time that will be devoted to discuss the pending motion. This is a motion to re- to move to council. This may include a limit of time for each council person to speak to each issue. Um, this may include a limit. It may include a limit of time of each person to speak on each issue. My concern is when you vote 10 minutes for the whole council and you then add a public hearing and an adoption of rules that give each council person time limits of five or 10 minutes total each, um, I don't see how you can try to pass this rule to change that rule without suspending the rules as it relates to the five minute each. So, you know, in all due respect on what you're trying to do with these goofy conflict and rules that need to be changed and fixed, I can't vote for it because we could do that on the 47 million and any other thing. I will not silence the voice of others who might want to know. I don't have a lot to know on this particular motion, but I'm not going to open this door up. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Um, We are now, we are still at the call for the vote. Um, Madam Clerk, can we call for the vote, please, to um, limit the discussion to 10 minutes? Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Ms. Priestley? Sorry, Ms. No. No. Okay, Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. And Janelle, can you give me the tally, please? My pen just dried up at the time. Um, the vote is it five to four. The vote is four yes, five no. Okay. We have four yes, five no to suspend the rules. Are to um, limit point point of order. Yes, Councilman Mays. 
No, I don't think that the motion was to suspend the rules. The motion was to limit time. But I count five. Um, I don't know. But what did I vote? No, I thought it was five no. no and four yes. The motion That's what failed, I said. didn't it? Four okay. yes and five no. Thank you. So the motion fails to carry. Um, so we go back to count. We go back to Councilman Pfeiffer's um, original, which was a two one five zero four two. You know, it was to, it was to drop indefinitely. Am I correct? Point of order. Yes, Councilwoman Worthy. It was not voted on. There was no second, and then it was on to the motion to move it to council. That's correct. Okay. Okay, Janelle, can you re- can you read it back into the record so we have it correctly, please? And thank you, Councilwoman Worthy. The motion was by Councilwoman Worthing to move resolution 210542 to council and supported by Councilman Murphy. Okay. Is there any discussion on that? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Mr. Pfeiffer made a motion based upon the communication that he's heard, that I've heard, as it relates to this roof replacement. There was issues discussed during this discussion about Hassel, Brink, and Brennan, some of the same people involved. And I clearly understand um, that when we questioned whether it was an emergency, the only emergency was it might cost us more later if, in fact, we had to rebid it out properly versus an emergency. I might vote to move it to council, but that don't mean I'm going to vote to approve this later on. Um, So I have some of the same concerns that Mr. Pfeiffer has raised. I don't know if those absent members heard it all, have they reviewed it, but I'm clear on it, and I still have concerns about it. It's... um, Anybody from the administration, Lee, or any of those folks dealing with this roof replacement on the line? Only Mr. Edwards, uh, Councilman Mays. Okay. And, you know, I might forgive y'all because of all of this mess that went on in this meeting with people jockeying and politicking and being so smart. And so, you know, I knew it wouldn't take long to show the personalities of these various council members. This is the second council group or third, second or third council group I didn't sit under and sit with. And I know when I hear it, I know when I can hear people disrespecting me. I know when I can hear people and the public hear it too. The public hear it too. We asked them, get away from these rules until you get it together. Get away from them until you know it. And they just know a lot. And so now you got two or three of them sitting in here that violated. Ms. Burns, I wish you had a been here because your ruling might have been different. I don't mind being nice to people. I don't mind teaching and helping people learn. But when I hear people coming after me politically, being led by somebody who's been doing it for four years, and then coming in with a chip on their shoulder. I just think it's some of the same people who was trying to put point people order. in position. Point of order. Uh, yeah, what's, your, what's your point of order, um, Councilman Murphy? Um, Councilman Mays is not germane to the motion. Okay, Councilman Mays, could you please stay on item number 210542, vote to move to council. I believe well, that's what I disagree with. That, please? Yes. Yeah, I disagree with Mr. Murphy, and I hope you ain't ruling that I'm not Jermaine. I'm Jermaine, Tito, Jackie, Marlon, and Michael. When it talks about motions and people voting and time wasted, it's Jermaine. It's been a bunch of time wasted, and I know who are the culprits of that wasted time. Point of order. What's your point of order, Mr. Murphy? 
We are on motion uh, 210542, the contract Garland DBS Incorporation Roof Replacement City Hall South Building. Councilman Mays is not germane to the motion that's on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Councilman Mays, can you, can you wrap it up so we can please move the meeting along? Yeah, that's a good strategical way to say wrap it up because I'm going to say it again to Mr. Murphy. I'm Jermaine, Tito, Michael, Jackie, and Marlon. I'm used to you, Kate Fields, Eva Worthen, and everybody point in your court. Point of order. What is your point of order, Mr. Murphy? Councilman Mays is not germane to the motion that is on the floor. Councilman Mays, can you wrap it up so we can move forward? We need to, um, if you can wrap this up. And, you know, one thing, we, we did not, and I was not here for the suspension that the rules weren't suspended and, and whatever happened beforehand, because this was a sec. I was absent because I had a second funeral to attend today. Then I have something medically to do. And I did contact Judy, Judy um, uh, Ms. Priestley, and I appreciate her stepping in. And I contacted you, Councilman Mays. Um, our first meetings were great. Um, and we moved business along, and it was good. Um, I don't miss meetings, but stepping into this meeting, there was a problem even getting on the line. But I think we, we owe it to the public to not point information to everybody, not point of order. Let's do some business. We're still on the second resolution in the finance committee. And right now, that's not a good look for any of us. So if we could, uh, we need to get back to it. I know you wanted to wrap it up, but we do need to move on to item number 210542 about Garland. I believe um, it was expressed by you, Mr. Mays, um, that you still have some concerns. So if you can wrap this up so we can um, get the vote to what we're, if we're going to move this to council, please. Thank yeah, you. Madam Chair, I would probably be done. You get five minutes. And he can talk about not being germane. I'm thinking I'm hearing echoes of Kate Fields now. And so I ain't studying what he's talking about because it is germane to talk about voting patterns, how council allow for discussion, rules, and whatever to this particular motion. So I'm glad that I didn't have to appeal your ruling, that I was not germane, Tito, Jackie, Marlon, and whatever. I ain't studying what he's talking about. He done interrupted me oh, three times. Order. He's not germane. I am germane and would be done. What? What's your point of order, Councilman Murphy? I am, this is my fourth time calling a point of order on Councilman Mays that he is not germane to the motion. The motion is 210542. It's talking about the contract Council and Garland DBS Incorporation, the roof replacement, the city hall, south building. That is the motion that's on the floor, not his Council opinion Murphy. on what he think about Quincy. C Councilor Murphy, uh, he's wrapping this up, and people have discussed about how they're voting. So there has been some leeway that's been given. Um, Councilor Mays, can we wrap this up, please, so that we can move on? Yeah, Ms. 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 Burns, I don't even appreciate you having me wrap it up. You can simply rule that I am Jermaine, Jackie, and Tito. I can talk about voting patterns and rules and discussion. I don't have to talk about South Building at City Hall, Garland slash DBS, like what he want me to. He talked the way he want to. I talk the way I want to. The point of order that he didn't interrupt it three, four times have to do with Jermaine. That's all you have to deal with. You don't have to tell me to wrap nothing up. I get five minutes just like everybody else. I ain't studying. And we'll come back for another five minutes and talk to similar things and issues on voting this council as it relates to getting through agendas. It's Jermaine, Jackie, and Tito. I ain't studying. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Is there any more discussion? Is there any more discussion? Madam Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, um, if I don't. I mean, uh, Councilwoman Herkenroder spoke slightly before you. Yeah, if I don't hear none, I'll go a second round, but I'll wait. Madam thank Chair. You. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Herkenroder. So one of the things that sent us back to committee was the request for Garland to send in their markup for services as the general contractor. I reached out to 
um, Lauren, um, I believe it was Raleigh, um, this week for that markup, and then was sent a document by Mr. Edwards. I believe that everybody got that document from Mr. Edwards. Um, I personally did not see a difference in the original document and the document that was sent to us this week. Um, as such, I do not feel comfortable moving forward not having the full transparency of the markup for the general contractor um, and believe that this meeting or that this uh, resolution needs to not go to council until we do have that transparency because that is what our community needs. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Hurricane Roeder. Uh, is there any more discussion on item number 210542? Is there any more discussion? Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I was discussing the item um, 210542, and I was talking about things that I heard Mr. Pfeiffer raise the issue of. I was talking also about Brennan and Hasselbrink. I know you had raised issues. And I don't know what Mr. Murphy had been, have been, but it's germane for me to talk about him calling them points of orders when I'm discussing a resolution and deciding whether I'm going to vote to move it forward to council, which I probably will. I'll see how I vote when I get there. All of that was being said. I don't know who texting him, who talking to him, who coaching him, but he barking up the wrong tree. And on this point resolution. Order, point of order. Goodness. Councilman Murphy. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Him, um, Councilman May talking about me barking up the wrong tree don't have nothing to do with this motion that's on the floor. Um, thank you, Councilman Murphy. Um, Councilman Mays, um, you have the floor back. Thank you. And it do have something to do with it. When I'm interrupted four times with a bogus point of order about Jermaine and Jackie and Tito. What's your point of order, Councilman Murphy? Me asking the point of order to be Jermaine to the um, motion on the floor has nothing to do with Councilman Mays calling my point of orders bogus. Point of information. What's your point of information, Councilman Pfeiffer? What rule is being broken? Um, Councilman, Mur uh, Councilman Murphy, what rule are you stating that's being broken? The, the rule is be the motion on the floor is the um, point. Let me read it one more time. 210542. His opinion about what he think about Councilman Murphy has Point nothing to do with the motion on the floor, and it's being broken for him to be um, calling me out, calling me all of these other kind of interpretations of who he think my character is. That's okay, there's a point of information on the floor. Councilman Pfeiffer, what is your point of information? What rule has been broken? Councilman Murphy, he's asking specifically what rule has I'm, been I'm broken that Mr. Mays. Okay, I'm you don't you don't want okay, Councilman Murphy, no, you don't I want don't to answer to. what rule I'm I don't, I'm I don't have to answer Excuse Pfeiffer. Okay, so I, I need to finish, please. So you don't want okay, to answer just so we I'll have it that you don't want to answer which rule has been broken. So Councilman Pfeiffer, he is not stating which rule has been broken. Um he's stating that he's not Jermaine. So can we move on, please? Councilman if I may continue, you have the floor. if I yes. may continue, the people who talk about points of orders, points of information, waste time on discussion. He did that. That's germane to this particular movement, and it delayed me when I know, in fact, I was being germane talking about the different things and the rules and discussion and all that. And so I'm going to say again, I ain't studying Whoever got him up here trying to make a fool out of me, he better consult with him four, five, point six, seven order, times. Point of order. Point of order. What's your, what's your point of order, Councilman Murphy? He making characteristics as if someone is um in my ear and no one is in my ear. This is Quincy Murphy. The constituents who voted for me on November 4th put me in this position. Ain't nobody in my ear. 
characterize um, what you think going on over here. All right. Thank you, Council Murphy. Um, the attorney, I would like to get, because we need to have clarity, because clearly there's an issue so we can limit the number of point of orders. Can we get clarity from, Lee? is it Mr. Balls? I, don't, I, don't, I hope I'm not saying your name incorrectly. Um, I believe he's the attorney. Can you tell us what, when, when, they're, when a council person is talking, um, it, can you cite specifically what they, when they're in their response, how their response or what are the boundaries into which they can give their answer so that we have clarity so that when people are giving their response that other council people can understand what their boundaries are. Basically like point of order, order, Madam Chair. Yes. yes. Point point of order. Yeah, that the, the the council body will decide that if there's an appeal or the chair or whatever, you can go through that with the city attorney. But this is the council business and the council interpretation and particularly the chair. So do what you want. When y'all finish, I'll continue with the floor. Thank you. Council Mays, um, is the attorney, is he still on the, is he on the line? Yes, I do. Can, can you hear me? I, I cannot hear you. And I know my phone, I'm on my a second phone, it has been dropping. Um, can you, I, I cannot hear you. Can anyone else hear um, Attorney Balsner? Uh, hello. Testing, testing. It's just really I loud. Can't, no, I can't hear you. You can't, you can't hear me? The volume hello. is really low. I don't, I don't, I, I have my mouth right to the receiver. Okay, that's Hello. a little better. That's a little better. All right. Um, Council President Mays is correct. Uh, this would be a matter that the chair would have to determine whether you find it's germane, um, the discussion, and if the other uh, members of the body disagreed they have the ability to appeal your decision. Okay, can you say it again? Because your phone is low on my end. I, I'm sorry, it's difficult hearing you. I, I, I don't really know. I'm sorry. Um, the, well, hold, uh, that's right, because I think we're hearing someone else. That they're um, shuffling, and that's, that's I mean, we're picking up other notes. Can you repeat that, please? Council President Mays is correct that this would be a determination made by the chair, and if your determination of whether he what he's saying is germane, if other members of the body disagree, they have the ability to appeal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mays, can you proceed? Thank you, Madam Chair. When you are discussing the business of the citizens of the city of Flint, and you got other council people chiming in. We're in a political arena, and I know the politics of this arena, not only on this particular motion or particular agenda item, but I know politics. And I know Mr. Murphy didn't come in here, seemed like with a chip on his shoulder. He was supporting Kate Fields now. I ain't studying him. When I was discussing this, I was being Point in my order. mind. Point of order. Uh, what's your point of order, Councilman Murphy, and what rule has who, been broken? Who was supporting me for councilman and who supported me for councilman oh, is not germane to um, 210542 Contract Garland DBS Incorporation Roof Replacement City Hall South Building. Councilman Mays is out of order by discussing who supported Councilman Murphy and who didn't support Councilman Murphy and his interpretation of what he think about my um, political views on council. We is discussing a motion about a roof replacement on the South Building of City Council. That's what we ought to be discussing so we can move this meeting forward. What I will not tolerate is I am not going to get on council and let this point man order. talk to me and try to treat me any what's kind your, of way. What's your That's point of order, um, Mr. Pfeiffer? Uh, he took a point of order to take the floor, and his point of order, he has not stated a rule that has been broken. So, Councilman Murphy, Murphy, can you state the rule that has been broken? The rule that's been broken is we on a motion 
on roof replacement and Councilman Mays is keep on talking and discussion of the roof. That's not a roof, Councilman Murphy. Roof. You need you need to, to say, say that rule. one more time. You need to say the rule, Councilman Murphy. He's asking what rule can you cite the rule that has been broken. He is not germane to the motion. That's the rule that's being broken. Okay. So Go in his Okay, in, in his are you done? Yes. Okay. In his response, yes, he may take the long way around. Um, there is also given some leeway in, in the response. Um, you you can't cite you're just stating he's not germane to the topic, which you're saying that is two one zero five four two, the roof repair. He's stating I don't know exactly. I, he has to finish. I can I won't I don't speak for him, he doesn't speak for me. So Councilman Mates, can you can you yeah, ma- yeah, Madam Chair, and, and I want Mr. Murphy and anybody else to know, when I'm discussing an agenda item, and I've been here, and folks ain't been here, and I've heard what Mr. Pfeiffer raised, I've heard what you raised about Brennan and Hasselbrink. When somebody gets my attention with five or six points of order because they don't like me talking about their political persuasion and their political vote, I might not can change it. But the fact is the fact. I've heard Mr. Murphy come to these meetings talking about how and who I talk to people and how I talk. So that's germane to me, particularly when he do four or five points of orders as I'm discussing a particular resolution. He can do it to the cows come on, and I'm going to be on him. I done watched him. I'm listening to him. This is my third or fourth interaction with him on this council, and I'm going to say it as I close. I ain't studying what he's talking about, but if he want to tangle with me, he can have that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Now, thank you, Council Mason. I want to move forward. When we get to is there any more discussion? about um, 210542, Contract Garland DBS. Is there any more discussion? This is Councilman like Murphy. To... Yes, Councilman Murphy. Call for the question. Call for the question. Janelle, can you repeat the question, please? Well, he's Madam, calling Madam for Chair. the question. Word of order. The question being um, uh, sending 210542 to Council. Okay, Councilman, thank you. Um, Councilman Pfeiffer, you, did I hear your voice? It, it was kind of faint. Yes, there was no second to that. Okay. Can I, Madam Chair. Can we get, yes. I will uh, second Council that call for the Perker question. Voter. Yeah, sorry. I will, I will uh, second that call for question. Okay. Here's the question. Point of order. Councilman Mays. The bigger point of order is that the rules give each council person five minutes, and you haven't even asked is it any more discussion. He just didn't got the flow in the middle of folks five minutes, two rounds, and call for the question. And so, you know, is that in order? Whatever y'all do is your business. Um. For the second round, we have not done the second round. You are correct. Um, Madam Chair. Janelle, yes, Councilwoman Herkenroder. Per Rule 16.1, should any council person make a move to call the question, debate will cease immediately. Thank you. Um, we are going back. Janelle, can you repeat again the um, the question? We are still on. We were on. We got a few things that are going on. One, which was to move 210542 to council. Then there was a second um, we need to do for round two. Um, and I believe Councilman Mays may want to speak for round two. Um, so let's do for, and am I, am I missing any other call to question or any other questions, Janelle? Um, well, call the question is, is something you vote on right away, and if that passes, then you vote on 210542. Okay. So we are up to uh, – we, well, we need to finish the second round. Is that correct first before we do no, that? You point, point of order, order Madam okay. Chair. Point yes, of order, Madam Chair. Mayor. Did somebody – did you call on somebody and did they second the call for the question? Um. 
uh, Councilwoman Herkenorder did, I believe. Am I okay. correct, Janelle? Yes, you are correct. I am correct. Thank okay. you. Um, so let's do for the call for the question. Um, call for the question is to move item number 210542. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Councilman Pfeiffer, you were first. Madam Chair, the proper procedure is just to call roll call. Let's, thank you very much. And then we have, um, I believe it was that Councilwoman Worthing. She spoke right after you. That was Councilwoman Herkenroder. I was just going to say her. what Councilman Pfeiffer said. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Pfeiffer? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Ms. Burns? No. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. The vote is five yes, four no. Okay, five yes, four no. Two one five zero four two will be moved to council. No, nope. point, 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 point of order. Point of order. Point of order. I'm sorry. So, uh, I point of order, order manager. Was, was it five for councilman Pfeiffer or councilman Mays? You came in at the same time. Yeah, you uh, needed you needed six votes six. to call the question. So, and, and I, I don't so know if it was. Six. So you're still on discussion for two one zero five four two. So we still have to. Okay, so we are. Yeah, Madam Chair. Madam yes, Chair. Yeah, let me say this to my colleagues, all those who voted yes to call for the question. If we have an important issue, and I get the floor first and call for the question, you're going to lose your right to communicate. I would never do that to my colleagues. You can listen to Mr. Murphy and all of these novice, but you better think about when it comes to you and what you might want to discuss. A courteous council person would wait to see if there's any more discussion from his or her colleagues. So y'all keep walking down this path and listening to this nonsense, and it's going to come back to bite you. I've seen it under two council groups. This is the third. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Pfeiffer. Yes, uh, Councilwoman Herkenroder. Oh, if, if Councilman Pfeiffer wanted the floor before me, I can go for it. Yes. All, with, all, all right, thank you. Councilman Pfeiffer. No, I didn't call for the floor. Okay, I know you and you and Councilman May spoke at the same time. So did, can you say that again, Councilman Pfeiffer? I didn't hear you. No, I, I don't, I'm not requesting the floor at this time. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Herken, Herkenroder. Um, in response to my colleague in the first ward, the reason why I supported the motion for calling the question is that this is now the fourth, or I think we've discussed this at every meeting besides the special meeting. Um, I think that this has been belabored, and I think that we owe it to the community to move forward. Point of information. Councilman Mays. Through you to Ms. Herkin, Rhoda, although that might be, we have some absenteeisms I can't keep up with them. And although they, that might not be, my point of information is do you think it's fair to cut people off whether or not you know everything, other people might not. Wouldn't it be fair to just wait and see if there's any more discussion rather than all these calls for the questions? That's my question to you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Councilwoman Herkenroder, do you want to respond? No. Thank you. Okay. So we are on to, I believe, Janelle, the second round then, because we, uh, second round for discussion for 210542. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there any discussion for item number 210542, um, Garland Contract, Garland DBS, Incorporated Roofing Replacement for the Madam South? Chief. Yes. Councilman Pfeiffer. Uh, since my motion to drop this failed, I would make a. I would like to make a substitute motion to the one on the floor to uh, table this until. Point the of next. order. What's your point of order, Councilwoman Worthing? 
the motion hasn't failed yet. We never took the vote. It was the call to question that failed. No, I'm thank you. Uh, even though you ignored my point of information, the point of order that you just said is, is incorrect because I, my original motion for this was to postpone indefinitely. That did not get a second. So hey, I would make a Janelle, substitute. Uh, that's motion. not what I just stated. Um, can we ask the clerk for point clarification, please? Yeah, count point of order. Point of order, Madam Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays, I'm getting ready to go ahead. Point of order. Yeah, because this would be her third or fourth time. She I'm just takes the floor, don't I'm recognize. I'm in a point of order. I'm, I'm in a point of order. Councilman me. and Councilwoman Worthing, excuse me. Uh, Janelle, if you could please... Um, did we get the second? Did we get the vote? Um, the second for um, council um, councilman Cyphers um, to drop it indefinitely. We did not get a second. No. Okay. That so wasn't my for, for, point of order, for Madam Chair. Chair. I, yes, Miss Worthing. Yes, I, I I didn't say that it was your point of order. I was asking for clarity because he he was before you and he was speaking. Now, councilman Worthing. Yeah, but my proceed. point of order was that we please never voted on this on my motion, which was after that. Okay, what was your motion, Councilwoman Worthing? To move it to council. We had to to a council. call to the question. That Point of order, there Madam was Chair. More discussion, and now we still need to go back to that motion. I'm in a point of order. Point of order. Council Dennis are the ones who are interrupting me. Have, <laughs> uh, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Where's Madam Chair, when she don't cease talking, she's been doing it all night, her and Quincy both, and I'm getting tired of it. He has the right, my point of order is he has the right to put a motion to the table at any time during this discussion on her motion, and I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Worthy, can you finish, please? Can you go ahead? You yeah. Have the floor back. Point of order, point of order. <laughs> Mr. Pfeiffer had the floor, not her. I called a point of order, and it's not been ruled on, Mr. Mays. My point of order was that Mr. Pfeiffer said the motion uh, failed to move it to council. It did not, because it hasn't been voted on yet. That was my point of order. Thank you. To move 21052 to council, and that has not been voted on yet, and Janelle did recite that. Um, and. Councilman Pfeiffer, um, getting back to getting back to what there was, you had had the floor, I believe. Um, yes. Is it something that you needed to to say, sir? Thank you, um, Madam Chair. I would like to make a substitute motion to send this back to the next finance meeting, and that's so moved. Okay, there's a substitute motion on the floor for item number two one zero five four two to send it back to. What committee? I didn't hear you, Mr. Pfeiffer. What committee do you want to send it to? Your voice is very faint. You, to the next finance committee. To the next fi finance meeting. So there's a substitute motion on the floor by Councilman Pfeiffer to send 210542, Garland DBS, back to the finance committee. Is there a second? Is there a second? No, I'll second that yeah. motion. Sorry. Okay, um, is that um, Councilwoman um, Winfrey Carter and I believe Councilwoman um, Priestley? So yes, I was, I was um, getting your attention to support that motion. Okay, so there is a second on the motion. Um, it, it has been properly second. Um, is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Madam and discussing, Chair. Madam Clerk, can we do a roll call, please? Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? No. Mr. Murphy? No. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winter Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Herkenroder? No. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. 
The vote is five yes, four no. Five yes, four no. We needed six for this to go back. Am I correct? No, you just needed five. We need five. Okay, well, then yes. item number 2110542 has been sent back to the next finance committee meeting. On the order, Madam Chair. Yes. I think that motion to table it to finance fail. We would be on the original motion to move it to council, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I am. Uh, Janelle, are we on the motion? And thank you, Councilman Mays. Are we on the motion to send it back to council? No, because the motion to postpone it passed five to four. Correct. Okay. Can you repeat so that? Can you repeat that again, Janelle? The motion to send two one zero five four two back to finance committee passed by a vote of five to four. Okay. So item number two one zero five. Go ahead, Mr. Councilman so Mays. So, Madam Chair, it was five votes to table it back to finance? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, item number 210542 has been sent back to, uh, to table it back to finance. Okay, you know, we're moving on. I, I'm sorry, was that Councilman Murphy? Yes. Um, I would okay, like to I can't, I can't hear you, Councilman Murphy, and maybe I am having phone problems. I was just calling for the floor. Okay. Councilman Murphy. I would like to move 210571 and 210572 to council. Is there a second? Madam Chair? Yes. So I second it, that. Ms. Worthing. Okay. It's, okay. So it has been properly seconded by Councilwoman Worthing to move item number 210571 with agreement to Lighthouse and the Lair Group Company Property Insurance Coverage, Terrorism Coverage, and item number 210572, contract Lighthouse Group General Liability and Terrorism to Council. Madam and, Chair. Yes, uh, Councilman Pfeiffer, I believe. Yes. And I apologize. Uh, my phone is breaking up. It, it, no it's breaking up. So I apologize if I, if I don't hear you correctly and I'm asking you to repeat. No worries. Uh, through you to, to uh, Mr. Edwards. Is Mr. Edwards still on the line? Uh, Mr. Edwards, are you still on the line, sir? Uh, yes, Chair, Chairperson uh, Burns, I am still here. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Edwards, do you know? do you know how much – um, if any, as is, is our insurance went down from year, because we don't have the prior year's rates. Has this, is this um, more or less than the prior year's? Uh, that, would, that would be, is it, is it, it's not contained in the information that you have already been provided? No, sir. Okay, then I would, then I would need to... I would need to get with the CFO to, to look at the prior, or if you give me some time, I could probably locate it on the system. So if you give me a, a, a few minutes, I'll see if I can locate it for you. Okay. Um, while um, Mr. Uh, Edwards, the administrator, is looking, he needs a few moments, um, let's, item number 210571 and 210572, um, Janelle, I believe we just have to wait for him. Am I correct? Because this has been Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I think um, we can continue to communicate, if I may. I think Janelle had contacted me earlier in the day because, if I'm not mistaken, through you to Janelle, it was people here dealing with these uh, resolutions. You kind of wanted them to go first, correct? Correct. But now they have left. They have left the meeting. Right. And so when we first started out with the first resolution dealing with Ernst and Young, before it got sidetracked, I would have informed the council of that. But it went off into a certain direction with certain folks, and it was a mess, Ms. Burns. I don't know if you was here. But Janelle had called me because they wanted us to know that they had a little time. But, you know, maybe they can show up Monday. I'm going to vote to move at the council, 
but that chaos at the beginning of the meeting on the first resolution that caught me and I know others off guard um, caused us not to have them here. And so sometimes people can talk and think they know, but they don't know what's going to be said. They went to arguing about the rules and motions on the flow and um, what we do and how we do it, didn't suspend the rules, so we couldn't, you know, do a certain thing. So, Mr. Pfeiffer, you might could have had those questions answered from them. I'm going to vote to move it to council for the sake of time, and we'll see who's available come Monday. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Council Chair. Mays. Um, yes, Councilwoman Priestley. Um, from you, through you to Mr. Pfeiffer, the costs are in the packet. The um, premiums from November 1st, 19, or 2020 to November 1st, 2021 was $194,059. Um, and they issued a notice of non-renewal because of the um, amount of claims that we had had. They were unable to get a lower rate according to the package packet that they provided us. And that is um, on the resolution staff review dated November 30th under the first paragraph uh, background summary of proposed action. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Councilman Priestley. Did that answer your question, Councilman Pfeiffer? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Edwards, um, are you still on the line or were you able to find, was, um, do you still need uh, Councilman Pfeiffer, Mr. Edwards, to answer your question? No, I withdraw my question. Okay, thank you. Thank you for drawing your question. Um, so we are we are voting to. It has been put on the floor for item number two one zero five seven one and item number two one zero five seven two to move to council. Is there any more discussion? Is there any more Madam, discussion, Madam Chair? Yes, yes Councilor. Um, my concern about this policy, and I'm not going to vote against it, sending it to council. Um, is the fact that we received notification of cancellation. I'm looking for my document. Um, on August 27th of 2021, this policy goes into effect. Um, I believe December 1st, they extended our policy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they extended our policy one more month. Um, but why is it? now that we received this information. Why wasn't this received earlier? This again is a lack of planning on the part of the administration. And um, except for the fact that we need insurance to, in order to operate and to cover ourselves and to protect the city against loss, um, I would probably be voting against it because of their lack of planning. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman Priestley. Is there any more discussion? <laughs> Is there any more discussion on item number 210571 and 21572, moving it to council? Is there any more discussion? Okay, Madam Clerk, um, roll call. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winter Carter? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Vote is nine yes, zero no. Okay, thank you, Janelle. Item number 210571 and item number 21572 has been voted nine yes to be moved to council. Moving on down, item number 210574. Madam Chairman? Yes, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Priestley. I'd, like yes. I'd like to make a motion to combine 210573, 
0574. And is there 21572? Am I missing one? Yeah, I believe there's just the two. 2573 and 574. Yes, I'd like to combine those two motions, please, or those two resolutions. Okay. There is a motion on the floor to combine item number 210573, authorization COVID-19 uh, premium pay public safety personnel and 210574, authorization COVID-19 premium pay American, um, American Federation of State. Uh, this is Assistant City Attorney William Balser. I was actually, just while we were in that little break, I was wondering if um, our guest from uh, the, uh, the council uh, closed session earlier if they're still with us. Mr. Balser, I could not hear you, and I apologize. Your phone, and am I the only one who cannot hear Mr. Balsner, Attorney Balsner? Very, very faint. He's very faint. Okay. Uh, Madam Mr. Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, what he was saying, he was saying that the people who we went in closed session with is still on the line. And I guess he's referring to a resolution that they're concerned with. Uh, we did have a closed session. Uh, isn't that what you were saying, um, Attorney Belson? Yes, Council President Mays, that's what I was asking. I was just wondering if they were still on the line. Okay, thank you. So they are still on the line, is that correct? We don't know. So they're, so they're not if, on the line. I don't know if Janelle can tell. But. Uh, Janelle, can you tell if um, the attorney, are they still on the line? Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. That's neither here nor there. We got some business before us right now, and either they'll be here or they won't be here, and we'll take it from there. I don't know. All right, thank concerned. you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Um, Janelle, are we ready to go? We are back. Everyone's back up, so can we proceed? Davina? Yes, you are being recorded. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we left off on item number 210573 and 210574. Councilor and Judith Priestley asked that these two be combined. Um, is there any... Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Was that motion to combine them seconded? It was not. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And the reason, the reason that, Madam... Yes, uh, Councilwoman Worthing. I'm confused by this motion to combine. Does, does she want to, to move them both to council? Councilwoman Priestley, can you explain what you, you want to combine I, them? I want to use them as one discussion item and move them to, if they are to be voted on to move to council. I did not make that motion to move it to council. I would like to combine okay. it for discussion purposes as well as oh. if we decide to vote to move it to council. Okay, so you yeah. want to, for clarity, so you want to combine them together to discuss both of the items on the, those two together. You want to talk about them both Correct. at the same since time? A, yes, since there's the same thing, different unions. Okay, does that answer your question, Councilwoman Worthing? I'm just confused because we've never had anything like that. Maybe we can do this, but does that mean after the discussion's over, it will be moved to council? Or I think we need a motion to like either postpone or move it to council, like some sort of action once you combine them. Point of order, Madam Chair. Could be wrong. But... All right, I will restate my motion. Excuse me. Sorry. Okay, so you, order, you, want to, you want to drop your yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, point of order. She made a motion. Whether it's correct or proper, she made a motion. If you ask, is there a second? We can straighten it out later. She has the right to make a motion, and we can take it from there. I was concerned whether or not she was combining them to move the council, regardless of that. Either way, y'all decide to do it. It can be done, but you know, 
we had a okay. point where the motion should get a second, whether it's amended later or not. That she did, Councilwoman Priestley. Did you just drop it? Did I hear that? I will. I I am withdrawing my motion and making a new one. Okay. So you were drawing your motion to combine. Okay. So you were drawing your motion to um, combine item number two one zero five seven two into one two one zero five seven three into one zero five seven four. So that is being withdrawn. So you have a new. You have a. You want to put another motion on the uh, floor? Yes. I'd, like to um, make a motion to move 210573 and 210574 to council. Okay. There's a motion on the floor to move item number 21573 and 210574 to council. Is there a second? Is there a Ma second? Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I would second that motion. Okay, it has been seconded, second to move 210573 and 210574 to council. Is there any discussion? Madam, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Um, you came at the same time. Um, council woman, is that Herkin Roder? Irving. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, I am going to vote no on this. I am not ready to pass any resolution until we have a compliance firm, until we have had our public discussion meetings in our wards. Um, I know the mayor had one, uh, but it was not to discuss the ARPA funding. It was a question and answer, which was totally fine. It's just we, I've not had the community input in my ward uh, specifically for the ARPA dollars, and I'd like to do this right. Um, so until we hold that, until we come up with an overall plan of what percentage of the money is going where after the public tells us what they want to do, not what we tell them to do, what they tell us they'd like to do as long as it's in compliance, then I would consider motion. Um, this has nothing to do with not wanting to, uh, you know, give bonus pay at all. It's, I'm going to stick with my original statement. I will not uh, vote on piecemeal legislation until we have a plan. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilwoman Worthy. I believe Councilman May, you have the floor. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. My position is this. You've had employees working. You've had employees died. We're going into the holiday season. If I was working like I used to work at General Motors and other places, any time I could get money leading into the holiday to help my family, I would want it. These funds do qualify for these expenditures. I'm not I'm satisfied totally with the way that it's been structured and worded. We have the right to change that. When this resolution comes forward, we have the right to amend it on the floor, and I will attempt that through you to Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah, Mr. Edwards, I looked at the um, Treasury rules as it relates to this matter, and I was looking at them um, because of these resolutions have certain hourly um, rates tied to it, a different set of hourly rates for um, police and fire versus other union workers. If you can't answer it, maybe Mr. Whittakin can. Mr. Whittakin, are y'all interpreting in this that you have to tie it to hourly wages versus um, a lump sum? I, I uh, with all due respect, Mr. Mays, I do not believe Mr. Whittigan is on the line. Okay. If Mr. Whittigan ain't on the line, I'm going to make a substitute motion to um, stop this off at special affairs, and I so move. Okay. So there's a substitute motion on to move. You want to move Councilman Mays? Item number two one zero five seven three and item two one five seven four two special affairs. 
Is that your motion? Yeah, I had a minute motion to stop it at special affairs. Okay, so you want to make you have a minute motion to stop it at special affairs. Okay, is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second. Is, okay, it's been seconded by <clears throat> by Councilman Pfeiffer um, to move item number two one zero five seven three and item number two one zero five seven four to special affairs. Um, we also have on. Uh, we need to take the vote. I believe Janelle. Um, there was a vote to um, Councilwoman Priestley wanted to move item number two one zero five seven three and two one zero five seven four to council. Um, so we vote, and I just so do we vote on Councilman May's first. Can I get some clarity for the record for that, Please. Madam Chair? Yes. Yeah. On her on Mr. May's motion first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, the the item is on the Ma- floor. It's been properly Madam checking. Chair. Yes. yes. Yeah, we would be in discussion on the amended motion. Okay. We, thank you. Thank you, Councilman May. May I have the floor? Yes. Just let me now say we, we are in discussion on item number 215074 and 210573. Mr. Mays, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with all of the foolishness and the delay of time and the unnecessary delay of time that has went on, I always had in my mind that Resolution 210540, the Ernst and Young um, Management Services, and that these two would take up most of the time. I didn't know it would be people showing out and trying to know rules and wasting time and making this council look stupid when they simply, in my opinion, could have just suspended the rules and treated everybody with dignity and respect and common courtesy. Because as you can see, folks don't really know the rules. They don't understand the history of them and the application of them. Um, People, Ms. Worthy and Mr. Murphy have just been violating them left and right and they're still in this meeting and has caused this council, in my opinion, to look bad and you know when people want to act bad and talk a certain way and just holler and talk a certain way I like to get with them because politically what's your point of information councilman Worthing is Mr. May saying um, that him calling me ignorant was not embarrassing and bad behavior Um, no if I may answer Yes, Councilman, I, I was not privy to that conversation earlier. Councilman May, she asked you a question. Could you please answer the question? Yeah, I can answer her. Ignorance to the rules and to her behavior do make folks look bad. It did it under the last council, and it's, do, and it's done it today. And so ignorance of the law and the rules is no excuse, whether it's her, Mr. Murphy, or anybody else who um, was out of order and getting warnings point, and then stealing meat. Point of order. Point of uh, order. What, what's your point of order, Councilman Murphy? Point, uh, we, the motion is on these two resolutions. Him interpreting Quincy ignorant of the rules and all of that stuff is not germane to what we're talking about. And he keeps trying to call me out. And I'm just saying, I'm just asking in respect that he, um, chair, uh, woman, um, that you catch him and get him together because Quincy, we go, we gonna be going back down that rabbit hole again, and I'm not trying to go there. So I'm just saying we go, we gonna be fair about this, and I'm just asking him to speak on the subject matter and don't speak on Quincy Murphy. Okay. And Councilman Murphy, um, Councilwoman Worthing did ask for clarity for ignorance of the rules. Well, I'm, I'm not um, talking about she, her. I'm yeah, talking that, about that, Eric yeah, May. Yeah, Council, Council, Council Murphy, dragging my I, name and stuff, and then we're going to be going back down Councilman Murphy, I need to speak. Councilman Murphy, I okay. heard you. Right, and I'm sorry. Let, let me, I, no, no problem, sir. I want to make sure that we're answering. Um, uh, Councilwoman Worthing did ask for clarity, and he was given a clarity. If we could stay um, Jermaine, to the topic, um, Councilman Mays uh, with answering the question. 
Councilman Worthing wanted you to respond to um, the, the statement, ignorance, I believe, to the rules. Can you please, um, you have the floor, sir. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Murphy just don't get it. And um, maybe when he does seem to get it, a light bulb will click on. I'm germane because of the Ernst and Young resolution. That's where the mess started, and it took up a lot of unnecessary time. These two resolutions, in my opinion, goes along with that. And I'm not going to let my political career go down the drain because folks are ignorant to the rules, how they work. They order. don't want to suspend order. them. Point of order. What's your point of order, um, Councilman Murphy? <sighs> um, rule number 29.6, any person while being heard at a council meeting may be called to order by the president. Any council person for failure to be germane, for vulgarity, for personal attacks of persons or institutions for or for speaking in excessive of the um, allowed it time. What I'm saying okay. is Eric Mays, in his interpretation of Councilman Murphy, is not germane to the, root, the uh, motion, and that's why I am calling him out of order. And I am saying, in all due respect, will you put, as the chairperson, while you have um, Councilman Mays have the floor in his um, discussion matter of the motion, will he stay germane to the subject or and please leave Quint Councilman Murphy out of his interpretation of how he thinks my characteristic is in um, dealing with these, this um, governing this city council meeting so we can move forward because here we are all again going back and forth again and I hate I, I I really feel bad that I have to go here and and go back and forth with this man you know and I know he didn't want me um on council, he he he. This why he didn't want me on council because he knew Quincy wasn't gonna allow him to point treat me any kind here. of way. Okay. I understand yes. that. What's your point of order? My point of um, order is no, 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 not for Councilman Murphy. A uh, Councilman Murphy, um, Councilwoman Worthing is she's got a point of order. You probably uh, didn't hear her. This this is Councilwoman Herkenroder. Um, Herkenroder, I'm sorry. Um, exactly for the reason that Councilman Murphy called Mr. Mays out of order, I am calling Councilman Murphy out of order in regards to not staying germane to the motion. Thank you, um, Councilwoman Herkenroder. Okay, um, Councilman Mays, Councilman Murphy, let's, let me back this up. Uh, Councilwoman Worthing, you asked for clarity in regards to ignorance of the rule. Councilman Mays, or the statement of ignorance to the rules. Councilman Mays, if you can answer the question and please say Jermaine to the topic with to specifically with Councilwoman Worthing in addressing that so that we can move uh, forward, please. Order. Madam okay. Chair, the, yeah. Council, the Councilwoman Worthing chimed in first. I asked that question like fifteen minutes ago and it was answered. It's no longer about my question. Okay, has your question been answered satisfactorily? Um, about 15 minutes ago. Thank you. Okay. Madam well, Chair, may I continue? Yeah, Madam Chair, I didn't have to answer her question, but I answered her question as it related to why we wanted to suspend rules and save time. I'm germane to this motion when I speak about that delay and who, in my opinion, delayed it because I, the motion is to stop it by finance chair. I mean, by special affairs, excuse me, because Mr. Whittigan is gone. And so when I talk about people delaying meetings and not suspending rules and who they were, and Mr. Mr. Murphy can go on with that. As long as he's elected in a council seat and is a public figure, I'll mention his name, Liddell Lewis's name. I'll mention Ms. Worthen's name, Ms. Priestley, Mr. Pfeiffer. So he can go on with that street talk about don't put his name in my mouth or whatever. You here participate. You help delay it. 
That's the reason I want it stopped by special affairs when Mr. Whittigan is here. You heard Mr. Edwards say he was gone. So I ain't studying what you're talking about. You can point of order. You can talk Jermaine, Jackie, Tito all you want. Sometime you should listen and you can see how delay of time by the time we get to this resolution and many more in other committee meetings is important. Now, I'm anticipating we might have to recess um, Chairperson um, Burns, and I don't know. But I don't know, and I don't want the reputation of this mess that's been carried on from the old council, and I'm not going to bite my tongue as to who's who, who votes in clicks and why, and in my opinion, why we delay in the city business on important matters, particularly as it comes to taking care of employees during the holiday. So I do want it stopped by special affairs. Ain't going to lose no sleep if it don't, because I'm going to call out people who delay time and act foolish, in my opinion, as it relates to rules they don't understand and know and don't want to suspend them. I ain't studying what Quincy talking about. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And um, Mr. Edwards, City Administrator, is, you said Mr. Whittigan is not on the line. Is that correct? Uh, I am here representing the administration. Okay. Okay. I'm, yes. Okay. Thank you. So, Madam Chair. Most, yes. Oh, have we had, had, briefly. Are, are we still in discussion on the motion we are, to move to? We are still in discussion for item number two one zero five seven three and two one zero five seven four. Is that correct, Janelle? I, I have correct. still in discussion. Thank you. So we are still okay, in discussion. Okay. I have. Thank you very much. I am going to vote no to send this either to council or to the um, Administrative Affairs Committee. And this is why. I am not going to piecemeal ARPA funds. Neither one of these, propo- these resolutions gives me a total dollar amount that they are talking about. They say per, per hour, per class, How many hours is that? How many employees is that? I have no information on which to base the decision, and I have no intention of approving anything piecemeal such as this. How can I approve something? I don't know what it's going to cost. How much, what is the FICA payments on this? Unemployment. How much is it going to cost us? We have no information on which to base the decision, and so I'm voting no to both send it to ad hoc, or excuse me, the executive, of, uh, the special affairs, or to council. I am, and I will make even, um, I could make a substitute motion at this time to um, permanently remove it from our agenda, but I won't at this time, but it may be coming. Thank you. Madam Is there Chair. any more, um, uh, Councilwoman Herkenroder? Yeah, I just I also have some concerns with this um, resolution, namely because of the reasons that I stated er- earlier regarding spending ARPA funds prior to having a plan in place. Um, again, I want to make it very clear this has nothing to do with those who served our community through um, policing or through fire department. It's just making sure that we have the plan in place. Um, And I'm also concerned at the dates that are outlined within this resolution um, stating that this pay would go back to June 14th of 2020. Um, However, my understanding of ARPA rules is that ARPA funding cannot go for anything prior to April 1st of 2021. Um, So I just have quite a few questions still that I want to make sure that we have answered. Um, And I I don't think that, I don't think that this is a a final resolution for us to be able to send into special affairs. So I will also be voting no, um, as I believe that it should stay in the Finance Committee for a while. Okay, thank you, Councilman Herkenroder. Is there any more discussion? Um, This is Councilman Murphy. Councilman Murphy, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Um, I will be um, voting to postpone this, too, also. And the reason why I will be voting to postpone this, because I think about the Amalams drivers 
that have to go um, when people call 911 and when they go to people's homes, they've been the front liners um, for a long time. They may not necessarily work for the city of Flint, but there are some other essential workers that I think ought to be included. Not only that, I think we need to, um, I don't want to um, cherry pick um, how we um, spend the opera funds. Okay, we're going to fund this, but, you know, we're going to wait and do whatever with the rest of the money when um, I just don't think enough input that's done been made from um, the public and the council on um, how this money going to be um, spent. So I, I, I can't be supporting this right now. I thank you, Councilman Murphy. Is there any more discussion? Madam Chair? Yes, Councilman Pfeiffer? Madam Chair, through you to uh, Mr. Edwards. Uh, Mr. Edwards, are you still on the line? I am. I am. I'm still here, uh, Mr. Edwards. Like, can we can we get totals? I'm sure that the city has all of these calculations for the amount of hours that this is proposing in total cost. Can we get that total cost? I, do I will absolutely you. share that with the uh, CFO. Okay. Thank you. I, I do believe that uh, you know this is. That I, that I agree that uh, the city's first responders need need to have um, this this premium pay, but I do think that the constituents need to know the total dollar, and I and I'm not comfortable with writing a blank check and not knowing um, to Ms. Herkenroder's point of of not knowing the total amount and how much more we're going to have to allocate other in other spots. So I would prefer if this does go to a special accounts or special affairs that you have those totals for us. Um, but if it, if it goes to uh, finance again, but either way, I think this committee and the, the public need to know the total bill for the, these two resolutions. Thank you. Understood. All right. Thank uh, you, Councilman. Oh, go ahead. Um, yes, Mr. Edwards. Yeah, I just want to respond to uh, one particular thing that I believe uh, Councilwoman Hurricane Roder mentioned. The dates, the dates are permissible based on an eligibility period. So the dates are relevant to an eligibility eligibility period by which those um, workers were engaged in order to qualify for the fund. So that is the date, she, the date she's reading are the dates that are permissible for eligibility for these funds, and, and, and that is consistent with uh, ARPA interpretations. Point of information. Yes, what's your point of information, Mr. Pfeiffer? Uh, through you to, to the speaker, who determined or how were these, these uh, dates, how, how did they come about? Oh, that, that, um, yeah, that would be a question I would rather than um, give you my best understanding. I believe that that would be a question best suited for uh, the CFO. As you, as you mentioned earlier, he was intimately and intricately involved in the uh, development of the numbers, but uh, yeah, I would, I would uh, stand down and allow him to be able to give you the, the the most correct answer. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Is there any more discussion? If if no one else wants to speak for the first round, I have something to uh, say no, for a oh, second. I, I do want to I, I do want to speak, and we're still in our first round. Um, Ms. Worthing, did you speak for the first round? Would you have you spoken? Yes. Okay, I do want to speak for the first. Is there anyone else before I speak? Because uh, I'll make sure I speak last for the first round. Is there anyone anyone else who hasn't spoken for the first round before I speak? Ma Madam Chair. Yes, Councilwoman. Um, um, yeah, I would like to um, speak on this. I um, I'm just having issues with it, and I do agree with. Um, with my colleagues about um, 
I would like a breakdown of um, how many workers. Um, I see, you know, $5 per hour, but how many, an additional $5 per hour, but how many workers um, will there be? You know, this is kind of like, like um, someone said, this is writing a blank check. You know, I need to know the total amount before I can uh, make a decision. And I have no, I have no problems um, sending it to Special Affairs. I have, I don't have any problems sending it back to the Finance um, Committee meeting for um, next week. But I just need a breakdown. Um, I can't vote on this. And so, um, with that, I mean, I can, I can vote to send it to um, Special Affairs, but. I don't know where it would go after that because I'm not going to vote on it unless I um, see some transparency. And so um, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, voice that. And then after this vote, I will be leaving the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Councilman um, Murphy Carter. Um, thank you. Is there anyone else who has, is there any more discussion that hasn't spoken for the first round? Is there anyone else? Well, I'm going to speak for the, um, my opinion, um, my concerns. Um, I, however, I want to start off with, because this is so important, um, and sometimes we have, to, um, we have to make do, I'm disappointed that Mr. Whittigan isn't here to answer the questions uh, because he's, he's, this is his, he's the CFO, and I would have liked to have seen him be here on the line to answer the questions that my colleague colleagues have so we can have some clarity so that we can move this, you know, along. Second of all, I, I agree, and I will not be uh, voting for um, to, move, to move any funds unless we have compliance. We have to have a compliance firm. Now, I firmly believe, for me, for me it is, uh, if it's the, the Ernst & Young, or is it, you know, another firm or, you know, exactly, I, I did ask for some specifics. Um, my other issue is um, the public input. We need more public input than just the ward-by-ward ward tours where um, residents wrote down their questions um, and they were on a three-by-five index card. I believe people have more issues than you can write on the front and back of a three-by-five index card. And, yes, I went to numerous, several of the meetings. And I feel we need more discussions. We need open and clear dialogue, and people need to be able to address their concerns because what one person is concerned about, another person won't have. The issues I have in my ward, they will not have in the, a lot of people don't have in the eighth ward. So Flint is broken down into different subsections, and the residents deserve to be heard. Um, also, I have a, a question and a serious concern about the $2.50, the $3.00, and then the $5, how is that being paid? Um, I was told that it was going to be paid over a 40-hour work week. So if some, in a 40-hour work week, ask, adding $5 more per hour to their pay based on a 40-hour work week over a 10-month period. I will not piecemeal out or agree to a vote to piecemeal out anybody who showed up for work when the majority of America was scared to leave their homes. I'm not going to do it. They didn't have a choice. When you called 911, whether it was police, fire, ambulance, they had to show up. So I'm, I will not be piecemealing it. Second of all, or third, as I go on down the line, who are the $2.50 workers? What are their job titles? You can't just put a blanket, pay people $2.50. And are we providing equity? People who make $2.50, our funds are made, are designed to help those who need it the most. So if we're giving the people um, five dollars. Why aren't we giving everyone the same amount across the board? We, we, I, would, I have questions about that. We have the sep the separate subcategories: five dollars, three dollars, and two dollars and fifty cents. How are we making each of these people whole? And I am probably for me, I am very passionate about paying police and fire, but I think that they should be paid fairly. Like I stated, there's an issue because I know that we're looking at the amount of service and work. And I appreciate the Michigan State Police coming in and helping Flint. When we look at, if we've had 60 homicides this year, and Flint has had 
Um, not just the, the homicides, I believe, are going to the in Michigan State Police. The detectives, they're handling that. But our Flint police are handling every shooting, every DOA, every call they answer to. And I know the Michigan State Police are receiving, I believe, it's seven fifty every pay period or fifteen hundred dollars extra per month. So they've received considerably a lot more money. And we've only made one payment of twelve hundred dollars to what we consider our, our public safety. We need to level that playing field. We need to do something about it. This requires more discussion. I'm not willing to vote this to be to be approved at this point. This needs some more work and it needs some transparency. We are not doing our people who work for the city, who work in public service, any type of justice to approve this. There needs to be some questions that need to be answered. Now, are there, is there any more discussion before we go to the second round? Matt, oh. uh, Councilman Worthy? Um, I do, before I start, I do have a question um, for Janelle. Can I make another substitute motion or, um, or do we have to vote on one before I can do that? I know you can make one more. Okay. I'd like to um, make a substitute motion that uh, we drop this um, re- resolution. Uh, how, and before before we ask Councilman Worthen, your your phone is breaking up. Can you can you you said I oh. I received you said you could, yeah I'm, and I apologize. My broadband here is not the best, so I apologize. Um, I, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I need a, um, I'm going to make a motion, uh, to drop this resolution. Um, but before I wanted to ask, uh, for a second, how long is the res- resolution dropped for, um, Janelle? Or like, it can't, when can come, it come back? back. It, it can't come back for 30 days. Okay. Yeah, that, um, So my reasoning before I make that motion is um, we're not going to have a compliance firm uh, before 30 days. And two, we won't have spoken to the public like I've heard um, my colleagues state that we want to hold those sessions. Um, And also, there's more to think about than just one category. And I'm not saying I don't want to um, give this money out. I'm just saying... This category is very broad, and are we only going to stick with the unions, or are we going to pay nurses? Are we going to pay others that were on the front line? Um, that hasn't been discussed. There's just so much more to this. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to, to drop this, the, both of these resolutions. So, Council and Ward, I just want to repeat, you want to make a uh, substitute motion to drop Item number 210573 and 210574. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second for uh, Councilwoman um, Worthing's um, substitute motion to drop item number 210573 and 210574? Is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second? Okay. Um, her, your motion, Councilman Worthing, has um, for lack of a second. Um, we will not be moving forward on that. Now, Janelle, what Madam Madam Chair. Chair. I don't know who spoke first. You came in at the same time. Um, Madam who, Chair. Yes, Councilwoman Priestley. I would like to make a substitute motion to permanently drop this resolution until we get further answers. Well, once we permanently drop it, it's dropped. They'll have to come back to us with another resolution with the answers that we have requested as well as the um, recognizing that we want a plan as to how to spend all the money rather than um, this piecemeal process. Um, mm-hmm. it's not that I per, I think these people deserve every penny 
But there's no order. dollars amount. On a border. What's your point of order, Councilman May? Is Ms. Priestley proceeding with discussion or is she making a motion? Councilwoman Priestley, are you making a motion? You are making a substitute motion. I'm making a motion. I'm making a, I'm making a, a substitute motion and I am shutting my mouth. What's, what's your substitute motion? To permanently drop this, this resolution. To permanently drop. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is a substitute motion on the floor by Councilwoman uh, Priestley to permanently drop item number 210573 and 210574. Is there a second? Point of order. Uh, Councilman Pfeiffer. Wasn't that just what Councilwoman Worthing and we just voted or she didn't get a second on? She did not so get a second on that. The same? This it it Janelle. My, yes, ma'am, Madam Chairman. Okay. Okay. The, uh, it is the same. The, the motion to it drop okay. and the motion to drop permanently would be the same thing. Oh, Thank I'm you. sorry. I just, I will make the point. I'm point sorry. Of I, point of information. Point of information. Councilman Mays. One of them would have dropped for 30 days. Ms. Priestley's is a little different, in my opinion, Janelle. Wouldn't that be a different motion? It's one I've never heard before. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Maybe it's well, just the words that I'm using. Madam maybe. Chair, point of order. Point Madam Chair. Point What's your point of order? Yeah, my point of order is that there are two distinct, two different motions. That's my point. I don't think they're the same motion. Point of information. Okay. Councilman Pfeiffer. Um, to the speaker, how can that be a valid point of order? This body can't bar something from ever coming back. I'm sorry, Councilman Pfeiffer, I, I could not hear you. Your, your voice is faint. Could you repeat that, please? My point of information was to, to Mr. Mays on how can this motion be valid and bar something from coming back permanently. It's a 30-day rule on anything coming back. May I, Madam Chair? Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Mr. Pfeiffer, to your question, a council person could put any motion on the floor. What the body does with it is another thing. You can put a motion. We can wait to see if it died for a lack of a second. If it gets a second, you can vote it up or down. But when you move to drop, it can come back in 30 days. When you move permanently, it won't come back. So there are two distinct motions, and I think it's proper, and we have to wait to see what happens. Councilman Pfeiffer, did that answer your question? I believe, um, can we get Mr. Balls there? Because I personally feel these are very similar myself. Uh, we know, that for me, I, I don't want to use my interpretation. That's why we have a legal department. Mr. Balls there, can you give us a legal opinion on that, please? If you're still here. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. That legal department can give every interpretation or whatever it wants, but this council body is going to be the ultimate decision maker. And so, you know, I'm not interfering with what you're doing. I'm just trying to make a point, and that's going to be the order of business. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mays, and that is true. But I do like to have clarity on the floor because we've had um, two different council people where their um, motions, their substitute motions are very similar, and there was a question that Councilman Pfeiffer had. So if we could get some, uh, some clarity so that we can make, the, you know, make a good, sound decision. Uh, Attorney the, the point of The point of, point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. Yes, Councilman May. The order would be that he asks is there a second, and that discussion and clarity will come. But, you know, I'm not going to appeal you. But at the same time, those are my thoughts on the order of business after a motion has been made. Um, 
Thank you, Councilman. I was going to ask for a second before we, I would like to have some clarity with, is it out of order, Janelle, to ask for the attorney, uh, Mr. Bosner, to give, to answer that before we do a second on that, mo on the substitute motion that Mrs. Uh, Councilwoman Priestley asked to, our substitute motion to drop it permanently. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman. I, I, Kat, I, you and Janelle spoke at the same time. Um, point of order. Because it is a point of order and you do get the floor. What's your point of order? Yeah, my point of order is that's a way to do discussion prior to asking for a second, and that's kind of improper. When a colleague make a motion, I would ask for a second before I get into the debate and discussion about it. I was asking for an opinion, um, if he could give us a legal opinion, some legal opinion on, because those are very similar. Madam Chair? Yes, Councilwoman if Priestley. He, if he rules that that is it, similar, I will have a substitute motion. I think I okay, you'll have another I substitute it. motion? I, I will, I can withdraw um, and put another motion on the floor in order to clarify it, since there has been no second. Okay, well, let me call for a second. Let's call for a second to the motion for um, before we get Mr. Bosner, um, Attorney Bosner, in it. A, uh, is there a second for the substitute motion to drop item number two one zero five seven three and item number two one zero five seven four? Point of order. Yes, Councilman Worthy. She she didn't want to go through with it. She said she wanted to drop it and make another one. She said she would. Um, I didn't. She didn't say she did. She said she would after the opinion. We're not getting the opinion of the attorney first. But she has every right to say she withdraws that motion yeah. and makes a note before a second. Um, are you to say, thank you. Excuse me. Ms. Priestley, are you stating that you want to drop it? You said you I, would. So do you want to drop it? I will, you be more I will drop it. Yes, I will drop it and, and restate it again, hopefully clearer than I did the last time. Okay, so, so you're going you're gonna to withdraw you're going to withdraw gonna your motion to permanently drop 210573 and 210574, correct? Correct. Thank you. My motion you want... is now to permanently table this, um, remove it from the agenda, this um, resolution number um, 210, shoot. Five seven three and five seven four. Is that okay, so the correct? A... I believe I stated it correctly that way. Okay, so let Point me. Point of order. Uh, yes, Point of order. May. Yes, Councilman. Yeah, May. we got a rule that allows to postpone indefinitely. If that's what you're referring to, it might make her easier if she used those terms. I don't know what she's getting at, but if you look at rule. I think 21 is a motion to postpone indefinitely. I've never heard of to what she's saying, but, you know, whatever. Okay. What is the so, number? She, he said rule number, rule number 21. Rule number 21, um, it says uh, the motion to postpone indefinitely. The council may decide to prevent discussion and further discussion on a question by voting to postpone it indefinitely. That's the rule that he was stating to you. Okay, then my motion is to postpone um, 210573 and 210574 indefinitely. Madam Chair? Yes, uh, Councilwoman Worthing. I support that. Okay. It has been moved and properly seconded to uh, postpone indefinitely. Item number 210573, 210574. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I was looking to see what these motions allow in discussion, and if they are, and I don't see in 21 where it says one way or another. So I would enter into discussion. I won't vote in favor of this motion. I'll vote no because I keep hearing, 
at least a couple colleagues. I think Miss Priestley, I've heard Miss um, Herkin Rota. They keep talking about piecemeal and, and having a whole plan and going to public comment and hearing what the public has to say. And we've been dealing with these funds since May of 2000, I mean, May of this year, 2021. And the interim rules, interim final rules are in place. And they took effect May the 17th. We had Mr. Flores from KLD's office here. And I'm not buying into piecemealing um, $97 million when people are dying people need relief, whether it's in crime prevention, whoever that is howling or whining, I wish they'd mute themselves because I sound like they're having sex or something. I don't know um, what it is. It's the cat. I'm Janelle. <laughs> it's my cat. Sorry. No, okay. <laughs> I mean, the cat I, no cat. I thought somebody was having sex. I was getting uh, excited. Uh, but the point... May, can you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll make me not be Jermaine. But the point is this. I don't think that I'm going to be waiting to allocate every dollar and know about every cent and that I'm not going to be guilty of piecemealing. What I want to be guilty of is helping people in need in a timely manner, whether it's dealing with housing vouchers, whether it's dealing with crime prevention whether it's dealing with essential workers. You know, I come out of the union, and I'm a working class person. And I know when I spend long hours like Janelle and them have in these council meetings, and this is an example of one that didn't have to go that long, in my opinion, I want to get answers as soon as I can. And I'm not going to be on record of dropping essential worker pay for police and fire and no other employees because I think it's essential to work in finance in the city of Flint in order to get police and fire them checks. I think it's essential for what Janelle and Davina and others do, the last ones to leave City Hall. The garage is empty except for their cars because we have to pass enabling resolutions and laws. I think it's essential for street maintenance and so forth and so on. And I did arithmetic for 528 city employees, 5,000 apiece um, across the board. And I know what the arithmetic, if I'm not mistaken, I have to do it again. It was either 2.6 million, 3.6 million. It was under 5 million. And while people want to give Ernst and Young 3.9 million, 4 million, I'm going to be on record trying my best to champion for taking care of home first. And taking care of home first has to do with city workers. So, you know, I'm in a political arena, and I'm in a financial arena, and I've done some of my homework. I've done it on the rules. I've done it on the amounts of money, the number of employees, and there's reasons that I'll keep this resolution where it's at, try to get questions answered. And it's a reason that I criticize this administration for coming up with an artificial 9 o'clock. <laughs> and you got council members that work day jobs and um, special meetings with members absent on this subject matter. And then I listen to the talk about piecemealing, allocating every dollar, knowing every cent before we move on this money. That's not my vision. That's not my vision. Everybody might have a nice vision. Everybody might want to wait to hear from other people in the community. I've heard from them. I've heard from them in meetings um, that I've called. I heard them call in to council meeting, but under these goofy rules, I'll wait for my second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Mays. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on postponing item number 210573?
and definitely 210574. Is there any more discussion? Madam Chair. Um, I, it's a bit, my, this is it's very faint. Was Worthing. that Councilwoman Worthing? Yes. Okay. Councilwoman Worthing? Um, yeah, I'm going to vote in favor of this. Um, we can always bring it back. But there's just too many questions, like we've already uh, stated before, um, and it has nothing to do with um, not wanting to to pay workers that deserve it. Um, but there are many workers who may deserve it, and we don't have all of the facts. Um, we don't know, you know, should we spend it on other categories? Um, you know, how much will this take away from the total? And other communities have not piecemeal. <laughs> they have uh, set up a total, they've gotten public input, and uh, they have set up a percentage. And the communities already know wh what is going where, and it's already being doled out. And we can't do that yet. We can't just dole out money because it, it's sad, but the previous council was so dysfunctional, uh, we would have never agreed on anything. Um, at least now, even though there's a rough start, I think we have a consensus that we'd like to do this right. And um, I'm in agreement with that. I'd like to do the public input. I'd like to be in compliance. <laughs> and I, w I just want to make sure that we know all of our options, we get the public input, and, and we're not just saying yes to this because it might be politically, uh, you know, make you look good, um, but that, but in the end, I want to hear from everybody, um, and, and I want to make sure that, that we've included every category as far as um, premium pay. And, and do we want to go that route where we're paying everyone premium pay? If we pay for one, are we going to pay everybody? And in that case, all of the money might just go to that. Um, there's so many questions that I have. Um, and I don't have any of those answers. And um, given, I still think that I, this is going to change drastically uh, before it comes back before, uh, before us. Um, and, and I'm happy to see that council was, this council is going to take control, get those public meetings held, and, um, and, and, and they want to see a plan. Um, so I'm very happy with that. <laughs> Um, and I would like to, to drop this until we get those percentages. Um, the flyer from Detroit um, that was shown to me was really good. Uh, and, and if we could do that, something like that, uh, to assure our residents that we're not just, um, you know, pulling at strings and, and giving out money here and there, that it's fair, uh, all possibilities have been considered, and we've really thought this out. Um, I, I don't do my own finances this way. Um, the new council hasn't heard me say this, but I have an allocated spending plan. I, um, when I do my finances, not even just for the month, um, it's a couple months ahead, um, you know, or anything other goals that I have, I know exactly where my entire paycheck is going because if I don't do that, I might miss a bill or not have enough money to pay my water or not have enough money to pay my taxes. So I allocate that money. It's possible to do that. This is a large chunk, way bigger than my paycheck. <laughs> um, but it is possible to say, hey, I want to prioritize this. I want to prioritize that. And within those categories, how are we going to spend the money? Um, I think that this council could come to uh, an agreement uh, based on, you know, getting those answers, but we don't have the answers yet. So um, I'm going to vote yes to, to postpone it indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Worthy. Is there any more discussion? Is um, there any more discussion? Is that Councilman Murphy? Yes. Um, Councilman Murphy, you have the floor. Here's what I want to go back to um, with this funding. I feel that um, there are a lot of great ideals out there, so I'm just trying to figure out what it looks like when it comes down to what we are deciding to fund. You know, on one end, we want to fund 
the essential workers, but on the other hand, we may have some services out in the community that may qualify for these fundings that is several ready programs that could um, be able to move in a direction to receive some money. So why, how do we lead them out in order to fund the essential workers, um, fire and police? And I have no problem with funding them, but what about the um, people that come, that, you know, and I said it before, what about the Amalam drivers that go out every day and put their life on the line going to have to transport patients or um, those people, you know, even with the MTA, that ride to wellness where the um, drivers are um, taking patients from doctor office to doctor office that may could be exposed to. So, I mean, when you talk about essential and frontliners, what do that look like? And I don't think we really did a deeper dive into what that looked like if that's what we want to look at funding. And then, like um, Councilwoman Worthy said, we could – we could been uh, spent a lot of money, and then we don't have none left. My other question, I'm going to wrap up, is um, the governor put a uh, moratorium on um, sh- water shutoffs. So what is our collection rate? Because of the COVID, um, the, the uh, moratorium that they put on shutoffs, our collection rate and our water department may not be what it needs to be. So we need to be, make sure that our funds and our uh, water department is there and is stable because we may have lost some revenue because people probably quit in their water bills. So that concerns me, and I want to make sure that stuff is covered. You know, what what is our revenue loss for the city of Flint that we lost due to COVID? You know, people not working in the city of Flint not having to pay city taxes because they work in that home. So now they don't got to pay city tax. What is that loss right there? So I want to look at all of those different things. And there's just so much out there that is critical that we need to make sure we look at and we cover it before we get to spending some money. So I'm just not comfortable. I have a lot of ideals in um some, you know, input on where I would like to make sure that we cover money that's not being talked about. So I want to go and pay for this, and we ain't talking about uh, replenishing the money in the water department because people ain't been paying their bills. That's it. Thank you. Is there any more discussion? Is there Madam any Chair? more? Di- yes, Councilwoman Priestley. Oh, her can roll Is that her? No, nope, it's Judy. Priestley. Oh. Councilwoman woman Priestley. Yes, <laughs> one well. woman's voice. I, and I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you know, and all the, my previous fellow council people's um, comments are exactly why I want to table it or postpone it indefinitely. We don't have enough information. You know, the mayor says he has these buckets he wants to spend it in, but he hasn't assigned any dollar amount to any bucket. None. Nothing. I want these people work their butts off. Fire and police, I admire them. Whenever I have the opportunity, I go up to a police officer in their car, even if I'm driving next to them, and I thank them for their service. But I cannot vote for a, a, um, a resolution that has no total dollars. I have no idea. And Councilman Mays, you can say, well, it's this much money. You don't know. You don't know how many people are in this category or how many hours. Yes, it's only those hours that they worked and doesn't include overtime. I get that. Oh, November, but we right. don't know how many orders. Yes. What's your point of information, Councilman Mays? Ms. Herkin wrote, uh, you and Brian or saying expressly that I can't do five. Ms. Priestley, whoever it is, are, they, are you implying that I can't take a calculator and go 528 times 5,000? Do you think I'm that dense? 
No, I am not saying that. I'm not saying that at all, but that isn't the total that it's going to be. Because well, not point only of information. Is it, point of information. What's your My point of information? question, Ms. Priestley, be careful when you say what I know or what I don't do, because I do know and I have did the arithmetic for the number of employees overall. Please don't do that. I don't, I can't even. Councilman Priestley, you have the floor. Thank you. I can't, I'm an accountant. I can do the math. I can add in um, all the benefits it's cost. You know, we still have to pay unemployment tax. We still have to pay FICA on that. All of that has to come out of those wages because we don't know how many hours at how much dollars. So the police get this much dollars, this much an extra an hour, okay? Well, how many hours at that much rate? How many hours at $3 an hour are we going to pay? How much are those benefits? I understand, I'm talking just taxes, okay? How much taxes, employer taxes, are we going to have to pay? So what is that total? We do not know. And I could sit there and I could take take how many employees we have by the by the maximum of ten thousand four hundred dollars. I can multiply that by seven point six five FICA and or Social Security and Medicare tax and whatever the the um, the unemployment tax is. I can calculate that out, but that isn't what the number's going to be. So I'm not sitting there and I'm not. That's one of my problems with this is that we don't have a total dollar amount. And I am not voting for anything without a dollar amount attached. Thank per you, hour does make equal a total. Thank you, Councilwoman Priestley. Is there anyone else who would like to have a discussion? Is there any more discussion on the substitute motion. Madam um, Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. If it's appropriate, I'd like to say, first of all, Ms. Priestley, I've been looking at this money for over seven months. And really, I take offense when somebody speak for me and say what I don't know. If you listen close, I asked, was Mr. Whittigan here? And I asked, was going to ask the question, do it have to be by hourly wage? Can it be a lump sum? We once read it could be up to 25000 per employee. So I really, really am sensitive and I listen close when people talk publicly about what I know and what I don't know. And I know for a fact I did the arithmetic for the total number of employees. I also know that when it comes to compliance, whether it's six months or a year or two years, I seem to lean toward a compliance firm, whether it's Ernst and Young or whatever. So I do know all of that, and I can speak very well for myself. And for to hear somebody on a call that I'm on say what I don't know, that ain't good, because some folks don't know what I know. They don't know who I talk to in the unions. They don't know what type of arithmetic I've done. And they don't know why I wanted to postpone it to special affairs in order to clear some of these up. It can go to special affairs and can go back to committee. I'm not going to vote to drop it permanently. I have more compassion for me as it relates to police fire, employees in our office, finance or whatever, the holidays and family. That's what I'm looking at. And I'm going to take care of us first before I look at other essential workers in the community. I had a pastor tell me once, it's a sorry dog that won't wag its own tail. These are employees who have kept the city running. They have, some of them have died along the way. And so when it comes to all the talk about piecemealing and putting everything in place, I know the previous council 
it was four yes and five no about putting money with certain categories. And we've had a special meeting. Some was here and some wasn't. And we discussed and debated where these resolutions have to derive from. Do we have to wait on Mr. Neely? Can we um, vote on resolutions to set parameters? My position is that, yes, we can vote on resolutions to set parameters. So while people wait and I'm hearing, I want to talk to everybody. It's impossible. You're not going to talk to everybody. You'd be talking to 80,000 people. I don't think everybody signed up for the water settlement. So that's a fantasy world. You ain't going to hear from everybody. You can take meetings out in the community. You might get 50, 100, 200. You ain't going to have 40,000 people you hear from. We are elected to make decisions. And we are elected to make decisions for the residents and employees and others in a timely manner. So I'm enjoying listening to my colleagues. I'm enjoying all of the good logic. But I'm a realist, and I'm a realist saying that it doesn't matter if y'all do anything for these employees prior to the holidays, your own employees. It might not matter to me. It might matter to them, and it might not. They might not be in a bigger hurry as I am. But the, the language and the logic that I'm hearing y'all say on record is it relates to people who want to accuse you wrongfully of holding stuff up. The reason I make the motions and keep stuff on the table is because we have the opportunity to amend it, fix it, talk about it. I dare two council members to call another special meeting, and then I want to see who show up. And maybe under the rules that this mayor is forcing on y'all about 9 (laughs) o'clock, I can get some sense in the folks there because I've been in council meetings for over 30 years, and I've never seen such a thing. Here I'm at home walking around comfortable just as the employees. Let me finish up, Madam Chair. Just as the employees. Yeah, I will. Under these goofy rules. Just as the employees making a hundred, a hundred and thirty five thousand, we making twenty two in this council wanna stand for somebody implementing a nine o'clock rule and we meet normally four times a month. When this council wake up, it'll be a happy day for Councilman Mays. Right now, I'm very disappointed in what I'm hearing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Is there any more discussion on moving item number 210573 and 210574 to be postponed indefinitely? Is there any more discussion? Is there any more discussion? Okay. Um, Madam Chair, um, Madam Clerk, um, I'll call for the vote, please. Roll call. Ms. Lewis? Oh, she is muted. People are going to start dropping now. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so so my phone call dropped, and I don't know what you all are voting on at the moment. Okay, we are voting on moving item number 210573 and 210574 to postpone it indefinitely. And that was brought by, um, it was a amended motion. It was brought by um, Fourth Ward Councilwoman Judith Priestley. Okay, thank you. Yes. Mr. Murphy? Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, my call dropped mechanically. I don't know what's going on. Mine's did, too. This is Councilman Murphy. Okay, Janelle, do we have all of the council people on the line? Could you please check because we're we're into a vote? 
Can you please check for um, all wards, please? Yes, I have checked. Everyone drops at the six-hour mark. Apologize for not letting you know that in advance. Okay, okay. So um, they're back on. Can you proceed, please, Madam Clerk, with the with the uh, roll call? Yes, Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Priestley. Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter. No. Ms. Burns. Yes. Ms. Herkenroder. Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer. No. Ms. Worthing. Yes. Mr. Mays. No. The vote is six yes, three no. Okay. The vote is six yes, three no for item number two one zero five seven three and two one zero five seven four to be postponed indefinitely. Moving on to uh, item number... Madam Chair? Yes, Councilwoman Worthing. Um, I just am announcing that I am leaving the meeting for the meeting. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate um, you letting us know. You have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number 210. Five seven five, three year contract. Three three year contract. I'm sorry, it was. I didn't, Madam Chair. Yes, is that Councilwoman Priestley? Or this, this is this is Allie. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you, Councilwoman Herkenwater. Yes. Um, I make a motion to uh, vote on a master resolution for. Uh, resolutions 210575, 210577, 210578, 210579, 210580,210581, 210582,210583,210584,210585,210586. Um, to move to council. Okay. There is a motion to make a master resolution for item number 210575, 210577, 210578, 210579, 210580, 210581, 210582, and then you said 210586. Is that correct? Or did you? No, no, no. You hit 83, 210583. 215, 210584, 210585, and then 210586 is the last one. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's a motion on the floor for that. Can, is there a second? Yes, there is a second. Madam, I, Madam Chair? Yes. I'll second that. Come on, Priestley. Okay. Council on Priestley has second that. It has been properly seconded and moved. Um, is there discussion? Madam Chair? Yes. Um, my concern with some of these, um, these items that we are asking to approve is the fact that we have not received a budget report or a finance report that tells us where we are in um, budget versus actual, how much is remaining, what the estimated costs are. That is my major problem with these resolutions. Okay. The charter more does discussion? require that. Sure. Councilman, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I hear, I think that was Ms. Priestley's concern. Yes. But if I'm not mistaken, she seconded a master resolution to move them to council. I would remind council, this is committee meeting, and some of the people you need here are not here because the prior council and this council is falling for the okie doke as it relates to a artificial 9 o'clock deadline. And so, you know, people can say I don't know about them, 
and they can get into the habit of not discussing them in committee. They can move them to council. We can stay in council meeting long discussing them. But that's exactly why I don't do what y'all are proposing. I mean, I would ask Ms. Herkenroda about the details of the change orders. Um, Ms. Priestley, we did get a document in a timely manner as it relates to the preliminary budget. And if you look at it closely, they're saying that the projections is different than the projected $17 million deficit for this year. It'll be next year. And they were saying because the pension fund allocations is $32 million versus 40 unfilled vacant positions saved maybe $8 million or so. So I've read that detail preliminary budget that was forwarded to us. I still have a meeting tomorrow with the finance chair, Ms. Burns, I think at 1 o'clock. Point of information? With the, What's your point of information? Of the city charter, section 7-103, budget monitoring. The chief financial officer of the city of Flint shall present and answer questions on a monthly basis to the city council on the actual and estimated, excuse me, income and expenditures of the current fiscal year are uh, on any variance from spending plans on uh, any other financial issues of interest. We have not received that. Ms. Priestley, if I may continue, Madam Chair. Ms. Priestley, was that a statement or a use of point of information to properly get the floor, improperly get the floor to make a statement? Sometimes I listen to stuff and I have to wait under these goofy roofs for a second round. A point of information is a quick inquiry. It's not to make a statement just so you know. But I ain't tripping because y'all don't know. But the point is, all of those things have something to do with whether it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 6 o'clock, or 11 o'clock. When we pay folks the big bucks and we have rules and charter, we, should, we also are the entity for elected and appointed people, whether there are people who have bad attendance records or whether they're the administration. It's on us. So I hear what you're saying, but this is a motion to move everything to council out of committee with unanswered questions. So I'll leave it at that. But what you're telling me, and y'all citing the charter and rules, it's a little bigger than that. It's a little bigger than that. And all of these trying to vote no to suspend rules and points of information that's making statements and giving information and ain't waiting under the goofy rules to do it. A point of information is an inquiry, not a statement to the speaker. So if you meant to say, do I know that? The answer is yes. But you did a point of information to interrupt me to make a statement totally out of order. So if people would settle down I'm out to help people, not hurt people, but I'm feisty. And whether it's Quincy, Miss uh, Worthy, Miss Lewis, or anybody, even you, I'm going to make the point under these rules until y'all relax because y'all don't know them yet, and y'all making us look bad and don't even know it. I won't be voting to move this master, and I'm not going to separate it because I'm starting to get a feel of the majority of council members. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this, this is thank you. Excuse Mace. me, Councilman um, Mace. Mace. Let me acknowledge you first, please. Um, thank you, Councilman Mays. Councilman Murphy, you have the floor, sir. Okay. Um, I agree that um, we um, probably need to vent these but since we've been in this meeting all day because um, – me and my colleague seems to not um, want to see eye to eye on various things, and they want to take the floor and um, dominate the meeting and bring up my name or other councilman's name 
and be allowed to use their time to um, characterize this council how they want to characterize this council. The point that I'm trying to make with these motions is that if we allow one council member to dominate the meeting and um, characterize us in these uh, ways and what they want to characterize us with, we're going to be in these meetings all day. All I am saying, in all due respect, this is a new council. You ought to be able to read us and understand what is some triggers. Because just like you can um, trigger us, we can trigger you. And that's not what we're trying to do. We want to come in here and get the business done by all means necessary and do what we can to move these motions to either council, to special affairs, or send them back to finance, or government ops, legislative. We still got some more committees that we need to get done, but we haven't. Um, got done because somebody have dominated the meeting trying to prove their point that they are the senior counsel and they can do whatever they want to, and I don't have no problem with that because I, I, I quit to get roll with the sharks. I don't have no problem. I can go there, but I, I don't want to go there. I want to come in here and get the business done. I I don't even. I, I'm not trying to prove my point that I can go back and forth with somebody because I can. And I and, and what I've done order, earlier, what I was doing it just to prove a point that point of order, I can go Chair. there. What's the point of order, Councilman um, Herkenroder? Councilwoman um, Herkenroder. We need to remember, per Rule 29.6, that we must be germane to the motions on the floor. Okay, Councilman, um, thank you. Is, was that in reference to uh, the current, um, to Councilman Murphy? Correct. Or are you just stating overall? Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilman Murphy, uh, please proceed. You have the floor back, sir. Oh, thank you. M but my point, that's, that's my point. Now, we don't sit up here and allow and listen to Councilman Mays go and be not germane to the motion, but then when I take the floor and I want to do the same thing, not that I really want to do the same thing, but I'm just making my point. You want to call me out on something, but I ain't see you calling him out. So I'm done with what I'm saying, but my point to you, um, Councilman Alley, is you could call me out, but you don't want to call him out when he out of order or he taking the floor and he being real long. He just took up about 20 or 30 minutes, but you didn't cut him off. But as soon as I went and came and um, did the same thing, then Point you of information. Me out of order. That's all I'm saying. Thank you very much. Point of information. Mays, what's your point of information? Through you to the speaker, I could have swore and aren't you familiar with the five-minute rules for each? And why are you alleging that I'm taking up more than the five minutes when Janelle is um, timing that? Haven't you heard the timer go off on me and I stopped talking? Why are you doing that? Point of order, Madam Chair. Councilwoman uh, Herkenroder, you have the that floor. A, that is a dilatory and incorrect use of point of information. Point of order, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. It was a question to the speaker. I guarantee it was. And Ms. Herkenroder, if you don't do the same thing when Ms. Um, Priestley make a statement with your smart self, then I'm gonna get you gonna get my attention. You barking up the wrong tree. Do you realize that, Madam Chair? A dilatory motion. Rule on whether it was a question to the speaker or dilatory, since she want to pull that Kate Fields term out. Was it dilatory or was it a point of information? I asked him a question. Okay. Um, I don't think he's going to. Let's move on. Uh, is there any more discussion? Now you don't have to answer it, but I ain't studying what you're talking about. Okay, Councilman Mays. Is there any more discussion? On moving I of creating a master resolution from item numbers two one zero five seven five through items number two one five eight six, making a master resolution. Is there any more discussion? 
Madam Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, Council, Councilman Pfeiffer. I'll um, yield. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Councilman Pfeiffer, please proceed. Yeah, I, I, I won't be supporting this because I think that, you know, I when we get to council meetings, I don't want to do committee meeting and council and because there isn't the administration here to answer questions. I think that myself, as along with other colleagues, have questions on these. So I will not be supporting them. Um, at this time, so uh, I will. Uh, I want to make a. I'd like to make a substitute motion. You want to make a substitute motion to the um, to the master resolution to move uh, item number two one zero five seven five through item two one five eight six to council. Yeah, so I'd like to make a substitute motion. Um, to move them back to finance committee with the exception of I'd like to separate 210586 from that. So all the above noted in the master resolution move back to finance committee with the exception of 210586. Okay. And you want to make a substitute motion to move all the items with the exception of item number 210586 back to finance committee. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It, thank you. Is there a second on that motion? Ma that substitute Madam motion? Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. Something yeah, Madam Chair, I prefer amended motion. I'll second the um, amended motion. Okay. Th thank you. Um, so it has been properly second um, to uh, amended motion to move uh, back to finance committee. Items number 210575, um, with the exception up to 210585, with the exception of 210586. It has been properly second. Is there discussion? Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, the reason I seconded this motion because I'm a stickler for um, getting stuff done in committee. And I'm very disappointed on the way that this meeting has went, starting from the beginning with the first resolution and the decision that the majority of council people made, which caused some mess. And Ms. Worthing helped stir it up and then left and is absent again like she normally has been for years. And then I'm listening to colleagues, and maybe they mean well, but they just don't get it because all of those rules and that stickler and trying to look this up and ask the city attorney, that's common sense and courtesy. We had been flying through. We had knocked that stigma down of long council meetings and all that mess. So, you know, I seconded Mr. Pfeiffer's amended motion because the 9 o'clock rule, it don't even make sense. Folks at home, folks at home, except for Janelle and Davina, then, sometimes the last ones to leave City Hall. So my position is this. Sometimes you have to get folks' attention, and this might not get it because I've watched councils. And I'm watching and listening to this council. The majority of the council can do whatever it wants to do. But the residents, the employees, the citizens of Flint are smart. They're listening. I've seen it twice. I've seen people show their personalities. I've seen them attack me. And I'm telling you what the, what, what's going to happen. This community is going to start judging folks. And I hate elections. I, I don't like recalls. I don't like regular point elections because you have to work. What, what's your point of order, um, Councilwoman Herkenroder? Pursuant to Rule 29.6, we must remember to stay germane to the motion on the table. Thank you. Councilman Mays. Please proceed. May I continue? Discussion. Please proceed with your discussion. May I continue? Yes, please proceed, Councilman Mays, with your discussion. I'm going to go, I'm going to step out <laughs> because I'm tired of Mr. Murphy. I was tired of Kate Fields, Eva Worthing, and order. now I'm getting. Point of order. 
What's your point of order, Councilman Murphy? His tire of Mr. Murphy has nothing to do with the motion that's on the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Councilman Murphy. Councilman Mays, please proceed. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair. Um, I've got Thank the you. floor. Um, I, there's a point. And so Madam Chair don't get the floor. Correct. That's just out of order. If I may proceed, and I'm going to say this, and I was sitting to say it when Mr. Murphy did a point of order about Jermaine. Ms. Herkenroder just did a point of order about Jermaine. And I'm telling you, when Mr. Pfeiffer made the motion, I seconded because of the foolishness and the use of rules that people don't understand. Ms. Herkin wrote it, this is how I'll tell Mr. Murphy. It is Jermaine, Tito, Jackie, Marlon, and Michael to talk about council people that make meetings go long to where we have to do master resolutions or don't vet stuff, move it to council, and then do it in um, – council meeting versus committee meetings, then it's relevant to talk about disappearing department heads that's making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you don't get the germaneness in that, then I'm very disappointed in you. Now, I'm going to let you have your way because Mr. Murphy, you and anybody else who talk about Jermaine and Tito, it ain't got the sense to see how that's tied in to how I'm going to vote on a resolution that passes one to council and put the other back, just don't get it. It's based on the sake of time, the nonsense, and what I don't think we would have to do if folks had a just suspended rules that they don't quite know. So to your rule that you interrupted me and mentioned, Jermaine, I was Tito, Jackie, and Marlon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, Chair, any more discussion? Yes. Madam Chair, Person, this is Janelle. Yes, Janelle. Suzanne Wilcox is still here, and she would like to say something. Yes. Um, hi, um, Ms. Wilcox. Um, you have the floor. Good evening. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I have three resolutions. I am still on the phone, obviously. I have three resolutions that are coming up and um, I'm hoping that they not be postponed to the next finance committee. They are 210578, um, 210, I'm sorry, 210578, 210584. Can, 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 can you repeat those again, please? Sure. Your, your three, the three um, that you do not want postponed, please. Um, 210583. Two one zero five eight four and two one zero five seven eight, and I'm here to answer any questions on those resolutions. Point of information. Yes, Councilman Mays. Through you to Miss Wilcox, were you here the whole time when Mr. Edwards said he was the only one here, if I'm not mistaken, or did you hear what was going on and called in? Um, I was here, and I did let Clyde know after that that I was on the call and I was willing to stay um, late if that was okay with him. He approved that, and so I am staying for those three resolutions. Okay. So we have on the floor. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, so we have on the floor. You, I'm going to first address, um, Suzanne, your three, 210583, 210584. 210578. It looks like they have something to do with Clark Commons. We also, but we have a amended motion that we are in. Um, well, this is to proceed that because you that that's going to break. Um, and then council, then Pfeiffer has 210586 that he wanted to break apart. So we need to um, vote on first the motion on the floor that Councilman Pfeiffer has. We're still in discussion. We're still in and discussion. I, uh, um. This is Councilman oh, Murphy. Councilman Murphy. Can I do a substitute yeah, motion? Point, point of order. Um, can I do a um, substitute hold on, motion? Hold on, Cal- Councilman Murphy. Councilman Pfeiffer um, did a point of – Councilman Pfeiffer, go ahead, please. I believe, I believe Councilman Murphy has already spoken once. 
he has for the first round. You are correct. Janelle, can you verify that for the record, please? Yes, ma'am. So, Council Murphy, you have spoken for the first round. Um, so we are now on to, uh, we are in discussion for the substitute um, or the amended motion to move back to Finance Committee, um, item number 210575 um, through Order item number two. Councilman Murphy? Yes. Is it proper for me to um, do a substitute motion? You want to do a substitute motion to to um, Councilman Pfeiffer's motion? Point of, point of order. I didn't even fin- I didn't even finish what his substitute motion was yet. Uh, point of order. Councilman Mays. Under the rules that he voted not to suspend, he'll have to wait and see who speaks in the first round. If you get to him, he can do it in the second round. I can answer that question, Madam Chair, and I just did. Thank you. Councilman Murphy, did you get that? Okay, back to we are um, uh, back to Councilman Pfeiffer's. Um, he wants to do a, an amended motion to move back to finance, um, res, uh, item number 210575 through 210585, with the exception of um, 210586. And we are in discussion still with that. Is there any more? Dis- if you have not spoken, we are still in discussion. Is there anyone else who would like to speak before we do roll call? In the first round point of order would that be in the first round you're correct we are in the first round thank you councilman names so we're in the first round is there anyone else who would like to speak in the first round is there anyone else who would like to speak in the first round is there anyone else okay we are on to the second round second round to um the substitute motion that councilman pfeiffer moved back to finance committee Item number 210575 through 210585, with the exception of 210586. Is there anyone else who would like to discuss? We're open for discussion. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I thought I would hear from Mr. Murphy, but through you to Suzanne, you said 210583. Two one zero five eight four. Was there another one? Yes, yeah, two one zero five seven eight is her third. Five so yes, seven eight, one, Madam Chair. Yes, yes, Councilman May. So okay. two one zero five eight three. Go ahead. And and the reason the reason that I'm gonna listen and then decide how I vote because all the council persons who's making these motions. And you can see how when you hear silence, but when it comes to resolutions and pass and stuff, that's the power the council has. Administrators will hop out of the woodwork, whether it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or 11 o'clock, because this is city business. And so I just listen to folks. I just look at things, and then I learn that some people might have well intent but they ain't really got the feeling of how this thing works. They don't really know the power they possess in order to get information after hours, allegedly after hours, and so forth and so on. They don't know how important it is to move this business along versus trying to pick folks apart, particularly people who been around and know you can call me the senior counsel to belittle me or you could do it for real but i listen and when you do points of orders and points of information and try to do or whatever you really better be good at it because i'm telling you all this talk about germane you can say i ain't germane now but i am germane because I know when department heads bring resolutions, I know the role of council, I know the role of committee meetings, and it's an art to get in and out of here on time. It's an art to have special meetings on problem areas. It's an art, 
And so for those who want to know it fast and do it, I'm going to sit back and listen some more. Now let's see what y'all do with this appeal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman May. We are in the second round. Is there anyone else who would like discussion? Is there anyone else who would like discussion? Is there anyone else who would like discussion? Okay, I know that Suzanne, before we're going to do for the roll call, no one wants discussion, has been acknowledged about Suzanne Wilcox about item number 210583, 210584, 210578. She came and spoke, and she spoke on that. So we're going to do for roll call for the, subst- for the amended motion to move back to finance committee. Items number 210575 through 210585, with the exception of 210586. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Ms. Burns? No. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Mr. Mays? Mr. Mays? Uh, Madam Clerk, I abstain. Ms. Lewis? Yes. The vote is five yes, one no, one abstention. Okay. Item number. Um, uh, Madam Chair, vote? point of order. Yes, Councilman Mays. Make it official and call the vote that everything, including what Ms. Wilcox wanted, is gone back to committee. Call the vote. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Um, I would like to call the vote, please. The vote is five yes, one no, one abstention. Council Mays, do you want it specifically per ward, or is that sufficient? No, I want you to call it. When you repeat it, you're the one who makes it official, okay. the chair. Okay. Thank you so very much. Um, the vote is five yes um, to send it back to finance committee with one no, and there was one abstention. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I would move 210586, the partial settlement agreement, national prescription opioid litigation, MCL number 2804, City of Flint versus Activist Farmer and Court. Um, to counsel. Okay, there's Madam a motion. Chair, I'll second I that know. motion. Okay, Judy. I don't know. Was that? Okay, I don't know who was that. Councilwoman Priestley. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it has been so properly second. Um, it has been properly second and moved. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, as I look at that previous vote, and I hope Suzanne can still hear me, I was hoping and thinking that some council person would be have the wisdom to honor your request to separate those three. But this has been a council meeting where I see the competition and I see people struggling in order to prove, I guess, to the public that, hey, this is a fool maze, and I know what I'm doing. And this is a fool maze. I've just seen it and heard it. I done heard it from three or four council people, and they're going to end up in the same position publicly, in my opinion, trying to take care of this business, such as the stuff that you want it separated. I would have bet money and been wrong that Mr. Murphy was going to separate the three that you asked for. Um, there's ways to get it done, and there's ways to get it done maybe before Monday. 
But as these council people fall over me themselves and, 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 and enlighten the public as to what they're doing, what they're hearing and seeing, you know, I just abstain from it. I mean, I done read council votes for years. I done read the logic of what they do, and I think it's sad that if you popped up that that courtesy wasn't given by the majority. And um, I don't blame Miss Winfrey Carter um, for leaving after a while because there's some folks who just don't seem to get it, and I don't know what the tug of war is. I'm not in no election right now. But I campaign each and every day as a politician, and I know 100% that the residents of the city of Flint are smarter than some folks in this administration and on this council give them credit for. They're looking, they're listening, and they're watching. So um, through you, uh, Madam Chair, to Ms. Wilcox, can you hear me? I yes, I'm still here, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Ms. Wilcox. I, I am still here. It's two one zero five eight three and two one zero five eight four. Was they time sensitive? Yes, and two one zero five seven eight is also time sensitive. And 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 um the planning and development as it relates to um two one zero five seven eight um, what exactly is and was that and I know I'm discussing it as we discuss the partial settlement we're in discussion, but I have to use these mechanics to see if I want to try to make an amended motion or reconsider some, because I'm just listening to this crowd. Shed some light on the time sensitivity of these matters. Sure. Through you, Madam Chair, to Councilman Mays, um, 210578 is a change order to the contract that the city has with Roe Incorporated for comprehensive planning and zoning services. So this is, um, this is work that we have a consultant um, helping uh, our department to facilitate a number of cases. There's some work that Roe is doing um, on behalf of our staff and with our staff to move some backlog of cases, and it's a six-month extension for $60,000, approximately $10,000 a month is what's spent for a total contract amount of $180,000 that will help us keep um, the business of planning and zoning going. So the contract expires December 31st. However, um, it is nearly uh, completely expended, and we'd like to keep those services going so that we can continue to process cases, get caught up on our backlog, um, which is extensive, and um, continue serving the residents of the city of Flint in, in planning and zoning matters. What about the other two, Ms. Wilcox? Sure. The other two are uh, change orders to the contract with North Star. Um, it's actually Clark Commons to LDHA. So it's for the Choice Neighborhood Improvement Project. Uh, the first resolution, 210583, is related to Phase 1. It is a contract extension. Phase 1 is complete, but there is some additional work um, that needed to be done, and we have funds uh, to pay for that work. So it's a contract extension and an addition of some EGLE money so that the in additional environmental work can be paid for in Phase 1. The second resolution, um, 210584, is for Clark Commons Phase 2. Um, it's a resolution to award additional funding. It's, it's moving some money within the Choice Neighborhoods budget to the North Star contract. It's not increasing the total contract amount for choice money, but it's moving essentially money that was allocated for housing across all phases into phase two due to some additional um, costs for environmental, release, environmental remediation and increased housing construction costs. Um, and that is for phase two. And that is time sensitive because they are trying to close their financing by the end of the year so that they can begin um, construction of phase two in the spring 
and they have a deadline of December 31st to finish their financing, and this is a key part of uh, making that money available for them to do that. Madam Chair, through you to Ms. Edwards, can you hear me? I yes. can. Clyde, Ms. Edwards, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, Ms. Edwards, um, to me it would have been important to let me know if my colleagues didn't care, but I did. Maybe they did care. I don't know. But the minute that we knew Suzanne was still hanging around for these particular items, um, they voted to postpone them back. Nobody questioned the time sensitivity of any of these things. And I just don't like that movement. I do agree that if this administration wants to continue with that 9 o'clock um, deadline, particularly if we're on the phone, then, you know, sometimes people need to learn hard lessons, both the administration and this council, and then let them dig their way out and try to fix them because that's the only way you can get logical compromise. I'll decide if I try to get creative and fix this stuff, or I'll decide if I let it be a statement about folks leaving wrongfully at nine and so forth and so on. But I've got a duty to take care of the business of the citizens of the city of Flint in a timely manner. Um, I'm not going to do anything right now, but I needed to know that. Um, as we get to the end of finance committee agenda, um, Ms. Um, Wilcox, and I'll decide if this group don't put a quick call for the question, if they don't do a quick adjournment, maybe we can go back and fix a couple things. But committee meeting is just that, is to ask about time sensitivity is asking about details and so forth and so on. Um, I'll be voting yes on this partial settlement, and I'm getting to the point from this meeting, I don't care what the majority of colleagues do. I'm going to protect my reputation. I'm going to fight for residents. I'm going to fight for employees, and I'm going to articulate and say people's names, particularly when they say my name or try to, um, do something that they think is slick and smart in a public meeting when I really believe it's disrespectful and it's intentional when you're trying to help and show people. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Mays. Um, did I hear Ms. Edwards first? You did indeed. Or, you did indeed. Okay. May I respond? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I would I would I would just say uh very much appreciate uh Councilman May's comments. Um but this uh this tonight tonight would be an example of uh, why steps were taken from the administration's standpoint. It's twelve forty right now. Uh, my day started at nine AM as most of the department people. Uh, we, as department heads and as a city administrator, uh, I, I believe Mr. Mays must have missed this the last time we had this discussion. Uh, we, it's, it's not as though we get overtime. We don't get anything uh, in addition. We're salaried people. And so we, we work our designated time and then some. Uh, four days, you, you keep saying it's only four days. Four days is a lot. Four days is a lot when you have eight hours, nine hours, additional time beyond your eight hour day. Uh, I'm looking at a, I'm looking at right now uh, close to a, a, a 14, 15 hour day. And I got morning meetings. I can't cancel meetings. I can't cancel them just because I stay up all night for a council meeting. So I, I, I want to be transparent as people keep talking about, transparent with the public. The administration is doing its job and then some. Uh, so we, what did we accomplish? How much did we get done as a part of this meeting? Uh, I'm going to just leave it there as a, as a uh, rhetoric question for the public to understand. Thank you, Madam Chair. Point of information, Mr. 
Madam Chair. Um, Council Mays, what's your point of information? I believe um, also through, before I get to you, Councilwoman Herkin Roder had a had a point of information. I believe at the same time Mr. Edwards did. But go ahead, Mr. Um, Councilman Mays. Through you to the speaker, Mr. Edwards, are you looking at some type of postponement or recess to these meetings at twelve forty? I'm, I'm, I don't know. I can't. That's council's decision. I, if you ask me a question as to whether I'm going to be available for the next three council committees, I'm going to tell you no, I'm not. I'm, I'm done after this committee. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilwoman Herkenroder. Could you please restate the motion in which we're in discussion on? Yes, um, the motion would be for item number 210586, partial settlement, to send it to council. And we were in discussion. Thank you. Um, count, <clears throat> I have a question. Um, yes, council, was that councilwoman Priestley? No, Councilman Pfeiffer. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Pfeiffer. Sorry, it's getting late. Um, uh, I'm ready to vote on this. I think it needs to go to. I need to, it needs to go to council so that we can get these funds moving to the city as soon as possible. Uh, with that being said, I would hope that we could also uh, recess after this vote as well, because, uh, like Mr. Edwards said, a lot of uh, a lot of folks have been up all day and uh, got stuff to do tomorrow. And uh, I would hope that uh, we would entertain a motion to recess after this vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilman Pfeiffer. Um, Ms. Edwards, I just want to have some clarity to make sure. Um, I understand clearly what you're saying. It makes a long day. Now, you stated that are you, will you not be here no, any longer after 9 o'clock p.m.? No, I, I am on a different track than the uh, rest of our, our staff. So I'm usually here and have over, over the last couple of years uh, endured all the way till three and even four o'clock in the morning, uh, but that's not going to be the case. I will be here after nine o'clock, but I'm not saying I will not be here till one and two in the morning. Okay, okay, and thank you for providing that clarity. I appreciate it. Okay, is there any more discussion? I'm... Go ahead, yeah, Madam Council Chair. Murphy. Um, I miss Councilman Mays. I think what Councilman Murphy um, was getting ready to speak for us, and I acknowledge you, sir. Councilman Murphy, was were you? I'm 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 with Pfeiffer. I'm ready to vote too. I ain't finna keep on going back and forth all night. I, we because we could do this all night, and I'm not finna go there. You know, because at this point in time, me going back and forth, it ain't gonna make no difference. We 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 gonna keep on until we um, learn how to um, share space to respect one another, and I'm not finna. Entertain that because I'm I hear what um, the um, a city administrator is saying and I concur with him. But I'm just trying to set the tone as a councilman for the third ward that um, I, I ain't having nobody just talk to me no any kind of way. And if they don't get it, we, I don't get it. And then we'll keep going back and forth. And I don't, I'm not willing to do that. I don't even want to be up in these meetings all this long. I don't see us going this way, and I knew it was gonna go that direction. I'm just trying to do my best to work and work with the people, but it's just hard with this person that I'm dealing with. Okay, thank you, Councilman Murphy. I'm Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, if this is my second round, I would say that I'm going to vote on it, too. I'm going to vote yes, but the point that um, is being made when um, Mr. Murphy might learn if I'm that person, then um, maybe it'll be best next time to suspend the rules. My experience tells me that's where some of the problems started. So you can talk about me. You can use me as a scapegoat. You can do whatever you want privately and publicly, but everything I say and do, I'm going to do publicly, and I'm going to do it for a reason, and I'm going to defend my seat in the first. Are you being out of order? I'm going to defend my seat in the first ward. I'm going to defend my daddy's name, Pastor Mays, my mama's name, Rosie B. I'm going to 
uh, defend everything around me as it relates to doing this city business. I'm going to pay attention to what Ms. Wilcox have to say. I understand the um, importance of committee meeting and vetting versus passing stuff through in bulk or not passing it through. I understand that. And you can say what you want publicly, privately. If I hear it, I'm going to address it. Because in politics, if you chop at a person, it might um, appear to people to be true. So when you chop at me, you chop once, I'm going to chop twice. And then when um, you out of order, and you're lucky I ain't sharing because you'd have been muted. Councilman, Councilman, Councilman Murphy, what's your point of order? My point of order is this man keep on calling me out in these meetings, and therefore me and him end up going back and forth, and y'all allow this man to keep on thinking that he can talk to people any kind of way, and can't nobody clap back at him, and I'm just saying in all due respect, what y'all give him when he go to going down the road that ain't germane to the agenda items. I'm a human being just Murphy. like he is, point and when order. he gets to call him point out, of, he can get called on his Murphy, point of information. Sir, you're you're now not being germane to the topic. So he ain't can being we, germane. Well, and 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 I'm gonna tell you, it, for me personally, this is problematic. They expect us all to be a, above a mm-hmm. higher level than what we the previous got to do do better. We're not doing that right now. Everyone seems to have an axe to grind. Let's wind this up. We know that Mr. Edwards, people are tired. Let's wind it up. And Mr. Mays, can you? Finish and we're in discussion with item number 21586 to send it to council for the partial settlement. Mr. Mays, can you yeah. wrap it up so we can and, make and, and it was relevant to me to hear what Suzanne Wilcox had to say in the time sensitivity. You can be sensitive in studying, Mr. Uh, Murphy, but I ain't studying it. And I'm going to talk plain and I'm going to speak and okay. I'm going to talk about the majority of the council. If he said okay. a privileged motion, or he just interrupted. I, I, Mr. Murphy, are you? I, I didn't hear him. I, I'm not hearing you, Councilman Murphy. When you um, are, if you're pointing information, you're not coming in clear. My, like my it, point, my okay. point of information. He ain't been doing it. Councilman Mays, please. Uh, 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 Councilman Murphy, you have the floor. You have a point of information. So what is your point of information? My point of information that I am trying to express is that y'all keep allowing Eric to go and attack people and call them out and just be going in on people and calling their name out and trying to characterize people in an unprofessional way and y'all not stopping him. That's what I'm saying, and I'm just saying because I am an elected council person that represents the third war, I want him to put some respect behind my name, and can he watch how he um, characterize us in his statements that y'all not stopping him on, and he ain't even on the motion. We on the motion about approving, uh, moving this open. That's not a point of information, but it's a point of order. Point of order. Councilman Mays, can you give me me a moment, please? Councilman Murphy. Well, a point of order is a privileged motion. All talking to cease, and my point is that this is some some foolishness. He's using him to take the floor, making statements. And if y'all don't handle him, I will. He's been doing it all night even before you got here. Okay. Um, thank you, Councilman Mays. But let me say this, Councilman Murphy, it is a courtesy that we should be adult enough for all of us to respect each other's opinions and ideas, whether we agree or disagree, to move the agenda forward. That's been on every side. That is my intent and that is my goal. So I have not engaged in any of that. So when it comes to respect, there is no rule that states that we have to respect or speak highly. That's just the natural civil thing that we should be doing for respect for each other as colleagues. Now, we are there any more discussion on moving item 210586, partial settlement, sending it to council. Is there any more discussion? Madam Chair, it's proper to say that I had the floor and I may continue. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Mays. I apologize. You have the floor, sir. Yeah, and so this has been going on all night from the beginning, and I've been listening to them, and I've been listening to more than one wording, 
Murphy. I even heard Liddell Lewis chime in. And then I just heard Miss Allie Herkenroder as it relates to a point of order piggybacking on Mr. Murphy about being Jermaine. Everything that I've said in relationship to voting on this singular resolution is Jermaine because other business has been put to the side by the majority. And one of the administrators is howling out to fix it. I can appreciate what you said, um, Mr. Edwards. And, you know, after this vote, Mr. Piper, I agree. I want a recess too. But the point is this. When you move to recess and move to adjourn, this is just one meeting. If the other meetings don't happen because of lack of a quorum, that'll be three meetings that have to be reposted. So I know what I'm talking about. And I ain't studying um, the sensitivity of Mr. Murphy because if he can dish it out, he better get ready to take it double and triple with me because I know the rules of communication. I'm studying your public displays as it relates to me, yours, and nobody else's. Treat people and talk to people like you want to be talked to. That's the rule, and that rule gets you a long way. I know about being germane. I know how to communicate, and I understand the rules. Be very careful who you take shots at because you started out checking Miss Worthen, then you hopped on the bandwagon. The best thing you can do for me is listen and then see if I make a point at the end and leave me alone because when you get my attention, you got it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Mays. Okay, we are on. Is there any more discussion for item number 210586, partial settlement? Is there any more discussion to send that to council? Is there any more discussion? Is there any more discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Vote is seven yes, zero no. Thank you, Janelle. The, um, for the moving item number 210586. Madam um, Chair. We'll... Point yes, of order, Council. Madam Chair, yes. call the vote. Yes, it is. I was getting ready to do that, Councilman Mays. Um, okay. there, were seven, there were seven yes to move item number 210586 to council. It will be moved to council. Madam, Again, Madam you're, Chair. You're, break, you're breaking up, and it may be my phone because it, my broadband here is terrible. My, my, can you, can you uh, repeat yourself, please, Councilman Mays? Madam Chair, I was asking for the floor. Yes, go ahead, Councilman Mays. You have the floor. Yeah, Madam Chair, the agenda show discussion items. That item that Ms. Wilcox, those three resolutions that uh, she brought up, and she said they were time sensitive. I would make a motion to reconsider the vote to send them to committee, and I so move. Okay. Uh, Council Mays, I just want to verify. That's item number, that, um, item number 210583. 210584, 210578. Um, we, those are items that Ms. Wilcox said are time sensitive and under discussion items, you want to move those to where again, sir? No, I want, I made a motion to reconsider. Motion to reconsider. Um, yes, Councilman Herkenroder. Councilwoman Herkenroder. Um, for a motion to reconsider to be valid, it must be made by someone who voted in the affirmative for that motion. If my memory is serving me correctly, I believe Mr. Mays voted no on that. No, I, Madam Chair, I abstain, but she yeah. might very well be right. Okay. So we would need to have someone in order to 
Can we verify that, Janelle, that in order for uh, that motion to be reconsidered, it would have to be someone who um, voted in the firm who voted? That's correct. Madam That's Chair. Chair. Correct. Yes. You, thank, thank you, Janelle. Um, uh, Councilwoman Herkenroder, you have the floor. Um, point, of in, point of order, Madam um, Chair. Councilman Mays. Did she do a point of information or point of order in order to interrupt me? And if so, do I still have the floor? I believe she did a point of I'm not Janelle, did uh, Councilwoman Herkin order to do a point of order or point of information? I'm really not sure. Madam well, Chair, may I speak to that? Yes. I, I, I issued a point of order. Thank you, Councilwoman Herkenroder. Councilman Mays? May I continue? Yeah, yes. she's right on that. But my point is um, through you to Suzanne. Suzanne, are you still there? Is Ms. No, she's not. Okay. Then she didn't know what I was going to try to do on her behalf. Who was that, Mr. Edwards? Yes, Councilman Mays. Okay, Mr. Edwards, I'm going to do this for these three. The other ones, if it happens, it happens. We'll see what happens. It looked like somebody who voted in the affirmative is ready to make a motion, but I want to mechanically try to help in them three areas. I might have some more questions and decide what I'll do later, but I did want to pay attention to her request. We'll see what happens from here. Ms. Herkenroder, you are right, but the issue has been raised. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Thank Chair. you. Yes, Ms. Herkenroder, Ms. Herkenroder, it's hard for me to hear you, and I apologize. Uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion to reconsider the issue at hand regarding Resolution 210578, 210583, 210584. Okay. The motion to reconsider for item number 21578, 210584, 20583 has, do we have a second? Madam Chair? Yes, um, Councilwoman Priestley. I'll second that. Okay, motion has been properly second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I'll listen to the rotation of the vote. I'll decide how I vote because this has been some heck of a night for me. You got council people just showing out, in my opinion, and, and, and ain't even at the point of showing out yet and I know who some of them are as far as I'm concerned, and they can use me as a scapegoat and say and do whatever they want, but I'm going to continue to focus on what I've been focusing on for eight or more years, the business of the people of the city of Flint. And when we get through with this motion, unless some of them jump the gun, I'm going to see what we say about those other three committees through you to Janelle. Janelle, if um, we recess this, and it might not be a reason that we need to recess this committee, the other committees would have to be reposted. Would that be a fair statement? Uh, yes. It, it depends on how you do it. If you just simply don't go into the other committees, then we put it on special affairs. If you Okay, everything would come to special affairs. Yes. And then we'd be caught up in there for over an hour. Maybe that'll be the better way to do it. But it was very important to get this um, finance committee meeting underway, Ms. Burns. It would have been best to not deal with all them stupid and goofy rules. We had been doing fine. We had been getting good reviews from the public. And this meeting has been a debacle, in my opinion, which I have the right to have it because of all of the intelligent folks and then those political folks who think they can just uh, talk and run and talk to me any kind of way. You might even talk to others, but you can't talk to me. And I'll watch this vote and see if six votes come to reconsider. Thank you, Madam okay. Chair. 
Thank you, Councilman May. So is there any more discussion for the motion to reconsider item number 210578, 210583, and 210584? Is there any more discussion? Any more discussion? Any more discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Mr. Mays? I abstain. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. The vote is six yes, one abstention. Thank you, Janelle. So the, um, there's six yes. One abstention for the motion to reconsider item number two item number <clears throat> item numbers two one zero five seven eight two one zero five eight three and two one zero five eight four. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I would move two one zero five seven eight two one zero five eight three and two one zero five eight four to council. Okay, yeah, is there a second? Madam I'm sorry, Chair. I didn't hear. Did someone speak? Madam Chair. Yes, that Councilwoman Herkenroder? Yes, I second that motion. Okay, it has been properly second to move item numbers 210578, 210583, 210584 to Council. Is there, in, is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, through you to Ms. Edwards. Ms. Edwards, can you hear me? Yes, yes, uh, Mr. Mr. May. Yeah, Ms. Edwards, um, you can probably update uh, Ms. Wilcox of what has happened here, and she can pay attention in um, council meeting. I got an inkling that they might go through in light of what's been learned and said, but just so she know, you can give her that update on what happened after she left and um, so forth and so on. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any I'll be both more yes to move on the council, um, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Is there any more discussion on moving... Um, Moving items number 210578, 210583, 210584 to council. Is there any more discussion? Is there any more discussion? Is there any more discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Herkenroder? Yes. Mr. Viper? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? The vote is seven yes, zero no. Okay. Um, the vote is, is seven yes. Two zero no to move item number two one zero five seven eight two one zero five eight three and two one zero five eight four to council. Thank you. At this time, there yep. was a request to. Uh, we are at approximately the time is one o six a.m. and there was a request to research or to adjourn, recess or to adjourn. Um, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, one way or another, we got through that agenda. I'll do some homework on the stuff that was postponed, but the administration need to stick around sometime. And this council need to understand why it's a reason to get rid of some of that mess and minutia and just treat people courteous and common sense. And, you know, it's kind of too early in some of them's career, in my opinion, to take jabs and try to use me as a scapegoat and don't have no 
what they're doing yet, in my opinion, and I'm going to say it because of how this meeting went. I'll probably end making a motion to adjourn finance, and then um, Ms. Winfrey Carter is not here for governmental operations, and I don't know or don't care if everybody leaves and it ain't a quorum, but the point that Janelle made is, did I hear you right, Ms. Um, Johnson? Janelle, all that stuff will go on special affairs if um, they don't have a quorum for the rest of the three committee meetings. That's correct. Okay. So I would move to who is the vice chair of governmental operations? Let me look and see. Do y'all know? Okay. We'll see what happens once this meeting adjourns. And then... um, I appreciate you, Madam Chair, uh, allowing me to discuss the mechanics of governmental ops, legislative, and um, grants, and the various agenda items. I appreciate what you're saying, um, Janelle, and we'll take it from here. Um, I'm very disappointed in what has happened here tonight. I'm not going to apologize to the public. I just want the public to keep watching, looking, and listening as um, various council members try to stake their claim on how they're going to operate and how they're going to talk and check folks and make allegations in these meetings because I'm pretty smart. I catch all of them, and I'll respond to them before I just let them um, turn into reality. I move to adjourn finance committee meeting. I so move. Is, can I, is there a second for that? I'm sorry. Was that Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes, I second that. Okay. It has been so properly moved. And second, um, Matt, is there any discussion? Not on Roll a motion call. to adjourn. Okay. Most, uh, thank you. Thank you. You're correct, Councilman. Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Benruder? Yes. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Ms. Byrne? Yes. Vote is seven yes, zero no. Okay, the vote is seven yes, um, two zero no. To adjourn, um, finance committee, this meeting is adjourned. Janelle. Yes, sir. Yeah, if Ms. Liddell Lewis is gone, then I'll attempt to call Governmental Operations Committee meeting order. If she's still here, we'll see what she say or do, if anything. Um, she just dropped. Okay, maybe she'll come. I'll call governmental operations meeting the order. Um, it would be one eleven. This would be now December the ninth. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays? Present. Ms. Lewis? Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy just left. Ms. Priestley? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Ms. Burns? Present. Ms. Herkenroder? Present. Mr. Pfeiffer? Mr. Pfeiffer?
Okay, he's gone too, so you don't have a quorum. Okay, so Madam Chair, um, all of this stuff for those three committees will now go to um, Special Affairs. Yes, sir. Okay, this meeting is adjourned um, or didn't happen because of a lack of a quorum. Everybody have a good night. And um, I appreciate the public and everybody who paid attention to this particular council meeting. God bless the residents of the city of Atlanta. Thank you. Have a good night.